decentralize and 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 discuss discuss your problems or even things not necessarily related with the physics. You could have friends which are a hundred of kilometers away, and and all of these things were taken away um, in, in these previous two years, and uh, we had to face these these enormous challenges even in order to to reformulate this. Uh, the concept in order of the tournament in order to be able to keep the flame going uh, in these two years and uh, from from all these kind of hard experiences i'm sure that uh, you can take uh, you can take home uh, um, you can take home a, a good lesson and i think that the the lesson this year was at least for the students uh, the importance of uh, being able to stay motivated and uh, keep high the, the the morale of the teams. I'm sure that you all face this this kind of blues where you you would feel kind of lost. You would feel like you you, you would lose motivation. You would feel like you you wouldn't uh, you don't know why you, you you keep doing this. But still, uh, I'm very happy that you found you found within yourself the strength to keep going. And I'm sure that these kind of skills, yeah, all of those that I have already done a PhD, I'm sure they know it very well. The, 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 the skill to be able to stay motivated in your work become even more important than sometimes these uh, academic uh, skills that you, you study during, during your university. The, the importance of keep going despite even sometimes having some hard times and, and, uh, and being strong. And uh, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really happy that you, you at least you, you had this experience so, so that maybe this will help you in, the, uh, in your future career. Uh, to 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 pursue your 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 ambitions your ambitions in in the future. Uh, of course, this uh, this cannot be possible sometimes with the within the without the help of some mentors or some friends. That's why I would really like also to thank uh, the the leaders of the teams, all the teams have participated, and uh, and the country representatives, which kept on the the uh, the APT alive. In these years, they kept motivating students. They kept them pushing them in order to to be able to perform well, and then to, and to support them in, in in these difficult times. And on my side, I would really like to thank all the the Execom, which made possible this uh, such an, uh, an organization of such an incredible event. This is uh, this would, it requires an incredible amount of work, but. Uh, all, all, all the people which were involved. This, this is a, being a, an amazing team to work with, and I really feel like felt like I've grown myself uh, in these years as president, and I, I've learned I learned something, and, and I bring something home very good and positive from this. Um, so before before continuing, I would like so my I, I came to the end of my two years term as president. And one of the one of the goals that I had set for myself for, for, for this term was indeed to to be able to have the APT recognized as an official uh, organization, as as it is, for example, the international the uh, young physics tournament. And uh, I'm pleased to I'd, I'd like to make it official now to announce that we are signing the papers and now in order to be uh, officially recognized uh, within the EPS, the European Physical Society. And uh, from next year, we will be proudly we were probably like an official organization and we, this will, of course will help enormously uh, the organization of all future events. I'm, I'm also hoping that many, many of you, like sparked by, by the excitement of this tournament, will find some uh, motivation in order to help with organization. The, the, these kind of volunteering things, they, they, keep, they keep going thanks to the, to the hard work of volunteers just, just like us. And um, of course, it's, it's time for some generational change. I'm really looking forward and hoping that some students will, uh, will be willing to join the, the organization and, uh, and keep the, the flame of the PT alive in the future. I, I'm quite confident that, that in the next years, the, um, we will, in the next year, we'll be able to resume to our usual uh, live format. And I'm really looking forward to it so that I will be able to meet all of you in person and, and not from separated by a screen. Okay, so once again, thank you very much for being here. I'm super excited to this to this to this final. I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, I will leave now the word to Christoph, which is the the, um, the let's say the the, the man uh, who has been managing the the local organizing uh, committee of the Polish University. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it and thanks you thank you all again for being here. 
Thank you very much, Sebastian. Um, I, will, I would like to say a few words uh, in my capacity as a deputy dean of the Faculty uh, of Physics, University of Warsaw. Um, and I was approached by the organizers uh, to deliver a talk that would be motivational, inspirational, deadly serious, long, and from a senior administrative official. Many of the things saddened me a lot, especially the, the senior, but also long. And um, well, let's say, um, I, I don't know uh, what official means in this capacity. So I would like to tell you a few words about my personal uh, experience with IPD. My history with IPD started with terrible frustration. I was a junior uh, assistant professor. I taught uh, uh, classical mechanics to students in the honor class. And this is the uh, cohort of students who uh, have a very uh, large uh, number of points at the entry to the university. So they form a special class. And uh, supposedly this was the highly motivated cohort of students and they were completely uninterested in my course and unresponsive to my course. I tried my best. Uh, I mean, I spent long sleepless nights thinking how to engage students in my class. And after the semester, I realized that they just had something much better to do. And this was the participation in the IPT. So um, I think that I mean, uh, from, from uh, this uh, time, uh, I remember my frustration, but I also learned that um, there are more important things, uh, more important things to students that, uh, than just regular university classes. And this is something that I learned uh, from the IPD, that uh, to get people to do some hard work in a study manner, you have to kindle, uh, kindle the enthusiasm in the students. And IPT has the capacity of doing this in a way that normal university classes cannot do. And this is something that I'm uh, very grateful uh, for. Now, I participated uh, as a team leader in a number of the uh, tournaments. My first one was five years ago. So, well, I knew what IPT was. Uh, this one was held in Paris, so I came uh, there with a team and, well, I didn't have much large expectations. So I scheduled lots of meeting with my, uh, meetings with my collaborators in Paris. And eventually I got so hooked up that I just recalled all the meetings. I, I mean, like I spent my entire time uh, at the tournament and I didn't regret a single second of it. Because uh, what I learned uh, was the tremendous potential that the students can show when working on hard problems uh, in teams. And I think that the teamwork is very important. One more thing that the IPD enables, and we can't do this so well in the classroom, is that it enable, enables conversation, a meaningful conversation that shows the strengths and weaknesses of reasoning. And everything is done in a very polite manner and uh, in a very mm, friendly setting. So despite those parts of the tournament being called fights, they are really, really scientific conversations rather than uh, bloodshed. Then I became the deputy dean for student affairs at the Faculty of Physics. And I realized that it would be a fantastic idea to implement parts of the mm, philosophy of the IPD uh, to our actual, uh, actual curriculum in Warsaw. So from my predecessor, I inherited a, a part in the curriculum that was called a team project. So I tried uh, to make this team project as close as possible to the way teams work for the IPD. So you have a physics problem and then you have to present a report, but on the way you have to have access to uh, different kinds of apparatus. Uh, you need some uh, infrastructure, you need computers, but you also need uh, perhaps 3D printers, perhaps uh, you uh, need to build something. And I tried my best to make those things as freely available as, for students doing team projects as possible. And this is very important. Uh, 
Because from my interactions uh, with the employees, uh, I learned that uh, skills of uh, being a good teammate is very important at all levels uh, of uh, future careers of the graduates. So I have to say that uh, in Poland, it is mandatory for the university to follow the careers of the graduates, at least for some shong, uh, short time after graduation. And uh, on the, those occasions, I really get to interact with uh, the employees of the graduates. And one thing that was emphasized uh, over and over was that we need to be better at developing uh, skills uh, of, uh, of efficient working in teams, because sorry to say that physicists are quite individualistic and they really need to develop uh, that part uh, of uh, their personalities. And IPD is absolutely fantastic in doing that. And uh, I think that every member of the team can say that um, uh, he feels uh, part of a longer uh, of, of a larger community and uh, he or she understands their role uh, in the team and I think that uh, everyone can also say that they are proud of being a part of their team so this is a very important piece of identity uh, a very important uh, bit of, of the excitement so I um, I really I really appreciate that so uh, this wasn't my idea. This was just an implementation of some of the spirit of the IPT uh, to the curriculum. Also, I learned from students and also from students participating uh, in the IPT that they are taught to be good at solving problems. But actually, in the university setting, um, there aren't many opportunities of learning how to present the solutions of the problems. And uh, this is also a big part of the APD. And based on that, uh, I took some inspiration and I enriched uh, the didactic offer of the university with some courses uh, devoted to uh, scientific presentations. So as you can see, um, I think that IVD is the laboratory of uh, the university uh, of the university in future, a university that's focused on project work, uh, on developing uh, student skill in a highly individualistic manner, uh, very closely tailored to uh, people's personalities, and uh, in a very diverse way. So I'm deeply grateful to the IPD for teaching me all these things so I can use them free of charge in the uh, didactic offer of the University of Warsaw. And uh, I think that it is going to be completely unbearable if I uh, if, if I went on with praising the IPT like that. Um, the words that I said, uh, I mean, reflect only partly my deep grat gratitude for the uh, all people involved uh, in the tournament, because I think that this is one of the most inspiring and uh, most uh, educational things that happened to me in my capacity as a university professor and as a university administrative. So thank you to all the people involved uh, in the tournament. All right, thank you very much, Christoph. Those are awesome words. Uh, surely giving a lot of inspiration, not only to the students, but also to the professors uh, that are watching us. Uh, I know that there's lots of interested uh, professors that are watching too. Uh, I know personally that, that in Brazil, there's lots of people that are watching us now too. Uh, so this will surely help us get a lot of inspiration for the next years to come. And hopefully the next uh, events will be also in person so that we can all be together and share lots of knowledge, lots of knowledge, sorry, in physics. Uh, 
Well, let me just verify. I think uh, I think we're good here uh, with all the, the presentations. Let me check our schedule. How is it? <clears throat> okay. Uh, well, it's fine, Mate it's fine so, Mateus. We can we can proceed to the to, to the final. Yeah. I think we have more time. Just to the final, okay then. Uh, so yeah, thank you all for this introductory part. Uh, now we're gonna go to the most awaited part and portion of of the day, which is the physics fight between uh, Brazil, Ukraine, and Russia. Uh, so your chair for this final will be uh, Anastasia. She she's there. You, you can say hi. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Thank you, Mateus, for introduction for everything. It was yeah. a very cool talk from Christoph indeed. I've enjoyed it myself. Uh, a couple of uh, organizational stuff. We do have on this call uh, only team members, possibly team leads, uh, organizers, and jury members. And I would ask everyone to the help of our organizational side to put your role if you're a juror or your team name if you're um, participant in front of your name in this Zoom, it would help us really much. Uh, another thing, we today have three sides, three team fights. So the reviewers throw us back. Finally, we are happy of this. So we move back to the most traditional rules as possible. We have reviewers, we have all three side discussion when the reviewer moderates the discussion between the opponent and the reporter and so on and so forth. And um, having also this, we move back to the traditional judging system. We have today seven jury members and we're gonna eliminate grades as we usually did to help reduce any fluctuations and extreme points in grading for some random reason which may pop up. It's all from the organizational side. If there are no questions about rules or et cetera, we can proceed to the captain fight. No questions, no stuff like that. Thank you. We should start now from the introductory part. So uh, I would suggest our team members introduce them first. Let it do it in alphabetic order. So Brazil, Russia, Ukraine. Please, Team Brazil, you're first. Introduce your team, your university, your team leads, etc. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Felipe Mazzi. I'm the captain of the Brazilian team. And I'm here with my team members, Annelisa, Leonardo, Maria Carolina, Anderson, and João, and also my team, our team leaders, Leandro Tesla and Pierre Louis. Um, we're from the University of Campinas in the state of Sao Paulo in Brazil. And it's our, actually our first time participating in the international competition. So we're quite thrilled to be here today. And we wish good luck to all the teams and a very nice physics fight. Thank you very much. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, we can clap on it. And uh, now, Team Russia, please introduce your team, yeah, so your hello. participants, uh, etc. Yeah, hello, I'm I'm Polonik, uh, captain of the Russian team. Uh, here we see Achov Sukhov, Karnov German, uh, Ivan Kolesnikov, uh, Kremenov Maxim, and uh, Dmitry Spinov, uh, who is, yes, shaking his hand now. Uh, you <laughs> but he's in the Russian team. So, um, we are students of uh, MPT, and our team leads are Alexey Chukasov and uh, both Yelena Zorygina and Alexander Satlichny. So, good luck for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And our remaining participant for the final fight is Team Ukraine. Team Ukraine, please introduce yourself, your team members, your team leaders, your university. Uh, good afternoon. We are Ukrainian team. Uh, I'm a team captain, uh, Fyodor Yevchenko. Uh, with me here is uh, Oleg Yevchenko, uh, Polina Kolkman, Vlada Sorganova, uh, Sasha Kitsenko, and Semyon Kananenko. Our team, uh, team leader is Zahar Mazovic. Wish you all a good fight. Excellent. Thank you very much. Now we know all participants today. Uh, the only people we need to get familiar with today is our jury members. Today we're gonna to have seven jury members if everything goes fine and everything managed to connect to the call. 
Uh, I have you listed in the order Federico, Alberto, Sebastian, Emery, Oki, Dmitro, Sonia. So I would introduce you in this order. Please, Federico, you first introduce yourself, your affiliation information about why you joined today. Uh, hello to everyone. I am Federico. I am the organizer of the national selection in, in, for Colombia. And I've been doing this for the past uh, four years. And uh, now I am a PhD student in the United States. So uh, this is my first time as a jury here in the international uh, tournament. I'm pretty sure you will enjoy it. Alberto, can you introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I am Alberto Rolandi. Uh, I am a PhD student at the University of Geneva and work in quantum information. Uh, and also I'm a member of the Execom and participated in, in uh, the IPT in 2018 as captain of the Swiss team. And since then I've been involved in the organization. Excellent. Uh, now Sebastian, our president, you've already seen him, but he may also tell about his appellation, etc. Yeah, um, thank you Anastasia. So apart from being the president of the IPT, of course, um, I'm Sebastian Fava. I'm a PhD student uh, in uh, the Max Planck Institute for the Dynamics and Sector of Matter in uh, Hamburg. We work mostly with the uh, ultra-fast uh, out of equilibrium uh, dynamic systems. And uh, I joined my, for my first IPT in 2017 as a student during my master in Milan. And uh, since then I've been part of the organization, of course, and, and I, I joined all the, 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 the subsequent IPTs. Okay, good, good luck to all the teams. I'm really looking forward to, to this fight. Great. Uh, thank you, Sebastian. Amori. Actually, I don't see you, but I hope you're in place. Do we have Amori? Yeah, seems like not, but if he joins us later, I think he will be able to introduce himself because there are some do you remember my billet because we don't need actually them for the captain fight? I've definitely seen Oki. Yes, hello everybody. My Hi. name is uh, Oki Andersson. I uh, first learned of the IPT in 2015 and I participated and I liked it. So I did it again and again. And now I am uh, forever part of this. Uh, I have uh, been the team leader and organizer at uh, Sweden since and uh, now I am a PhD student at the University of Gothenburg and I would like to commend all three teams for coming this uh, far no matter what grade I give you today I want you to know that uh, you're you are world class excellent and promising uh, the next in my list is Mitro Linichenko but I also don't see him in the call he's likely to join us later so our remaining uh, team member is Sonia Natale Sonia, hello, please introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm here. So nice to meet you all today. I'm sure that it will be a nice fight uh, and I'm eager to hear about uh, these three teams. Uh, so I'm an astroparticle physicist working at CERN, but uh, I learned about uh, IPT because uh, I have also teaching tasks I, and I was bringing my students uh, for the first time. And since then, uh, I continue to, to enjoy really this uh, kind of uh, event because uh, uh, I really think it's uh, useful for students uh, in a very wide way. So really eager to hear about you and good luck to everybody. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you for kind words. And also me, myself, my name is Anastasia. I'm gonna chair this fight, as Matteo said. I'm a postdoc at University College London doing research in optical communication. I used to be participants of the IPT for many years, winning it twice in 2011 and 2015. And from that time, I joined the organizer team and also representing the IPT in the UK. Is if there is no question about participants for this fight, we can move on to the captain fight. Yes, and now we're going to have a proper captain's fight. It's not going to be just a flip point. We had to bring mm -hmm. this thrill back to the IPT on the final. So, so we're going to have 
problem. So be prepped. <laughs> okay, so it's our captain fight. A bit of reminder about rules. Uh, if you're gonna have a set of questions, you need to answer us kind of performing an estimation based on our, your physics intuition and your physics experience. And you need to send the answer in private messages to me in the chat of Zoom. Uh, and because of the reason there is plenty of me, it shouldn't be not the one which is speaking me, but the one which is gonna be a clock showing me, which has, uh, who's reminded the name of me? Strange. The one which doesn't have chair in front of her name. Um, we expect from your answer always including the dimension unit, like what, what units you're measuring your answer, because if you miss some uh, prefixes, it's clearly that we won't treat it correctly. We're gonna treat it your correctness in logarithmic scale because we estimate the order of magnitude by any means. Uh, and after each round, you're gonna gain either one or two or three points, uh, depending on how close your answer was comparing to your competitors. And after that, we calculate the uh, total and decide who is the winner of the captain fight and who's gonna decide in what order they're gonna be presenting in this fight. Is it clear? Yes. Hope, hope so, great. So our captain fight task one, which you're gonna have two minutes to answer on. Uh huh. Uh, just for my, just one uh, small quick question: uh, Whom should I send uh, the answer? In private or in common chat? In private messages in Zoom, if it helps. Yes. Yeah. For whom exactly? To uh -huh. to me. Okay. But thank it's you. To me. Does it help? Do you see the correct me? Uh, Maybe it's not okay. So it's to the. You to should the, be. You should be able. You should be able now to see the clock. Yeah, the chair. The yeah. chair who has the clock. Does it help? Does it help Team Russia? Uh, it seems so. Fine. Yes, it's, it's okay. Excellent. Um, blah blah blah. Uh, so okay. Okay. We now know everything. You should be able to see my screen again. It's your cabinet fight uh, task one. It is with a bit of delay about the salt mine near Krakow. So Vielska salt mine located near Krakow is pretty famous uh, place, which is in World Heritage UNESCO site and has been supplying salt to the neighborhood since middle age. Your question is, to estimate how many liters of seawater you need to use to extract the same amount of natrium chloride of salt, uh, which was equal to the amount of salt which was normally extracted in one year of production in this mine. Now you have uh, two minutes to do it, and your time starts.
you have 30 seconds left. I think I received all answers actually to different uh, different myself since this call, but whatever. Thank you uh, for the list of sharing. Uh, so answers are answers are Brazil said uh, 5.8 uh, times the uh, fourth degree of 10. Then Russia said 1.3 times fifth degrees of 10, and Ukraine said 3.75 times then six degrees of 10. Uh, and we have answers. So it's based on the estimation that there is uh, six, seven tons of salt, and you can use like reference the amount of salt in seawater which is possible to be extracted. So the correct answer is 1.8 to the fifth power of 10 liters. So by the order of magnitude, definitely Russia was the first to receive three points. And let me do a first calculation. Like I do believe that Brazil is the closest, but let me double check. Brazil is 3.2 times difference. And Ukraine is 19 points difference. Yes. So Brazil is the second closest, you get two points, and Ukraine is the third closest, you got one point. I hope it's clear, and we move on, and you can hear some terrible knocking. Uh, Captain fight number two, where you again kind of have two minutes to answer it. Okay, oh wait, wait just a second. Uh, I'm also gonna be become the clock now. So uh, if all teams want to uh, pin uh, the clock, you know, so you can see an Atati screen for uh, for the captain fight question and then you keep, yeah, you can uh, pin me so you can have track of the time too. I just, uh, I think it'll be easier for, for everyone if they know the times. So sorry about the interruption, but yeah, go ahead Anastasia. Yeah, excellent, it's really helpful. I hope it's gonna be fine and uh, noise cancellation works for me well. So for the Captain Fight Task 2, you can see this huge size turning fork and your question is to estimate its eigenfrequency in hertz and you have two minutes for it. So you see it's not traditional one, it's unlikely to have traditional frequency. Uh, please, Mateus, start the timer. You run out of the half of the time. Thank you. 
Time is running out completely. Okay, I have all answers. Brazil said uh, 200 hertz. And, but you have sent it to Mateus, please, anyway, whatever Mateus runs the clock, send answers to me because I'm the only person who knows right answers. Uh, Russia answered me 150 hertz and Ukraine answered as well 150 hertz. While the correct answer is completely different, it's 5.4 hertz. It's pretty huge fork and has extremely low frequency. You can try to estimate it from the point that leg, leg size is around seven, eight times larger for this case, based on the scale that you see hand on the picture. So I hope it helps. Mm. So from my perspective, in order of magnitude, Russia and Ukraine giving the same answer 150 are closer than Brazil that gives 200. And I would give two, two, and one points respectively. I hope it's clear now. Uh, Tim um, Brazil. Maybe I can clarify. I was, I was mistaken. I thought I had to send the answer to Mateus. Is that not the case? So again, I didn't get. Oh, yeah, you, you sent me. Uh... But yeah, you you should you should send to to the chair Anastasia. I think it's better because she she's compiling everything there. So okay. yeah, I mean there's no there's no big problem. Um, <laughs> but yeah, thank you. Yeah, no worries. It just uh, it just adds us a bit of a logistic step. So the yeah. easiest thing to do is to send everything to me. I already opened both chats, so feel free to use any of them. We move to the next question. Uh, Captain fight three, again two minutes, and again two minutes, and it's going to be a very interesting one because it's going to be live one. So I'm going to show you a brush, and I hope you will see it. Yes, perfect. So here is the brush. You should be able to see it in front of me. Now that help? So uh, wait, let me, I think, let me, let me pin you. So, so everyone okay, can pin see me. also, uh, I think also in the right. transmission. When you uh, pin me, it's only for you, but okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't know that. <laughs> so here is the brush. It's pretty huge, uh, huge device, but very handy when you apply something to something. Uh, does everyone see it? And does everyone see the question in the, me, on the screen? So here is a brush, and you should estimate uh, the amount of water which this brush can keep being poured fully into the water. Is it clear? You need to estimate the amount of water. It should be given in grams because it's, we want to see like mass of water. Is it clear? Excellent. Mateus, start the timer. Okay, wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone can see there. So we're starting right now. Yeah. Oh, let me become the video. Now it's, it's going.
you run out of the half of your time. I think Ukraine answered to everyone. Why did I say it? All right, you have 10 seconds now. And Brazil also sent me the results. Thank you. Okay, so my plan to my plan to show you this is going to be visible. So I have also, do you see me? Oh, let me, oh, yeah. Yeah. So I have, I have the weights also here. OK. And now I'm going to weight the brush, like the dry one, and then the wet one. And I will try to show you the result by, uh, by basically uh, uh, making it to zero. Uh, artificially. So the brush, when I remove it, uh -huh, when I hide it, it doesn't help. Okay. It doesn't show, but brush, the dry one, has weight 26 grams. I cannot show it to you, unfortunately, because when I remove uh, the scale from the horizontal surface, it stops showing correctly. Now I made it completely wet in this glass. Let it stick a bit. And I put it on the scale. Make it a zero again. And it shows 41 gram. 26 minus 41 is something like 15. I hope everyone agrees with my arithmetic. So regarding the answers I had, seven from Brazil, five and five from Russia, and 100 from Ukraine, as everyone's seen. The correct answer is 15. So I would say that Brazil is the closest. So you get three points. Then Russia is roughly a ratio of three, you get two points. And Ukraine, roughly ratio of six, you get one point. Right. If there is no question, we can move to the next task. And our next task which was the answer. Now our next task is going to have three minutes. It's much more complicated, but it's really enjoyable. I personally adore it. Uh, it's about this lovely mouse, but imagine that <laughs> uh, they believe uh, they sit in kind of actually nuclear mouse traps because each trap uh, contains one gram on polonium 200 10. And the question is, what surface densities of such mouse trans should be, uh, which would be enough to melt the brain of a mouse, so reach the temperature of uh, 60 degree. Consider the basic temperature of 20 degree, and please send us in square meters your answer. Okay. All right, and your time will start now. Um, I, I have a question. Yes. Does this nuclear mass traps the same one as uh, in the first problem, in the problem list, or this? The uh, only like... thing you, you see here, yes, yeah, that is a, a great a grid of nuclear mass traps like in the problem, but the only feature of them here is they contain one gram on polonium. Okay, thank you. Will help? Excellent. Yes, Mateus, please start it then. Okay.
All right, you have one minute now for this rather tragic problem. Now 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. I still seconds. need Brazilian answers. Yes, I have all answers. Okay, then. Mm -hmm. And Russia. Doom, doom, doom. Excellent. So I received answers. Brazil answered 1.6, uh, 10 to the third degree units per square meter, like so 1,600. Russia answered 100 units per square meter, and Ukraine answered seven most fast per square meter. Now we will find out the correct answer, and the correct answer based on how much polonium uh, produces in terms of the uh, unit power, and also you can refer to some lookup tables, looking the flux uh, for the horizontal surfaces, which which supplies the required difference between 60 degrees and 20 degree. You see the reference here. So it is roughly uh, 3.55 plus minus <laughs> 0 0.15, so around three and a half. Mouse trap per square meter. Uh, so the less the better. And Ukraine was the closest with their answer seven, so you received three points. Russia with their answer 100 received two points. And Brazil with your answer 1600, you received one point. I hope everyone noticed that uh, this choice of uh, radioactive material in this question is not that random. It's our kind of homage to our host country, virtual host country this year, because when Maria Skodowska Curie uh, discovered the polonium, she named this uh, new discovered element by her homeland, by Poland. So that's why it is polonium. And I have the results. I have the results and we have split of the second place. I will, run for, I will go for the second question. Mateusz, what do you think? Uh, well, if we have a tie for a second place, yes, I think, have. yeah, I okay. think we should go for for a uh, one more round of, okay. of, a, of the captain fight. Yes. So the results are the following. For the first question, your uh, points were two through one. For the second question, one to two. For the third question, three to one. And for the fourth question, one to three. And that's why the total for Brazil is seven point. The total for Russia is nine point, and the total for Ukraine is seven point. Oh, okay. I hope it helps. So, we, uh, so we kind of determined the winner, and to decide the second place because of this equal, we move to the the remaining backup question. This reminder for this question now you'll have last time. You have uh, 45 seconds to solve this question. Yeah, so we, uh, in this, the last backup round, we decide uh, between who takes the second place in captain fight and who takes the third place in captain fight. I hope it's clear. Excellent. Ooh, our backup captain fight uh, question is about a Fermi problem. And actually, we decided to get you back to literature and ask you the very original traditional one. Your question is, how many piano tuners are there in Chicago? But not in the point where it was asked, but for today. You have 45 seconds for it. Mateus, please start. OK.
We have 15 seconds. I see Ukrainian answer. Five seconds. Ah, I see Brazilian okay. answers as well. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Just okay, cool. Assign it to the same to the same uh, uh, thread. Okay. Uh, so uh, Brazil answered me uh, 65 piano tuners. Ukraine answered 2,000 piano tuners. We'll now know who is the winner. 65 against 2,000. And the correct answer is, I don't see it, 180 piano tuners. Uh, you can see like uh, how it's calculated. So we start from the estimation how many people live in Chicago today, basically, yeah? And based on it, also how many people may have piano in their place and how many people, uh, how regularly they may want to have it tuned. So having this estimation, 180 piano tuners, uh, the Brasilia uh, answer, uh, no, the Ukrainian answer is 11 times larger, but Brazilian answer is three times smaller. So in this rough estimation, Brasilia is the closest one in this round. So Brasilia takes second place in Captain Fight and Ukraine takes third place in Captain Fight. Does everyone agree or you have any objections? Hope not. Excellent. So now we move to the decision about the, 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 uh, the tournament table for and I have stopped sharing my screen finally. So now you have time to decide about how you're gonna populate the tournament table for today. And first as a winner is Russia. So question is, you should decide in what order you want to be populated in the table. First, uh, second, or third. Yeah, so we want uh, to be, to be uh, to write second, to write second one. Light uh, as second. Yes, write the second. Second one. Okay, the second place is Brazil. Brazil, when you want to be populated in this table. First or third, like, uh, like, like you decide the first or you decide you take what is left. I don't hear you. I'm sorry, can you repeat the... Okay, so the, the question is, uh, for this question five, we decide in what order teams are populating the table for the tournament. So which team decides first, which team decides second, which team decides third. Now Russia is the winner of the captain fight. They say they, they will decide second after someone. And the question to you now as a runner ups for the captain fight is either you want to decide first where you put your name to the table or you take what's left. Your answer? Okay, I get it. Just one second, please. Uh -huh. Okay, sure, take it down. So we have the option to be first, right? You can decide first, yes. Or yes, you can that's decide that's... Uh -huh. first, okay. please. Okay, so you decide first, Russia decides second, and Ukraine takes what's left. Please, Brazil, what line you want to be in? Uh, we'd like to begin as reporters. Okay, so you are, oh, sorry. I'm using my piece. Okay, Russia, you're... So in the first, first. In the first stage, uh, where are you? Okay, you pick being a reviewer for the first round. So it's here, am I right? Excellent. Then Ukraine, you're going to be opponent in the first round. Actually, we have everything for, for now. And I believe uh, what's remaining for us before we start listening to talks is actually to introduce our remaining members of jury. I think they all joined us already. So I definitely 
seen Dimitro around. Dimitro, can you unmute yourself and introduce where you're from and uh, where is your affiliated with? Okay, hi everybody. My name is Dmitro Olinichenko. Uh, I am a postdoc at the University of Washington Institute for Nuclear Theory in the United States. Uh, I have been playing in the tournament for a long time, starting from 2011, I think, to 2013. Once it was 12 was, yesterday. <laughs> Sorry. It was a best reporter of the tournament. Yes, I'm, I'm judging this tournament. I was uh, team leader of the German team, and I was team leader of the US team at some point of my life. Okay, thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to an exciting final. Excellent, very diverse IPT career. And the remaining uh, jury member for today is uh, Amari. Amari. Please introduce yes. yourself. Hello, so I'm um, Amaury from France. Uh, I'm currently a PhD student in, a, so in a numerical flow dynamics, but more importantly, I'm a former contestant from the 2016 edition. 18. And, uh, 18 edition <laughs> and also coached the French team for 2019. And uh, good luck to everyone. Excellent, excellent. Now we know all our jury members who they are and where they're from, et cetera, et cetera. So what can I do now? Is the start preparation time for the reporter? Uh, can we, since we started a little bit earlier, can we get a few, a little break before the preparation of the report? A little break? Two minutes for bathroom break. <laughs> okay, two minute break, technical one, I'll stop it now. Please, uh, everyone uses break because we're gonna be you're gonna have a tight uh, schedule for today. Well, okay, right. even sure. I'll use this break, uh, and I'm gonna move to our section on YouTube. There's lots of comments here. We started the broadcast. Uh, wow. And I think there there was a mistake. I think people were thinking that maybe this is what will decide the IPT champion, and this is not what will decide the IPT champion. We're gonna have the physics fights. Uh, the captain's rights were only to decide whether the teams would present in which order the teams would present in the finals. But uh, of course, that's not what the IPT is about. It's about the presentations themselves that we're going to have uh, in a few minutes. And I'm glad to see uh, a big support from Brazil there. There's lots of people cheering. Really, a lot. I mean, it's a complete domination by the Brazilian team. I'm so happy to see this. Uh, and there's all these people from from Russia too. Uh, yeah, so many, so many comments here. Uh, okay, I'm back. I'm not able to share my screen yet. Oh, okay. Uh, let's. Now you can. Huh. Yeah, sure. We can check it again and again. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Can you hear me fine? Absolutely. So, okay, I'm ready to start. <clears throat> Uh, hello everyone, my name is Felipe Mazzi, and I'll be presenting to you problem number 13, branching light. So, uh, when a laser beam passes through a thin film, random filaments of light are created by an effect known as branch flow. We want to explain the phenomenon and ask if we can design a medium to produce specific branching patterns, and also if the phenomenon can be extended to other wave media. So let's begin with a quick review of the literature on the subject. Branched flow was observed by the first time in 2001 for a two-dimensional electron gas, and then for the first time for light in 2004 by shining a laser through a soap film. And once again in 2020 in the paper that's included in the problem statement. In both these cases, the authors provided a quite thorough theoretical description of the, of the phenomenon. Uh, and we went to discuss this treatment and also discuss the fact that although this is by definitely the prettiest example of branched flow of light is by no means the only one. And it is probably the one which obfuscates the mechanism behind the phenomenon the most. 
So this is the phenomenon we're interested in. Uh, we shine a laser in a soap film suspended on a metal ring, and we observe the formation of channels of high intensity. These channels can be better visualized if we take the image into the RGB space and look only at the green components. So I have selected here a few frames so that you can get a better understanding of the kind of patterns that I'm discussing. So I want to stress that we are defining branched flow by the presence of these channels of high intensity. So as I said, let's follow the state of the art in the literature. Uh, inspired by the paper that's, that was mentioned in the previous slide by considering a slab waveguide. So a waveguide is a device with a, with a core which has a refractive index higher than that of the substrate and of the cover. And we know that by solving Maxwell's equations in this environment, we arrive at the Helmholtz equations, which can be solved to yield different propagation constants as a function of the normalized frequency. The propagation constant is a form of quantifying how much the, the, the way in which the wave propagates inside the waveguide and the normalized frequency is a way uh, of measuring the ratio. It's proportional to the ratio between the thickness and the, the wavelength of light. So, uh, so we, what we see is that the, the solution tells us that as we change the thickness of the waveguide in re relative to the normalized frequency, we are changing the amount by the way in which the, 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 the light is able to propagate inside the, way, the guide. Now we want to, uh, to consider the fact that a soap film is not a uniform wave, wave guide. There are, there, are, there are variations in the thickness across the plane of the film. And so what we do in order to introduce this difference is we consider a separable solution for the electric field in which the X, Z, the, the Y dependence yields the usual solution, which I have shown you in the previous slide. And the X, Z dependency gives you uh, something that's identical to the time independent Schrodinger equation. And we get there by adding both to the left-hand side and to the right-hand side a term which is equal to the mean effective refractive index throughout the soap film. But you may as well say, well, there's nothing special about this equation that should predict branched flow. And the key here is to understand that the magic happens in the potential. The potential, which is, which, which is given by this difference between the mean effective refractive index and the local effective refractive index, uh, is, must obey specific statistical properties. It must be spatially correlated, and, uh, so, uh, which means that the correlation length must be small compared to the wavelength. Must, sorry, must be much larger than wavelength, and it must be weak enough so that there are small deviations from the mean across the entire field. Uh, so in, 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 in general, it is shown in the literature that this equation can predict almost all the features of interest of branched flow, but still this is not quite an intuitive solution yet. So I'd like to, introduce, uh, I'd like to bring your attention to the phenomenon of caustics, which is probably the most uh, approximate day-to-day -day example we, we know of uh, similarity with branched flow. Uh, sorry, if there, or there is, the is the closest phenomenon we know from our day-to-day -day lives resembling the formation of channels of high intensity. And this occurs whenever, whenever light encounters a curved surface, surface or a wavy surface. For instance, by shining a light behind a glass of water or by seeing it at the bottom of a pool. In both these cases, this uh, unevenness in the, surface of the, in the surfaces act as ripples in the potential and therefore act as a series of lenses giving rise to caustics, which are the which give rise to the channels of heightened intensity, which is the way in which we have defined branched flow in general. OK, so in theory, we could say that the problem is somewhat solved because a measurement of the thickness distribution will completely determine the system. If you can measure the thickness distribution, you can calculate the effective refractive index. You have the potential. You can just solve the time independent Schrodinger equation and you get almost everything that's of interest. And that's shown very well in the literature. Uh, but the problem asks us to try to, to, to uh, produce specific branching patterns. Uh, and even though we cannot control in practice the thickness distribution of a soap film, uh, unless we have very sophisticated technical apparatus, we can try to control general trends. So for instance, it is, it is well known that when we tilt a soap film, we create a thickness gradients, which can, uh, and via film, thin film interference, we can deduce the thickness of the soap film at each point by looking at the color which is able to show, uh, as we have, sh have shown in this figure. So for instance, if we know the refractive index of soap and the wavelength of laser light, we can calculate that thickness, the, the higher thicknesses will be associated with higher effective refractive indexes. So by looking at our expression for the potential, we may expect that higher thickness corresponds to higher effective index and therefore lowest, lowest potential. So if you build a setup like this in which we keep a laser light held fixed and we put a camera in front of, of a support which we can tilt at, at will, we can try to, to observe if we, we expect that the, the branching pattern will bend towards the region of lowest potential. And that's precisely what we observe here in this figure where we show that the, the pattern begins by bending towards the left in the beginning and then bends towards the right as we begin to tilt the soap film, even though the laser light is held fixed. 
So, okay, this is a nice correspondence and this is a nice intuition of the model. But now I want to ask an even more fundamental question. A question. Are waveguides really necessary? Is there something fundamental about waveguide-like systems? Well, I hope we have convinced you that what the key to understand what's happening in the soap film is that non-uniform thickness in the film creates ripples in the effective refractive indexes. And if they obey the correct statistical properties, they will act as an array of lenses and they will bleach the formation of caustics. And, there, and thus the channels of high intensity, which we discussed at the beginning of the presentation. However, there is no reason why we should expect that uh, the refractive index itself could not fulfill the same role. Uh, and we want to test this hypothesis that there's nothing special about waveguide-like system by constructing an experiment, a very simple experiment, in which you have air, hand sanitizer, and a glass plate. This can in no way be described as a waveguide because there is no total internal reflection in all of the interfaces. Uh, sorry, between the hand sanitizer and the glass plate. We, there's, we cannot talk about an effective refractive index. We can only talk about a refractive index and its spatial distribution. So we begin by doing a very simple setup. We just put some rolls of, of hand sanitizer and we observe, uh, and we put shine a laser light on it and we observe a, a formation of one channel of high intensity, but you may as well say, okay, this is just uh, a case of refraction. But as I begin to add more channels, I begin to see uh, begin more rows of hand sanitizer. I begin to see more channels of heightened intensity. And now I'm starting to be able to control the formation of these patterns in this, in this thing which we call macroscopic branched flow. So here you can see four columns. I have four uh, channels of heightened intensity. But now I want to approximate the case of a soap film even more. So I just make a scatter of blobs of hand sanitizer. And I start to see something that I hope you, you were convinced that in the limit could reproduce all properties of branched flow just by positioning these droplets. And I can come even closer if I just smash two plates, or two glass plates filled with hand sanitizer together. And then I'll see a pattern which is perfectly equivalent to what I may, might have seen in a soap film. So this is what I would, could say it's a quote unquote random distribution of lenses. So now let's stop for a minute and consider. Oh, sorry, uh, just one uh, another key feature of the microscope of this microscopic branching flow is that, that at this scale we can actually try to produce an arbitrary branching pattern. So here's a branching pattern which we observe in the soap film, and then we can just try to position a few droplets, and the, the only few are necessary, and we can create a coarse manual reconstruction simply using drops of high refractive index. And I hope this convinces you that if I had perfect control of the position and sizes of the droplets, that there's no reason why we couldn't be able to produce any arbitrary branching pattern. So now we, now we can stop for a minute and think of this in terms of ray optics, which is much simpler and much more intuitive than what we have been describing so far. Since the potential must have a high correlation length, that means that we are talking about thickness islands, which, are, which have radii much larger than the wavelength of light, which is in the range of, a, of hundreds of nanometers. So ray optics is appropriate in this case and much more intuitive. So we can build a, a, set, uh, a model like this one, which is inspired by this paper, which was published very recently, in which we have a substrate with a refractive index equal to the average effective refractive index of a soap film. And we can populate it with randomly positioned and randomly sized islands of high, a slightly higher refractive index. And when we do that, uh, we see that this is a, a very, it's a very good approximation for what we have, a very good description for what I have shown you in the soap film. Uh, sorry, in the glass plate with the hand sanitizer. And it is a very good model to try to reproduce the properties of branched flow in a soap film by taking the limits and looking at a simulation like this. So what we, all we do here is we try to reproduce the main features of the phenomenon just by considering that the, the laser light has an initial, has a normal distribution for its initial incidence angle. And we just generate a matrix with random uh, with randomly assigned refractive indexes. And just by including Snell's law in the physics for this system without any total internal reflection or without any Fresnel coefficients, we can reproduce uh, the main features of the, of the phenomenon. And this should indicate more clearly that in the limit, this ray optics description can uh, be appropriate for the, even for the soap film, which is the finer case compared to macroscopic branched flow. Uh, finally, we want to discuss if the phenomenon can be extended to another to other wave media. And I have discussed the case of two-dimensional electron gas in which we have impurities in the substrate acting as the ripples in the potential. And even more interestingly, you can consider the case of tsunamis when the wavelength is, uh, is, is much larger than the average uh, height of the ocean floor. We could say that the formation of it, when, the, the, when the wavelength of the tsunami is much larger than the, the average height of the ocean floor, we, the formation of branching patterns can even assist in the prediction of the magnitude and occurrence of tsunamis. 
So uh, in conclusion, we have shown that the channels of high intensity are produced when a medium acts as an array of lenses capable of producing caustics. This can be seen either by observing thickness variations in a soap film, which is the finer case, or in the, by just simply by changing refractive index, by making refractive index variations in a completely non-confined region, contrary to what has been observed in the papers which we have shown. Uh, we were able to alter the potential so as to change general properties of the pattern. That's what we did when we tilted the soap film and, and observed slight deviations in the path of the pattern. And in mac macroscopic scales, we positioned the lenses so as to produce specific branching patterns, even though some finesse was lost. And finally, we noticed that the phenomenon has been observed in other media, wave media, and I hope our discussion of macroscopic branching flow has helped to know, has helped uh, the understanding that this extension should be even more natural. So thank you, uh, and I'm now open for questions. Excellent. Thank you, Felipe. It was very good. Uh, just a quick note, uh, please refer now to my image uh, on Zoom to see the clock, because I'm going to head over time. We didn't tell you before. So now, uh, opponents, you can go for your clarifying questions. Thank you. Dear uh, reporter, have you tried to measure uh, experimentally the uh, thickness of the inhomogeneities? Uh, not really. We, the only case in which we can measure the thickness is by thin film interference in the case in which I tilted the soap film. But if it's not tilted, then if there's no visible thin film interference, then we were not able to measure it experimentally. Uh, so in your uh, solution, there, uh, you didn't consider any inhomogeneity that may be a uh, different size of uh, such that gives you uh, interference picture. Yes, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah. You see, for instance, in the simulation, which I showed at the end, we're, we're modulating the presence of inhomogeneities in the thickness by the changes in the refractive index, correct? That's, that's, a, that's the point at which you take into account. The, the variations in the thickness are essential to predict the branching pattern. Okay, thank you. Uh, how did you measure it, uh, dependence on the, of the uh, ref uh, refraction index on the thickness of the layer. You showed this plot on the one of the, your first uh, slides. Yes, yes, yes. How it was. This, uh, this is a solution. To, when I showed the, the Helmholtz equation, which I showed in the beginning of the presentation, it's a well known solution for a slab waveguide, which it only takes two parameters to measure it. Uh, so uh, there is also second question. Did you try to uh, conduct experiment with uh, different lasers with different uh, wavelengths and how it uh, affect on the phenomena? Uh, we did try it with different laser colors, but the, the difference was uh, negligible and we would expect that and this is a co this corresponds to intuition given that the what, in, what the, the most important factor are the deviations from the mean, not the mean itself. Thank you. Thank you. We're out of time for clarifying questions. So now, opponents, you have three minutes for preparation. Oi. Anastasia, you have to uh, you have to become the clock still. You haven't you haven't show uh, shared. Uh, I'm pretty sure I do. Can you see it now? No, no, we cannot see it. So this is why I'm. Okay. <laughs> I can I see it from the second account. It's it's not the me who's speaking. So I yeah for so I'm I'm showing the time. Does now. it help? No, it's I'm showing the time now. <laughs> Yeah, we cannot see it. So, oh, in the second account, let's see. Okay, there's another account here. Okay. Okay, then I'll stop uh, sharing my clock then. <laughs> Thank you. I hadn't seen it. And I got worried that uh, they might not be seeing the, the times. Mm 
now it's really stopped. Yes. I think it's 30 seconds left or so. Yeah, it's 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 30 seconds left, yeah. Uh, time out, you said. Excellent, you just run out of your time. Okay, thank you, I'm ready now. Uh, good afternoon, my name I is- I start your time. Thank you. Uh, my name is Oleg Vashtenka, and today uh, I will be an opponent on the problem number 13, branching light. Uh, according to the statement of the problem, uh, reporter had to, uh, estimate the phenomenon when the random filaments appear when they pass through the uh, thin film, for example, soap bubble film, and also uh, explain this phenomenon, uh, explain how uh, can uh, this medium produce this scientific, uh, this specific branching and uh, extend to the other wave uh, pheno phenomenon. In first part of the report, uh, we saw the demonstration of uh, this phenomena. Uh, I think it's what a very beautiful demonstration. It helped us to understand uh, what happens in this solution. I think that it's really a great part of the report. Uh, but uh, on the part of qualitative explanation, uh, we think that uh, it was really lack of qualitative explanation. We can't uh, truly understand what such uh, of inhomogeneity uh, involves uh, the beam, how it appear in uh, this task. Okay, uh, then in a theoretical investigation, uh, reporter uh, starts from the uh, waveguide uh, equation, a, a canal equation, uh, and uh, after uh, we think that uh, this model for this type of inhomogeneity is uh, really applicable. We think that such uh, equation uh, truly, uh, truly nice for this uh, type of inhomogeneity. And uh, after that, in uh, theoretical part was written uh, a canal equation in a waveguide and uh, it's uh, really hard to understand, but this equation was uh, really similar to the uh, Schrodinger equation. Uh, and after that, uh, in modeling, reporter tried to model the specially uh, correlated potential uh, using only correlation function that was obtained, uh, obtained from the dependence on the, uh, on the intensity of light from the interference picture. Uh, then he obtained the thickness of the layer and then uh, effective refraction index. Uh, so by uh, this measurement, we think that the correlation function uh, can't by itself define the picture that we see uh, in, the, in the result. Uh, what, uh, what I mean, I think that if in his uh, modeling reported right to uh, make two different potentials with the uh, with the uh, the same uh, correlation radius, uh, we will obtain uh, really different uh, branching pictures. And I think it's a really uh, good point to improve uh, in this uh, in this report. Uh, also, size of inhomogeneity weren't variated in this task, but we think that it's really very, uh, very important because of different sizes of inhomogeneity uh, we think may uh, involve or not involve uh, the light. So uh, branching may appear or uh, not appear in this, uh, in this task. Also, we want to say that to make a really nice report in this task, uh, I think it is necessary to analyze different mechanism uh, of such a branching uh, in this task. For example, it may be self-focusing uh, uh, due to the heating, uh, or it may be a big uh, inhomogeneity that not uh, involve the uh, 
interference uh, picture so may be absorbed by naked eye or by uh, shadow method. Uh, okay, and uh, we think that uh, in this report, uh, the task was saluted uh, nicely, but only in one part. There are, we didn't saw any comparison between uh, theoretical and experimental explanation. I think that by naked eye, we can uh, saw that any uh, branching is similar, but to analyze uh, this branching nicely, I want to discuss the different parameters uh, that we can uh, analyze in uh, this uh, task. For example, number of branches uh, on different cross sections. I think that you using... run out of your time. Thank you. Okay, okay, and what, uh, uh, my first question, uh, how uh, did reporter uh, analyze, did the branching appear or not? Uh, how to measure amount of branches uh, on different images, images, for example, for theory and ex an experiment and compare it, uh, and compare it, yes. Okay, so in, in general, our method of, of, of creating what we call macroscopic branches flow was not about attempting to predict properties such as the number of branches, right? So our comparison was to, to demonstrate our main goal and with that, with that experiment was to demonstrate that uh, the branches flow uh, was arising from phenomena simpler than what was than the first explanation which we provided with just in terms of ray optics, right? We wanted to see if we could reproduce the main features of the phenomena Without recurring to, without having to recur to any wave properties of light, and, and is, that, is that clear? Maybe because and that's that's an important point because I wanted to point out that in the beginning of your opposition, by the way, let me just say thank you for the, your comments. Uh, uh, your you mentioned the lack of a qualitative explanation, but I would say that our entire concern with this problem was an attempt to provide a more qualitative explanation because the treatment in terms of wave of the waveguide approximation. Is provided in the problem statement in the article in the paper that's included in the problem statement, which is a very well established result. But what we, we believe that that was obfuscating the real physical mechanism, and we tried to show that it was actually a much simpler explanation. So I think we did our one of our main conclusions, in fact, was to provide a clearer qualitative explanation. Okay, thank you. I understood you, but I my question was about can we propose uh, any quantitative characteristic to uh, compare different theoretical models and your experimental prediction. How we can uh, compare the thickness in the theory and experiment? How we can compare the branching picture, number of branches, uh, number of splittings per uh, meter, for example? How we can do this in your solution? Well, if if refraction is, if our, our model proposes that refraction, for instance, is enough to, pr to predict most of the features of interest, we can, if, if you can describe the medium completely, you can pr predict any property of the branching pattern, correctly. And that's the case for, that's also, if you can measure the thickness distribution, in fact, you can, you can calculate the potential in, across the entire film, and then you get a, com a complete description of the phenomenon. Unfortunately, ideally, that, that, that this has been done in the literature, Unfortunately, our, our entire experiment was, was done at home due to the pandemic, so we, we couldn't even we couldn't try to replicate the, the, what has already been done in the literature. But this is a well-known, uh, this is a well-established result. Okay, and uh, what do you think about your second experiment? Uh, how was the uh, uh, effective size of inhomogeneities uh, that affect the branching? What size of inhomogeneity? Maybe you can uh, estimate it. One millimeter or one nanometer. What do you think? Uh, the the thickness of the of the soap film. You mean it's in the range of a, a few tens of nanometers uh, of uh, soap and film. Of the refract inside soap film that uh, creates the branching. Yes, the, the inhomogeneities in the thickness of the soap film are in the range of a few tens of nanometers. And this can be calculated if, if you observe the branching pattern. Uh, uh, this this average deviation does correspond to properties of the branching pattern, 
but the thickness of the soap film itself, we also know that this variations in about 10, in a few tens of nanometers corresponds to deviations in the effective indexes, which correspond to maybe from 1.3 to 1.4. This is what we expect to see in, the, in your average soap film. Uh, as I understood, the size of inhomogeneities was nearly 10 nanometers. It's uh, really lower than uh, wavelengths of your laser. Well, I'm talking about the thickness of the, ah, so I mean the size of the homogeneities in terms of the radii, ah, okay, then I, it's in range of a few millimeters. That If, if I can show my presentation, then I may, maybe it can be clarified. Can and I you can share my stop screen? Stop sharing, apparently, stop sharing. And... Okay, uh, may I ask a uh, last question? Uh, what do you think about not size of inhomogeneity, but uh, shape of it? Can it uh, change the picture? What do you think? Maybe not only correlation radius, uh, involves on the, uh, maybe uh, not only it uh, changed the picture. What do you think about it? Maybe it may be circles or uh, lines or thread light structure. Well, surely this, this is a picture in which the color map represents the thickness distribution in the film. So I think that may give you an idea of how the shapes change across the, the, the Yes, but the, it's the excellent, excellent. Yeah, and then you're gonna discuss the shape or any other valid questions uh, including the reviewer our third member of the discussion dear reviewers you have now time for clarifying questions uh, okay uh, thank you <clears throat> so the first question we uh, want to ask is about the average uh, thickness of the ray so have you made any uh, well, have you tried to measure the thickness of the uh, of the ray and well, maybe you varied it and uh, get, got different uh, pictures. If you mean the length of the beam waste of the laser beam? Uh, I mean the, the thickness, the width, the width of the uh, beam. Yes, it's, it's a few millimeters. It's, uh, it's, it's something you can find in, in your, the manual for the laser, the laser pen that you buy. Okay, it's so, a pretty so, standard so, result. So you haven't changed it, yes? We haven't changed it. Okay, and uh, one more question is is about your slide number uh, 25. Well, uh, there we can see the uh, branches. Are they all of the same size? Uh, all, all the branches there, excluding the main one? In this, simul in this simple simulation, yes. If we included Fresnel coefficients, then we they would have different sizes corresponding to the amount of transmittance that occurs in each boundary. Okay, thank you. I have a, such a question. So, mm -hmm. does your refractive index is is it smooth or is it step like with a given refractive indexes on this slide? Uh, it is smooth as you would expect if you look at, at, the, at this. I think it's best to look at this one. So, changes in the let me find it. Okay, changes in the thickness correspond to very smooth devi smooth changes in the effective index. Or smooth. Sorry. Yeah. You're really low. It is smooth or uh, step like the in the simulations. They are the, yeah, in the, in the simulations, they are step like because we're, we're using a mesh in a, in a matrix with uh, greater potential. But this is the but this is the appropriate for the case of when you're applying Snell law, right? Because multiple, okay, yeah, it's step, thank step like. Thank you, but I can't hear you quite clearly. Uh, and we'll take the time out for the refresh. Okay.
Excellent. We start okay. seeing your can, screen. Can you see, see my screen? Yes. yes. And can you hear me? Okay, great. Yes. Uh, Scorpio. Uh, okay, so I am Maxim Klimonov and I'm going to review the problem uh, of the branching light. Here you can see the statement of the problem. And uh, well, coming to the comments on the report, well, we saw uh, a great report from Brazilian team. Uh, we saw literature review, also caustics explain, and there were a lot of uh, theoretical uh, theoretical models provided. Well, we saw Helmholtz, uh, Helmholtz equations and uh, also different patterns, uh, characterizations that helped uh, the team to solve the task. Also, we saw experiments and uh, parametrics that the, the team made. And uh, well, they, they uh, provided us a simple water drops analogy that was, well, uh, quite rough, but uh, it uh, qual qualitatively, it explained the effect. Uh, well, looking uh, for the points to improve, well, uh, in theoretical, uh, we can say that this analogy was was quite rough and experiments and parametrics well uh, only general trend control we saw there uh, we should uh, we should uh, it could be made much more clear uh, well and we saw lack of real life experiments it would be uh, better to see more now coming to the opponent well uh, there were some clarifying questions uh, and more significant was about different lasers. Well, uh, the opponent uh, worked well, but we think that his task uh, was, um, uh, was uh, well done only partially because some improvements were suggested, but the main trend about uh, controlling, about uh, well, basic physics and controlling the uh, shape were mentioned only uh, slightly, but they had uh, good and well, enough self-opinion in their uh, opponent uh, speech. Uh, coming to the discussion, well, there were uh, some important questions asked. Uh, the first one was about uh, amount of branches and uh, the answer of uh, reporter team uh, was uh, that they tried to, to provide the simplest model they could, and well, they succeeded in that. But we find the next question much more important, well, about uh, numerical criteria, the main parameters of, uh, of, uh, of comparison of different branches. And uh, well, that, uh, th that question was important, and, but we disagree with the reporter that uh, told that any property uh, of the system can be uh, such a parameter. The next uh, question was about in uh, homogeneity size. And well, we, we thought, uh, we, we didn't get the uh, clear answer, uh, but well, the answer was not, not, not uh, full. So now, uh, well, the discussion was quite productive. Uh, were asked relevant questions, but we uh, saw lack of self-opinion of the opponent. And now we are going to come to uh, to a general discussion of three teams. And okay, well, you go for general discussion. Uh, yes, we are them. we are coming to the general discussion. And now the first question I want to ask is about B beam splitting mechanism because uh, for well for us it was uh, not very clear uh, in. In, in general way, so you draw, uh, uh, you drew there uh, the uh, beams of equal uh, of equal uh, of, of equal width, and well, we, we want to understand it completely. Uh, so, dear reporter, please, uh, can you? Uh, uh, not sure. Let me share my presentation. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure what you mean by the beam splitting mechanism. You mean in the simulation or in the actual experiment? No, no, no. The, 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 basic, the basic physics uh, mechanism, well, the beam comes to that uh, bubble and, and well, what happens next? N not, not according to equations, but according to, uh, to the physics. It's an excellent question. Uh, it's a series, what I try to show in the presentation is that it's a series of refraction, right? The standard answer in the literature would be to make a model such as this one. We find it's a little bit too complicated. The truth is, what we have tried to demonstrate is that this splitting of the beam occurs due to the formation of caustics. Maybe I can show you an image here, which will give you a better intuition. So this is a standard example of how caustics are formed, right? Light encounters a curved surface, and then it refracts, and sometimes the, rays, the refracted rays will meet at a single point, and that will lead to the formation of channels of heightened intensity. So the, the short answer would be that the, the mechanism is the formation of caustics. Uh, okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Okay, great. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, on opinion of our team, uh, on the report was not uh, considered a type of inhomogeneity that can really uh, nice uh, do this uh, branching. We think that uh, size of inhomogeneity uh, not so not a small uh, that can uh, to provide an uh, interference uh, picture on the first stages of uh, existence of the bulb of the uh, bubble uh, and uh, so uh, due to the difference uh, in the uh, refracting uh, refraction uh, index uh, so we saw refraction on these inhomogeneities so it is also very important that uh, the shape of inhomogeneities uh, not similar to the shape of uh, uh, interference picture uh, is, I think it's maybe thread-like structure. So uh, it's thread involves a beam uh, and we see a splitting at the same uh, position as, as this uh, inhomogeneity. Okay, okay, this, thank you. The, sorry, thank you. just one quick comment. This is one point which I wanted to show in the previous discussion. And this is a picture when you see the actual dimension of the in homogeneity, here's a one millimeter scale. So this is the size of the so-called thickness islands. So I think maybe that clarifies a little bit. Uh, okay. I think this in homogeneity is uh, unclear was not a linear uh, size thickness on the layer. I'm sorry? Thickness of this in homogeneity. This in homogeneity is a a change of the width, width. Yes, correctly. Yes, correct. and which and the magnitude uh, of the change, the magnitude of the change yeah. is in the range. I, I answered it in the. I think I answered it in the discussion. It's a few tens of nanometers. The mag, but that doesn't. The, what really concern, what we're concerned with, with here is the distribution in the in the plane of the film, right? The size of the the size of the the the, the ripples in the the thickness is only important in the sense that they could, they change the refractive index. Okay, thank you. From this point, we can involve the team members to the discussion. Feel free to use the chat box so we all can see that you want to raise something. Uh, okay, sense. so if, if anyone, yes, if anyone has a question, please uh, write plus into the chat. And now, uh, well, I, I already see one uh, plus, but uh, first, you, you, well, you, you raised uh, a great topic about the sizes of that inhomogeneities. And what about the the radius, the the not the width, but the uh, radius. And does this radius make any boundary uh, conditions to uh, any well? Yes, boundary uh, boundary conditions to your model. You're referring what to, the to the radius of the thickness islands. That's it. To these to these islands. Is that correct? Is that what you're referring to? Uh, well, yes. Okay, so I'm not sure I understood the question, but. Uh, well, so here is a, clay, a case which is clearly not, uh, it, it's, it's starting to become similar to what we actually see in the soap film, but this, clearly the dimensions here are too large, right? So when we get to something that's more random, which is probably more appropriate, uh, more similar to the soap film, then we can get something that it, it starts to become more uh, a better reproduction. But maybe that's not what you were actually asking. Sorry. Can you clarify your question? May, may uh, I answer? Well Okay, okay, you can answer. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think it's very complicated and interesting question, but it is very important to understand that to uh, explain <laughs> the phenom uh, this phenomenon, the mechanism of branching, the size, the radiuses, any boundary uh, conditions of uh, these inhomogeneities, we need to make a quantitative analysis. We saw uh, such a branching on this picture. We will saw such a branching on the next picture, but it may be very different branches, very, very different branches. It's not a new phenomena that we uh, can obtain branches on different inhomogeneities, but does slide this, exactly this inhomogeneity uh, appear due to, the, due to this inter interference uh, picture or maybe uh, another uh, and other inhomogeneities. Well, well I, 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 okay. I believe that, uh, well, we, we got your position, but uh, we have some uh, 
some questions in the chat. So uh, yeah, let's well, proceed to it. Yes, let's go to Ivan Kolesnikov's questions. Hello, Ivan Kolesnikov, Team Russia, and. Uh, during the discussion with the reviewer, uh, the question was raised about the size of such inhomogeneities in the thickness variation. So I'm curious, what inflicts the size of these homogeneities? What is the maybe hydrodynamics behind it? How does the environment conditions like convection, temperature, and so on influence these parameters, for example, correlation length, which was presented in the report? maybe both to the reporter and the uh, opponent. Thank you. Uh, it's a very interesting question. Across the, the film, the thickness variations are due to ranging from the flow of liquids inside the film to the gradient, surface tension gradient, which also causes some displacement of fluids. There's also the, the, any oscillations in the any form of wind will also alter the, the, the thin film because our environment was not obviously not perfectly controlled. So all of these factors combine to produce these, these variations. But if you're asking if there's any, if the only way we could find of actually create forcing a general trend was by tilting the film. So in general, we just assume that it is random. Okay, so I hope that the question is answered. And now the comment from Maria Carolina from Brazil. Hi everyone. Um, both team, uh, the opponent and the reviewer uh, ask about the heating, uh, and I want to ask if uh, you consider it that's important for this problem, or just uh, the changing of the reflect reflective index is important. Uh, may I answer? Yeah. Yes, we analyzed uh, this phenomena in uh, our solution, and it the same phenomena was analyzed in. Uh, a couple of uh, papers, uh, but in our investigation, we uh, obtained that uh, role of heating and also the role of light pressure uh, is uh, not very significant, is maybe neglectable. Neglect. Mm -hmm. neglect, yes, we can neglect it. Neglectable, yeah. Yes, that's the Excellent. same conclusion we got. Okay. Oh, oh, okay, great, yeah. thank you. I think we run out of time. If, uh... By the last point, uh, no one want to make any short comments. We will proceed to the concluding remarks. OK, then thank you, everybody, for the discussion. Thank you. Concluding remarks for the reporter. OK, so first of all, I'd like to thank the Russian and the Ukrainian team for this discussion. I thought it was very productive. Uh, and that we now have many ideas to, and how to, improve, to, how to improve the problem, especially it would be nice to try to quantify a little bit more of the parameters uh, in terms of the, to try to actually, to make the comparison between what we call macroscopic branched flow and the oh, already well-established case. So this is something that will definitely be uh, interesting. Uh, in general, they would raise some concerns about the, the sizes and the distribution and the, of the, of the uh, effective index profile, let's say. But in general, it seems that the, our conclusions held up. Our, uh, we think that it was clear for all the participants that the description in terms of real optics was a little bit more intuitive. And we find the, so I guess we have co converged in this most important topic. So uh, that's it. I thank you all for your suggestions and we can go on. Excellent. Now we can proceed to question from jury members. I suggest jury members, let's follow the logic how you guys did during the discussion. So please put classes to the chat for us all to see. And then I will hand over to you one by one. I see Oki. Oki, you're first. Please fire away. Yes, I would like to ask the reporter in your simulation, what was the correlation length? Uh, in my simulation, which I did in the last one, I, I was I was not concerned with the correlation length. That's one of the key reasons why I decided to do this this, this difference. In, here, what I say is instead of talking about the effective potential and the refractive index, and instead of talking about the mean and the correlation length, I just talk about its spatial distribution. You're correct that yes. I could try to predict the correlation length, but I don't think it, it would be too useful in the ray optics description. You, could you clarify? You do not think that the spatial correlation is important in the ray optics? No, it is important, but it, 
it is not useful to measure directly. I mean, obviously, the correlation length is a consequence of the particular spatial distribution which I choose. So yes, and I'm asking you, what is the correlation length of your simulation? I don't have the number about. Uh, I don't. I didn't quantify in my simulation, but that's precisely. Okay, but order of magnitude is, it, is it one pixel, ten pixels, one hundred pixels? Probably around five pixels. Okay, thanks for answering my question. Thank you. The next question can go from Federico. Uh, okay, so I have a Hello. question for the reporter. Uh, first, if you go to slide 21, uh, you showed there some photos. Uh, I want to know if those are um, stationary photos, meaning that uh, this pattern uh, stays the same in a period of time, or this is a photo of an, of an instant of the branch. It stays that if I can, if the laser is held fixed, it stays the same in the case of the hand sanitizer. Okay. And if you go to the slide 22, the next one, I want to ask this uh, briefly. Um, do you think there is a scale independence comparing those, the, those two stuff? Because in the second, you have macro uh, drops, and in the, in the upper one, you don't have uh, micro drops, but you have the same shape. Do you think there is a scale independence in this phenomenon? No, it's it's absolutely the same the same scale. You can you can judge it by the for instance the width of the beam is the same in the two pictures, and I took the pictures from the same distance, right? So uh, I, I, maybe I got your question wrong, but I think that's it. Yeah, no, I I, I think um, okay, you answered the question. It's not a scaling issue. It's the it's the same scale. <laughs> okay, and a question for the uh, opposition. Mm -hmm. I see that uh, you talk about interference uh, a couple of times during the, the discussion. Uh, I did not understand uh, where do you found interference in the phenomenon or why do you uh, bring this, this phenomenon into the discussion? Uh, we mean uh, that uh, in this problem, the interference isn't uh, such an important effect. Like mainly the geometric optics may describe this this phenomenon. Uh, however, uh, some some kind of uh, wave optics effect that the reporter investigated indeed may be observed in this effect. Okay, so these are all my questions. Thank you. Excellent. The next member who can ask a question now is Amori. Please fire away. All right, so a question for the reporter, but then mm -hmm. next the opponent can wait in. Can you go back to the simulation slide, please? All right, so, uh, all right. so to, to be very blunt, the image on the right looks nothing like all of the experimental images we've seen so far. All, there's also, that's only branching once. Uh, there's no branching along the diagonals. It's all concentrated at the beginning and so on and so on. So what's the deal here? Uh, you're correct. The, it could be solved by including total internal reflection and the Fresnel coefficients. This has been done in the literature. This is the, what I cite here. We try to reproduce the main features just to show that with a very simple simulation, we could we could predict the occurrence of branching. Right. But you're so correct in saying that it differs in the sense that there are some physical principles which we deliberately omitted. All right. So for the opponent, do you think that adding those two parameters would be enough to reproduce a correct simulation? Um, we are not sure. Uh, like actually, yes, indeed, the uh, incongeniality in the refractive index uh, may in some way change the, the whole simulation. But in our opinion, this uh, the, the distribution of sizes also may lead to the, to the same effect. And indeed, uh, yes, uh, like the, the sizes and the shapes of the, of the incongeniities may lead to, to, more, uh, to more experimental view of the, of the simulation. Yeah, all right, thank you. Thank you. And Sebastian, you can ask now your questions. Yeah, I have now uh, more of an, an engineering question for the reporter. So imagine that you want to, to use your knowledge that you acquired of this phenomena to create, I don't know, you have your, your slab of, of material, you want to write uh, the name of your team, like Team Brazil, uh, with a branch of light. You have a laser beam and you want to branch it, start to write. So of course, this is very hard exp like, to do experimentally. But how would you do this? In a soap film or in the setup with the hand sanitizer? No, no, no in, the, in the second one is fine. Yeah. In any setup, like how would you? 
in both cases, you can do reverse engineering, right? If you can, if you can just, uh, you can just choose the positions of the drop of the droplets so as to, to so that they act as a series of ref re refractions and reflections also acting to produce the specific pattern. This is much more complicated in something like the soap film, in which you you would have to generate potentials, for instance, until you find the one which correctly predicts the, the, the branching pattern, in this case, writing down Brazil. But yes, the reverse engineering is perfectly possible here. Yeah, yeah, but just uh, by just I, positions and I was, I was meaning more like in a, in a dynamic case. Imagine you have a screen that you want to write, you want to change the potential um, according to what you want to write. How would you control the the inhomogeneities in your your in your oh, system? In order to, yeah. So in one case, it's just position and the sizes of the of the of the bubbles of of in the case hand sanitizer. In the case of the soap film, it will be much harder to control the thickness without uh, bursting the film. But uh, so I can I think I can only answer that for the first case. Okay. Uh, as the opponent, any idea, any clever idea how to do this? Um, I think uh, it, uh, in reality, it is uh, in some way hard to, to, to control them uh, because of it is uh, mainly defined by the formation of the of the of the film itself, uh, and uh, it is indeed hard to do uh, such a case. However, uh, uh, in some extent, we can uh, we can do this in some kind of simulated systems, uh, as the reporter represented, in which we can control the uh, the size and the Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. So now, jurors, you can decide for your grades. So we have the executive member in this call uh, named called uh, Nikolai. I don't see him, but definitely he's Yes, place. I'm here. I'm Excellent. here. Excellent. So please send your grades uh, for three sides uh, for uh, all the reporter team, opponent team, and reviewer team to the direct messages to him. I don't want to know your grades. Only him will know and will populate them with the IPT Connect. And After also, we finish with... Yeah. yeah, and also I would like to ask um, uh, reporting team, uh, opponent team and uh, reviewer team to write uh, in the chat, maybe for all, it doesn't matter, uh, the names of uh, your uh, presenters. Yeah, very valid point. Thank you. We need also to record who've been speaking for this round and for the following rounds as well. After we finish the grading, we're gonna to listen to jurors' comments and then we're gonna proceed for three minute break while still running our streaming to YouTube. I, I do believe it's very much engagement in it. In particular, I can see what the engagement they have in Instagram and it's adorable, like people is enjoying the event we're running now. And I put, uh, to our IPT Twitter, uh, the post where you can uh, support your team. And after that, we're going to see who has the most followers and supporters on Twitter. You can try to win this competition as well. I think, like, really, teams working so hard and they need to see your support in full. So we are missing only one team member, uh, sure. jury from Sonia, mm -hmm. Natalie. Sonia, please send 
Nikolai. Yes, yeah, sorry, I sent to you. Ah, I sent to, to Nikolai. Sorry, yes, okay. <laughs> I don't see it here, but maybe I should see it here. You can just copy paste to my messages and that's just doing that's all. That's no, I have to select you. I have to find you inside the, the chat. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I see I see your grades. It's excellent. Yeah. Uh, super. So we can now proceed to the to the jurors comments. And uh, again. As we did for the jurors' questions, please put plus to the chat and I will give your uh, right to speak Wait, one by first, one. First, you announce the grades, right? No, we don't announce the grade, Dima. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, please fire away. Uh, yes, so. Um... I, um, my opinion of the report is that it was uh, uh, fairly strong, but its weakest point was the uh, simulation. Uh, I, I think there were some uh, artifacts of the uh, smallest cell that caused uh, rays to only go either straight to the sideways or in a 45 degree incline, and this is not what we saw in reality. Um, but otherwise the report was uh, quite strong. Excellent, and you okay, then Federico, please your comment. Uh, yes, well, I want to congratulate uh, both the reporter on the position and also the reviewer. As for the reporter, um, it was a very strong uh, solution. Uh, they answered also a lot of the questions that the opposition uh, brought up. Uh, but about the third question of the problem, which records the phenomenon in other medium, for example, water and sound, I believe that uh, all three teams forgot about that discussion and it was not a straightforward uh, solution. It's not like it if, it, if it happens with light, it will happen the same in other medium. This is not true because you know that mechanical waves behave uh, rather different than light. Uh, but since all three teams uh, forgot about this, I did not penalize that on my, on my grades. And that's like my comment. Congratulations to all three teams. Thank you. It was very kind of you. Uh, now we can proceed to Omori. You can give your comments. No, sorry. Um, so I think we've talked about the reporter quite a bit. Uh, I'd like to stress that I really like the uh, reviewer part of this uh, process because it's not an easy task. And I thought it was really articulate that the questions were, very, were really relevant. I'm just a bit disappointed that most of the basic questions asked by the, by the reviewer never really got an answer. So uh, yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. And after that, I don't remember who was, but Sonia raised your hand. Yes. Sonia, far away. Yes, OK. Um, so uh, I like the fight, first of all. I would say, OK, congratulations from the three teams. And then, OK, I have to say that uh, considering uh, uh, the reporter presentation, uh, which was based on the refraction index, uh, basically, uh, I would have liked to uh, uh, to discuss much more the dependence on temperature. And uh, I, I think that the opponent, uh, uh, considering negligible this fact, didn't push too much the discussion on this. Uh, however, it was a nice uh, discussion. And uh, I appreciate also the reviewer, uh, let's say, role they try to to engage the two teams uh, to discuss uh, even more. This is my comment. Thank you, excellent. And Sebastian, you also had something to say? Yeah, I've been mostly covered. I will just add that I, I liked how the, so I, I agree when the opponent uh, mentioned that he would have liked to see more uh, discussion about some, in, especially in the experimental part about different parameters. Especially when you have a theory, it's nice to to you know to to vary, to vary the parameters, and then to, you, you can you can do this easily by changing by you know telescoping your beam and changing the size or varying the intensity with some ND filters, and it's nice to see some comparisons between. So even with some simple experiments, you can see some um, 
nice comparison between your theory and the uh, and experiment. So this is a point which I like from the opponent. There is, and uh, yeah, that and for the reviewer, I would have maybe liked a little bit more of strong, uh, um, like to, to strongly guide the discussion, like to take the opponent, make clear questions, and to and to the to the the, the same for the reporter. But still, I I still enjoyed it. Thank you, Sebastian. So now we go on for three minute break. So for my time is. 4.23, it's 3.23 UTC. I, think, uh, is there any way I, I could comment. I am putting ah, class on the Sorry, table. sorry, Dima, sorry. Getting a word. Uh, I, I, would, I would like to comment on everybody's, uh, on the presentation, on sure. the opponent, on the reviewer. Uh, first of all, the presenter clearly identified what the phenomenon is. It's not wave optics, it's refractions. Great. I agree with that. Uh, and I think opponent and reviewer in the end agreed with that as well. Although opponent was speaking something about wave optics and self-focusing, no, no self-focusing there. It's, it's probably indeed just refraction and acoustics. Okay, fine. But then now after you identified the phenomenon, uh, presenter, you had, you had a simulation. It's not very hard to simulate refractions. So you could, could actually control your droplets in the simulation uh, and change the correlation length and try to, to actually solve the reverse problem from, from the, uh, you want some concrete picture, as Jury said, you want some concrete, concrete picture, you can alter your droplet distribution. And you have the simulation, in principle, you could do that rather easily. Then the, the opponent somehow went, went into the wave optics, instead of discussing the, the physics of correlation length. What's the physics in the saw film there? Why is it even forming that correlation length? Why is it flowing? What's happening in the saw, saw film? This is the part I don't understand at all. And the reviewer started to speak about it. It was a very good point, but there was already no time for it and it was not really discussed. I think this is the most important and most interesting physics of the problem. What's really happening in that saw film? Why you get those correlations? Excellent. I don't see that anyone else wants to add anything. So we anyway proceed to a three minute break. So now it's going to end at 15.25 PTC. Thank you. Thank you. Please uh, enjoy your All time, stretch right. your legs. <laughs> yeah, fire away, what else? Uh, we see lots of interesting comments here on on the YouTube channel. Uh, and I'd like to ask also to the people who are participating with us if they agree with the comments of the jury, just like we asked here on the chat. Uh, but we see many comments from, I think mostly Russia and Brazil here. Uh, well, well, but it's interesting that uh, in this tournament, the, the branching light problem has been presented only two times before this, before being presented at the final. It was presented also by the UK team uh, and the Colombian team. And it was opposed by Germany and the Ukraine who also did the opposition now in the final. Uh, maybe this is why they, they also chose to, to no, they, they actually they didn't choose, right? Yeah, they, but you know, they ended up doing this uh, opposition again. So, well, let's see, let's see what happens. Let's see which team uh, got, this first physics fight, the, the first round of this physics fight. Uh, well, let's see if we have any, any interesting comments here. Any more comments? Uh, maybe I should stand a little bit farther from, from my computer screen. I just saw it on the, on the here on the web. Well, I think everybody Hello. likes you can, you, you can read some you can read some words uh, of support from uh, okay. the comments to, to, to our uh, team members. Okay, okay. Uh, well, I mean, there's lots of Brazil, Brazil, Brazil comments. You know, go team Brazil. Lots of excited people. Let's see if. Most of the comments were praising uh, the presenter Felipe Mazzi for uh, for his presentation. Apparently, he has lots of fans online, right, Felipe? So, 
way to go, man. Uh, uh, well, it's okay. Well, someone, someone from Russia, I think, doesn't like Twitter. The world will be a better place if there was no Twitter. That's a strong opinion. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else we have. There's lots okay, of people. Okay, we want to invite them, them to our Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, so yeah, you're not invited to follow us on Twitter if you don't like it. Uh, okay, well, some people are saying that Felipe deserves not only the gold medal, but a crown too, ladies and gentlemen. Well, maybe King Felipe now. Uh, well, let's see what the, I mean, most of the comments are the Brazil, are from Team Brazil. I know that they're that you know in general we are pretty much enthusiastic of, of everything that happens. Uh, you know, whenever we do good at something. So I'm glad to see that the Brazilian team reached the final because this has been a really tough year for Brazil. Uh, I would say like even tough years for Brazil, actually, these last years. Uh, so it's nice to see them reaching the final. So it might give us some hope there for the country. And hopefully, you know, we can also spread the competition more. And next year, we're going to have, who knows, a competition with even more teams from more universities participating. Uh, okay, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, problem. And that's it. Let's see if there's any new comments. Oh, lots of political uh, comments there uh, on, on the chat. Hello. Not lots of Fata Bolsonaro's, you know. Uh, interesting. I'm with you guys too. Uh, <laughs> might do that. Might need to say that. Uh, okay. Well, let's see. I think, yeah, there's, yeah, a lot of people got happy. Go Russia. Oh, there's, we have also the Russian support here. Uh, yeah. Comments about the Okay, report. so it's yeah. excellent. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, are we done with the with the time already? Yeah, we can already proceed to the next round. Okay. Cool. Uh, the next round will be. Yeah. Will be presenting. The next round will be. The next round will be Ukraine is a reporting team, Russia is opposing team, and Brazil are doing review in this round. So just. Whatever we need to do now is to let Ukraine to start sharing screen, checking checking everything, and we can move to the next round. Uh, okay, we have a question. Uh, do we have ten minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now you have three minutes and then twelve minutes for the report. Does it help? I'm sorry. Uh, do we have ten minutes for report or twelve one? Twelve. Okay, thank you. Welcome. We start seeing your screen and your presentation. Uh, I can start my presentation. Absolutely. Whenever you're ready, I can launch it. Fire away. Uh, okay, good, uh, good afternoon. My name is Grigori. I'm from Team Ukraine, and today I'm going to report a solution to problem number 12, metallic forest. According to the statement of the problem, we have to investigate the shape of the digit structure forming on the, on the surface of the electrode and investigate the fractal dimension and how does they are affected by the parameters of the setup which we used. Uh, in my report, first of all, I will give qualitative explanation of the phenomenon of the formation of the dendrite structure. Then we will discuss the properties of the dendrite depending on different parameters and investigate them uh, experimentally and theoretically. Uh, 
Uh, first of all, let's qualitatively investigate this phenomenon. Uh, it is obvious that as we have a uh, steady current, uh, then, the, then the ions move to an ordinary cathode and thus forming the, a uniform covering of the, of the cathode. Uh, however, we have in our problem investigate the dendrite structure. Uh, so we have uh, so to investigate why uh, why does it happen? We use such an experimental setup in which we uh, change the current and the voltage by potential step and use different types of uh, solutions. And we observe that there is a strong correlation between the uh, between the current voltage characteristics. Uh, as you can see, for small voltages, uh, we observe uh, the linear dependence of current, uh, which shows the uniform current and thus uniform covering of the electron. Uh, however, for higher voltages, the current is nearly the same. We observe a plateau, uh, which is caused by the effect that the uh, density of the charges increases. Uh, and thus, the mainly, uh, this current is defined by the diffusion processes uh, leading to the formation of the dendrite. Uh, however, as we try to increase the voltage further, we observe the location of the gas, which leads to uh, not covering of the, uh, of the surface of the uh, cell. Uh, in, uh, now let's investigate why do we observe the, uh, the fractal structure in this problem. Uh, and this is caused by the effect that uh, if, uh, if the ions move uh, to the surface of the uh, to the surface of the node, there are some kind of uh, locations which leads to the appearance of uh, to the increase of the current in these uh, regions. Uh, and this, uh, as atoms are uh, attached, uh, the new ions moves here, and this leads to the uh, to the process of the self uh, similar uh, structure, which is uh, fractal by its nature. Now let's investigate different parameters of the dendrite and how are they defined in uh, in this in this problem. Uh, the properties which we will investigate it is the shape of the whole dendrite uh, structure, as the fractal dimension of the uh, of it, and shape of elementary structures from which uh, it consists. Uh, first of all, let's start from the shape of the holding sheet, which is mainly defined by the distribution of currents around the cathode, uh, which leads to the formation of uh, such a structure, as you can see at our photo, uh, at the borders and the corners of the, uh, of the cathode, we observe the uh, concentration of this, uh, of the dendrite. Uh, now let's discuss how does, uh, how we can extract the fractal dimension from, uh, from this, uh, uh, from this uh, setup. Uh, and first of all, we remind you the uh, usual definition of the fractal dimension, which is uh, may be found by the covering of the surface of, uh, of the object which we investigate by uh, some kind of uh, squares of this size epsilon and the logarithm of the numbers of such, uh, uh, of such coverings to the logarithm of the size of the, uh, of the squares uh, defines the fractal dimension, uh, defines the fractal dimension. Uh, however, in our problem by nature, uh, there is a, uh, the fractal dimension or is defined by the current uh, uh, by the current stabilization process, uh, which may be explained in such a way. Uh, as we have an increase of the size of the fractal, uh, the area increases uh, defined by the uh, by the fractal dimension, which leads to the scaling of the current. And from the diffusion equation, we can find the current dependence on time which is defined by the fractal dimension, as I mentioned before. Uh, and now let's uh, investigate the different uh, shapes of the elementary structures and how uh, they may be defined. Uh, to do this, we first of all, uh, will investigate the theory of the nucleation process uh, on a, in a case of uh, hemispherical structures. Uh, to do this, we write the diffusion equation, uh, this solution which gives the distribution of, for current for a single uh, for a single elementary structure, and the uh, summing over the whole structures gives the final expression for a current. And here in the animation, you can see as a, an example of a growth of a fractal from a diffusion controlled process. Uh, in a case when the current, uh, which is caused by the redistribution of uh, uh, of flows, uh, leads to the uh, influences the whole process, the current uh, may be uh, obtained in such a way. Uh, and all this pro and uh, the, you know, the concurrence of these processes, uh, the instantaneous nucleation and progressive nucleation uh, are uh, leading to the uh, to the whole time dependence of the current. And uh, dividing this dependence on a different stages, we can investigate each stage and from it extract the, di uh, the different fractal uh, properties of the uh, of the dendrite which we obtain in this experiment. Uh, and uh, 
to investigate different shapes. Uh, it is well known in literature that the different shapes have different uh, time dependence of the current, uh, which lead to different, uh, different nucleation processes and analyzing current dependence with time, we can obtain such uh, information about the shape of the, uh, of the elementary structures. Uh, now let's move on to our experimental investigation uh, in which we, uh, first of all, remind you our uh, experimental uh, result for current density, depending on the voltage, uh, and in which we, saw, we uh, said that uh, the main region, uh, it, is a region it, it is a region with a plateau, uh, and uh, the first idea is to investigate the different voltages and how does they influence uh, the formation of the dendrite. Uh, to do this, we investigated the current uh, density depending on time uh, for different voltages. And here you can see the photos of different uh, dendritic structure obtained from the photo uh, for uh, these experiments. Uh, and uh, uh, plotting them in double logarithmic scale, uh, we obtained the, uh, the slope of the uh, linear curves uh, approximating this dependence uh, at, the, at, the, at the first region, uh, from which we can, by formula represented before, uh, define the fractal dimension. Uh, and on the video, you can see the example of a growth of uh, dendrite structure. As you can see, the, uh, it, initially, the, uh, the dendrite structure grew very fastly. However, after some time, the, uh, the process became uh, more steady. Uh, conducting this experiment for different currents, uh, for different potential, uh, we obtained the dependence of a fractal dimension depending on the potential. And as you can see, uh, we observe the increase of the potential with uh, increase of the fractal dimension with increase of potential, and it has an optimal value, uh, which is caused by the fact that as we uh, go further than uh, 0.8 uh, volts, uh, we uh, uh, the, uh, on the surface of the uh, electrode, uh, there appears uh, an uh, there appears a gas allocation, which leads to the uh, worse uh, nucleation process. Uh, and we decided, uh, as mentioned before, to investigate nearly the same effect uh, uh, according, to the, um, according to the definition of the uh, fractal dimension. We decided to investigate it by photo. Uh, and to, to do this, we, uh, we converted our photo to a grayscale from which we uh, obtained the coastline. And using this uh, coastline, uh, we obtained such results for uh, analysis by photo. And as you can see, uh, our uh, analysis by photo gives uh, different uh, values. Uh, and this is mainly related to the fact that by photo, we cannot ex investigate the whole, uh, uh, the whole surface of the electrode. We, uh, we investigate only the edge, however, at the uh, at, the, at the main surface of the electrode, we do not uh, may take a, take a photo and thus conduct a uh, very good analysis. Uh, however, uh, the overall dependence of the particle dimension, depending on the potential, is nearly the, uh, is, uh, nearly the same uh, with the maximal value. Uh, the, next, uh, the next thing that we had to investigate is uh, uh, different, uh, different type of solutions. Uh, to do this, we investigated sulfate, chlorate, uh, alkane solution, complex pyrophosphate, complex ammonia, and complex citrate uh, solutions. Uh, and here you can see the uh, current transients. Uh, it is a current dependence on time uh, for uh, uh, complex uh, ammonia uh, solution uh, at, at four different potentials. And here you can see the photos of the obtained G. From photos, we can see that for a value of voltage of 1.2 volts, uh, the dendrite structure is more pronounced. Uh, and our uh, investigation of this uh, uh, of the transients in the double logarithmic scale gives the same uh, result. We uh, see that the fractal dimension is higher for as voltage 1.2. Uh, also, we investigated uh, sorry. Uh, we investigated this for uh, different. We investigated this uh, fractal dimension for different potentials, and as you can see, uh, indeed, the potentials at which we can observe such an uh, effect uh, is. Uh, uh, higher for uh, cuprum ammonia. However, the fractal dimension itself is lower. And we, uh, as I mentioned, we investigated different types of solution. And for each solution, the cuprum, uh, the clear cuprum, uh, uh, cuprum sulfate uh, were, uh, uh, had the maximal fractal dimension. The next thing that we investigated is a different uh, shape of the electrode. 
We investigated hemispherical electrode, a cylindrical electrode, and a flat electrode. And as you can see, that for cylindrical electrode, we have a maximal uh, fractal dimension, which is caused by the effect that uh, for cylindrical electrode, there is a higher current uh, leading to the formation of uh, uh, formation of dendrite structure. Uh, the next thing that we investigated was the concentration of, uh, um, uh, of solution. And as you can see, as we increase the concentration, the width of the fractal growth zone becomes uh, lower. However, the currents are bigger, right? so the growing time is lower. And we investigated uh, the fractal dimension for concentration, and we didn't observe a uh, strong uh, dependence uh, on it. Uh, however, the maximal uh, value may be uh, observed from, uh, from this dependence. Uh, also, we investigated uh, surface active substance, which we added to our solution. And as you can see, the width of the fractal growth zone becomes lower, uh, which is indeed observed in the current time dependence uh, and for a uh, fractal dimension, which becomes lower. And thus, we, has to we have to use very clear uh, solution to have a uh, higher uh, fractal dimension. Uh, also, we investigated the, uh, the, the cycling. Um, okay. uh, mainly, I have to talk about the different shapes which we investigated. We investigated uh, the spherical shapes and conical, and I have to claim that uh, the different type of alloys which were investigated in uh, literature uh, have different shapes uh, leading to uh, different uh, fractal formation. And the biggest, uh, biggest dendrite which we investigated were, uh, were nick uh, nickel dendrite, uh, which we grow for 45 days uh, with a density of current of 20 milliamperes per centimeter squared. Thank you for your time. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, now we can move to the clarifying question from Team Russia. Yeah. So there, uh, what I have a, I have a question about you. Thought firstly about uh, frame number 28. Uh, where you say that you take uh, fractal dimension by photo. So my question is, uh, how exactly did you do it? Because I say from I say from video, your dendrites they uh, uh, they are uh, three dimensionals. So how do you take this photo? Can you please clarify? 20, yes. 28, 28, 28. Uh, yes, uh, the uh, the way which we do is this uh, was the defi defining the coastline line and to uh, obtain the. Uh, to obtain the fractal dimension for a three-dimensional object, we had to, to know uh, which type of solution we used. Uh, we considered this to be the spherical structures for making a just, a, just from assumption, so. Uh, There's assumption, yeah? Uh, is that they are, that they are spherical? Yes, was it just assumption? Uh, Can... Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Uh, now frame 26. Uh, I have a question. Uh, so you don't have any theoretical line on this uh, plot. So uh, does it mean that your theory cannot predict the fractal dimension of the dendrite? Is it is it correct? Uh, in some way, like uh, there is a, a high amount of uh, different effects leading to the uh, dependence uh, of- Yes, no question, please. Yes, no, uh, please. no, no. Okay, thank you, I got in, it. Uh, I now question about frame number seven. Uh, so on qualitative explanation, you say that uh, diffusion plays uh, on diffusion plays important role in uh, uh, forming of our dendrite. So are you sure that, for example, uh, electric field uh, uh, doesn't help our dendrite to, f to form? Are you sure um, that it's only diffusion? Uh, okay, uh, electric field leads to uh, leads to uniform uh, covering of the electrode, and indeed, in, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, as the processes of the current redistribution in such a diffusion controlled, uh, like the mainly as a formation is diff diffusion controlled. However, the current redistribution indeed helps. It was taken into account in the theory in the in theoretical investigation of this. Okay, uh, thank you. So I think my time is over. And I will prepare. Okay, thank you. Yes, your time is over. You can have now. Your three minutes for preparation.
you run out of your time for preparation, I suggest yeah. to the reporters that you st should stop sharing your slides in Ukraine. So maybe opponents have their excellent. We see your screen. Yeah. So, uh, dear colleagues, my name is Ayan Polonik, and I'm happy to be a point of the problem number 12, uh, Metallic Forest. So, uh, let's uh, finally uh, say, uh, see what the, problem, the problem is. Uh, so, we said that uh, we should uh, be able to control fractal dimensions and other shape parameters of the dendrit. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, that wasn't uh, done exactly from the reporter because, uh, I mean, he's, he has some theoretical model, but unfortunately, his theoretical model was uh, unable to predict uh, even fractal dimension of the dendrit, but he had really good experimental work. So uh, if you talk more about main results, which was uh, done by reporter, so which, uh, can, what, what can we say about it? Uh, firstly, that uh, we got some uh, qualitative explanation of the phenomenon, that it's uh, based on, on the diffusion mainly, uh, but uh, I strongly disagree with it that uh, on the diffusion plays an important role because as we know, uh, for electric fields, uh, I mean, uh, while solving the Laplace equation, uh, we clearly see that fields near some uh, sharp areas, uh, this fields there are very strong. And uh, as I think it's clear that a strong field will uh, attach uh, some electrons or uh, not electrons, but ions, uh, which are in our liquid uh, uh, to the sharp and uh, it will grow uh, not only because of diffusion, but also because of uh, electric field. And uh, I think maybe it's uh, the reason why uh, uh, reporter theory uh, couldn't predict uh, uh, such thing, because I think maybe it's because of electric field, but we'll know during discussion. Um, so next we'll say that uh, uh, he gave us uh, the definition of fractal dimension, so it's okay, but uh, uh, he didn't say what is uh, exactly the shape of the dendrite because uh, Shape of the dendrite, it isn't only the fractal dimension. For example, uh, uh, it depends how this, uh, as you see, uh, while uh, growing dendrite, it uh, can uh, divide and branch as a, pre as, a pre as a previous problem. So what's this, for example, angle between branches or time or time uh, needed for dendrite to grow between three divides. So it's also important parameters of the shape, but unfortunately it wasn't investigated even experimentally. Uh, so next we've shown uh, lots of uh, clinical work about time dependencies, for example, how uh, current of electric field depend, uh, dep depend on uh, time for different concentrations, for different uh, uh, solutions uh, that you to use. So it's really good experimental work, but uh, not all these plots, unfortunately, were uh, explained qualitatively enough. For example, I mean, uh, the plot where the plot changed the solution of uh, his liquid. Uh, we could see that there are two curves with uh, different uh, Solutions uh, in uh, in our liquid, but uh, unfortunately, it wasn't given qualitatively. Why is it uh, such a why is this plot so different even qualitative level? Uh, so next, we we'll say that uh, what I got, uh, I mean, not exactly accurate uh, measurement of uh, fractal dimension. I mean that uh, uh, in his uh, experimental stop, uh, dendrit uh, is three dimensional uh, thing. It moves in 3D, but uh, while, while measuring the effect dimension by photo, he took uh, a picture from two-dimensional and uh, assumed that uh, our dendrite is to be spherical, but uh, where is proof that it's spherical? I mean, uh, this assumption can lead us to very big errors and uh, that's not really good. Uh, so making some conclusion of the report, we may say that uh, most positive aspects of those uh, effect dimension uh, introducing. Uh, so diffusion equation, uh, which was uh, written in to try to solve uh, in spherical diffusion for spherical case. So it was really good, but unfortunately it didn't give, give us a good agreement between seven experiment, I think because of missing the electric field and uh, current of time dependencies, lots of them, it's very really good, uh, but mostly in the pathway. Uh, so next we'll say that uh, there are lots of an, uh, areas from initial voltage and not, not all of them then just can be formed. Uh, but of course there are uh, some things to improve in the report. I mean, uh, there are even there are lots of equations. Uh, reporter theory couldn't predict uh, with the uh, our dendrit dynamics, so maybe in this case, uh, they're extra in this report uh, and better maybe to focus on more experimental setup. And of course, not all parameters of the shape were investigated. So, what I mean is that, uh, as, as, as you see on the original photo of the uh, problem statement, for example, we clearly see that there is such a parameter as angle between um, our dendrites, as you can see there. Um, distance between uh, new branches, it also went to this parameter, but unfortunately it wasn't investigated. 
And so uh, making it all, all, all may see that most of the problem was solved only partially, but it, so it was uh, solved well on experimental level, but the theoretical part was uh, not good enough uh, because uh, the reporter couldn't control the shape of the dendrite and uh, fractal dimension, and that's what exactly our problem is. So as I see, my time is over, and now we're going to the discussion. So I'll stop sharing my screen. And yes, thank you. His one, his own one. One. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so while you open your presentation, uh, I think let's uh, start from the uh, basic physics of the phenomenon. I mean exactly uh, how uh, our dendrite grows. Uh, it, it's, it's more about uh, if only diffusion is important in this case. Uh, not only diffusion, I would say. Uh, like the diff uh, in the case when we have a steady current, uh, then we have a, a smooth covering of the electrode. However, the, uh, if we have a diffusion control, we obtain such a structures. However, the uh, the effect of the current uh, uh, the current influence of the, on the formation of the dendrite uh, also takes a place. I mean, mean that. Yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, so okay. Uh, if you say that it's uh, it's uh, more it's again about it's the same topic. So if you say that uh, diffusion plays a really important role, uh, so what will happen if I will uh, put this electrode? Uh, and uh, these liquids, but uh, I won't uh, apply any voltage. So I still will have diffusion, but no elect electricity will I have in this case dendrites. Uh, not of course, because of the, there is no uh, excitation of the, of the surface of the, of the electrode, like uh, the... Um, so do you agree that it's, it's, do you agree that this proves that uh, electric field is uh, more important than diffusion in this case for qualitative explanation? Mm -hmm. I mean that uh, it is caused by the diffusion process of the ions. In the case where there is no voltage, we do not have uh, the, uh, the, okay. the high and amount of the ions. Okay. And so, yeah, so I, I got your position. Uh, and did you try maybe such experiment when you uh, turn off, turn on your unorthodox cathode, so you get some ions in your liquid, and after it turn on, the, turn off the voltage. Uh, yes, like uh, we uh, made such an experiment uh, when we tried to grow this uh, this dendrite, uh, we so, so showed in the slide. Uh, indeed, uh, like uh, the growing stopped mainly. We didn't observe uh, the strong amount of uh, of volume uh, which may be uh, obtained from the from the, for, for, uh, after the turning off the the voltage. However, indeed, this, this process may uh, happen because of not uh, all uh, not all uh, not all ions will uh, associate, thus uh, creating the lower uh, the lower number of the ions uh, available for diffusion. Okay, so I agree with it. Uh, now, can you please open your frame with your simulation uh, where you made some script that I got? Uh, so, uh, what is the size of uh, cells in your simulation? I mean. Uh, uh, yeah, this one. So as I got, what is the size of, uh, so, it, so do you simulate motion of atoms or some clusters of ions? What uh, is the size of ions in your simulation? Uh, the main point here is that the simulation doesn't uh, strongly represent the, the, the real fractal going. Uh, like it is just, uh, uh, just qualitatively shows uh, the growing process and what kind of uh, fractals we can, we can obtain in, the, in our experiment. I got it. So my, my, uh, I'll maybe explain my question a little bit better. Uh, it's about uh, if, uh, if if we have what what do we have in our liquids? We have uh, only some uh, ions or classes of ions in real life. Uh, my so opinion, uh, it's important to observe such an effect in the in, in the clusters of ions and uh, for for individual ions because of uh, the growing process isn't uh, like strongly defined by the uh, by the sizes of the uh, of the particles which attach. Like, however, if we have some kind of uh, really big clusters, yes, indeed, it will uh, affect. However, the uh, diffusion processes are, uh, like, uh, the main effect which may be observed in this case is just a diffusion, uh, diffusion constant may change because of the size of the particles. Yeah, so uh, I agree with it. Uh, and now I think let's uh, try to talk about the shape. Uh, so uh, what are the other properties of the shape, uh, not uh, talking about uh, fractal dimensions? What other can be? Yes, I'm sorry, I didn't have enough time to explain this uh, during yeah. the. Uh, so you made a report. 
uh, here it is. Uh, it is investigation of different shapes depending on the material. Uh, the, uh, the main uh, reason of uh, formation of the different shapes of the elementary structures, uh, it is uh, uh, metal which we use. Uh, mainly the, uh, the structure of this metal itself. Uh, the, the internal crystal st structure. Uh, and because of this, we can obtain for, uh, for cuprum, for example, the spherical ones uh, and some kind of conical ones for, uh, uh, for gold. Uh, and different types of alloy uh, lead to uh, different types of the shapes. However, this problem is, uh, is hard to predict because of the, because of the uh, very complex uh, uh, problem of the, uh, of the crystallization of the, um, of the metals. And because of this, we uh, in our investigation only investigated different shapes like conical shapes or spherical ones and used. used okay, uh, thank you. Uh, again, I have to interrupt the discussion of the question of shapes. We will have opportunity to discuss it after the uh, review. So reviewer, please move on to your clarifying questions. Uh, to ask you. We hardly hear you. Can you speak up? Sorry. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? If you can speak up even more, it would be nice. Okay, I, I'm, I'm talking louder. I can speak to you now. I, I, I want to ask you, um, what are um, the parameters of your presentation? Uh. And, uh, can you hear me? Did you manage to did you manage to hear the question? Can you hear me now? We do not hear anything. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's just, I think it's it better to stop much. the clock and uh uh uh, just stop the clock and maybe try to fix this problem first. Okay, uh, I think I managed to, to fix the problem oh. here. Oh, yes, okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, 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 I want to ask you, the, 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 the reporter, uh, what are the main, the, main, um, the main parameters that you, you think it's important to this, to this problem here? Mm, the main parameter, uh, in my opinion, it's a fractal dimension uh, and the shape of the elementary structures. Uh, they define the further uh, growth of the, uh, of the dendrite structure, yes. Okay, um, and just to clarify, uh, how, how did you control the, the parameters while uh, varying one of them? Uh, how have you controlled uh, another parameters? Yeah, like when you're you're varying current, did you maintain the temperature constant and the other param parameters constant? How did you manage to, to control them, the other parameters? Yes, of course, we control the temperature and the pressure. Uh, in a case, uh, uh, as I understand, you're talking about the change of the temperature due to the uh, flowing of the current. Uh, in this case, when we observed the strong uh, change of the temperature, uh, we didn't conduct an experiment further. Uh, and uh, mainly in uh, in the case of the dendrite growth, we didn't observe such an effect. Okay. Um, well, it, uh, you you said in the final remarks that the the the, the growth um, that you measure eight hours per day growth, right? So you you uh, measure and stop the the, the growth uh, happens and stops a lot of times. And how does it? Uh, how how could you control? the interference of this period um, of uh, break between the measurements? Uh, this, uh, uh, we use such a methodics to grow the biggest, uh, the biggest fractal, uh, mm -hmm. just because of uh, it was a limitation of the day. It was the different days in, at which we uh, invested, at which we uh, uh, started the formation of the, of the dendrite. Uh, and uh, as you can see, uh, this leads to the increase of the fractal dimension uh, because of the uh, because of the uh, change of the covering of the of the yes. Uh, I'm sorry, just to clarify my question: is, is how did did you Thanks. measure the interference? But okay, thank you for your time. Thank you. You can now move to your preparation. Okay.
Uh, we'd like to request a timeout, please. Okay, taken. Okay, you're now out of your time. If you have any slides, I suggest you go or stop. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. Can you hear me well right now? Yes, perfect. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. Okay, so... Um, uh -huh, we see it. Okay, okay. just present two. Um, so uh -huh. I'm going to um, perform the problem 12, review them. So here is a statement of the problem, and we would like to, oh, sorry, here I think I showed you the wrong screen. I'm going to stop sharing, right? Okay, sorry. try to resharing, I'll pause your time. Okay, share, um, presenting to you. That's it. So, uh, okay, yeah, so this something. is problem. This is from uh, 12, and I'm, I'm, uh, here's the problem statement again. Okay, so I well, want to point the this, uh, strong points of the, the report team. They had several variations of the parameters that were good. Uh, they did a nice analysis of the data, uh, and they, they uh, raised good, point of, good points of view, good angles of, of, uh, of solving the problem and, and analyzing the problem. That was very nice. Uh, about the theoretical uh, part, they, they introduced the main equations of the problem, and uh, I, I would like to um, stress this. This was very good. Uh, about uh, the, the weak points of the presentation, I think uh, they, they lacked about some uncertainties, uh, on, especially on slide uh, 25. I think this was, wasn't pointed out by the opposer, the opposing team, um, and they, they didn't... Um, like I said before, they, they didn't control um, the, the, the steps of the growth. Like they, they, they paused the, 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 the growth uh, for one day to another. Uh, this was a bit concerning. And the theoretical uh, weak points were the lack of theoretical motivation of the phenomenon and the amount of equations. I think you should be more clear how to um, um, explain theoretically the, the model. Okay, so, so some remarks uh, from the opponent team. I want to point out uh, the many variations of the parameters done by the reporter, and they pointed this out um, clearly. Uh, they pointed the brief, the, the briefly explained, and the briefly explained plot, and this was very nice. Um, and and they, they they pointed the amount of equations disposed that that was something that we noticed too, and then questioned the distance angles and the distance between the branches. That was very important. Uh, they. Uh, by the way, they didn't uh, question the lack of uncertainties that was pointed out uh, briefly before, and they do not question about the movement that causes the formation of dendrites. That's uh, something we found very important to this problem and to the comprehension of the phenomenon. So they didn't also uh, ex uh, ask the, about the diffusion independent of the electric field. So these are some points of uh, discuss and to improve. They used a 2D photos that don't um, um, take into account all the features. And, and we, we want to discuss about the most important parameters of this problem and how can you describe the particle movements and how, how does the material var varia could, um, could uh, interfere. So thank you about for your time. Thank you. We can now can move to the discussion between the three of you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, first, I want to give some small comment uh, about that I didn't uh, mention the movement uh, of uh, the information. So, 
uh, this was exactly why during this discussion we tried to uh, find out what's the real, uh, a real uh, qualitative explanation of this phenomenon, because now as we understand the qualitative physics, uh, we may discuss the uh, dynamic of, uh, this, of this moment and the different shape formation. So it was ju done just for, the, just for this topic. That's okay. preparation for it. Yeah. Okay, so. May I add uh, about the same topic? Yeah, okay. please. Yeah, of course. Uh, opponent had, uh, had a question, uh, uh, opponent misunderstood my, uh, my point about the theoretical investigation, as the theory doesn't predict the dependence on voltage, however, it predicts the uh, uh, diffusion controlled uh, value of the, uh, of the fractal dimension, which is nearly 2.5. Uh, in our experiment, we, uh, at, at our max, maximal value, uh, we achieved this, uh, this, uh, this uh, value of the fractal dimension, however, our theory doesn't predict other effects of the, of, uh, uh, non, uh, I would say, non-uniform formation of the of the dendrite structure and so on. Okay, uh, I want to add uh, first the, the report team. What should be the best scenario to observe the phenomena? Uh, um, did you consider uh, looking at the equilibrium scenario and out of equilibrium scenario, what will be the best? Uh, okay, in our opinion, it, it, uh, we have to take uh, the highest voltage. However, the gas allocation uh, do not have to start. Uh, this is a limitation by the voltage. Uh, depending on different materials, it, uh, this voltage is uh, different. Uh, the next thing is that uh, it is better to take a higher concentration of the ions. However, uh, the problem is that uh, after some time, the strong current uh, will uh, lead to... For, to uh, to non-uniform formation of the dendrite, and uh, because of this, uh, we cannot control this process. Okay. Uh, so the uh, time is yes. No, I just want to ask the same question to to the the opponent yeah. team. Do, uh, do you agree yeah, so that? Uh, I, before, okay. before answering it, I want to clarify uh, what is uh, the best condition for dendrite formation. So, what parameter do we, do we optimize by it? Uh, what do we optimize uh, to get the most uh, optimal? Well, this is a question for the... the, the no, no, uh, I, I mean, uh, you say that what, is the, what are the best conditions for the dendritic well, well, forming? Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm asking about best the scenario uh, um, 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 between equilibrium and, and out of the equilibrium scenario. This is the okay, way. so uh, in this case, I uh, think that uh, it's not so obvious that uh, we have to uh, maximize the voltage if we talk about, uh, if we talk about equilibrium, equilibrium one. Uh, but in general, yes, I agree with the point about this question. This is okay. about the voltage. Okay. Uh, the, last, the, the last question I want to raise about is, is about the movement of the particles, uh, as I said here. Uh, do you, what do you think uh, should be the best model to describe uh, the, the motion of the particles? And I want to ask this first to the opponent team. Uh, so in my opinion, uh, the best way is uh, to solve system of uh, diffusion and uh, Laplace equations. Uh, because okay. in this case, uh, knowing the Laplace equation, we know the electric field and know the motion of ions and adding diffusion, we add this random motion. Okay, mm. uh, and from the report? Uh, yes, uh, the problem is that uh, indeed uh, such a an, uh, such an way of the solving of the problem uh, may be used. However, uh, the reality is that uh, for uh, such, a, uh, such a coupled uh, uh, electrolysis problems, uh, it is indeed hard to solve uh, these both equations and different types of model has to be used to, to investigate the, the whole uh, process. Yeah. This, is, this is the reason why we used only the diffusion controlled formation. Yeah, th this is very nice. I agree with you. Thank you. Uh, thank, think... you thank you. Okay. From this point, we can add team members to the discussion and I suggest to everyone yeah, to see it. Can I stop my to screen? To put classes in the chat. Maybe yes, it was uh, seeing the reporter screen more. Yeah, so we can move now to the uh, general discussion. So if uh, the reviewer, you don't lead this uh, hand okay. over, I think the first class goes from the one, then so, from uh, uh, Anderson okay. Sozia. Okay, so some hello questions. once again, Ivan, Team Russia. And uh, the question to the reporter. So you showing us that gorgeous pictures of uh, microscopic uh, dendrites. And as you said, and I quite agree that they strongly depend on the uh, metal you're depositing. And my question is, does the metal 
affect the macroscopic parameter, for example, uh, fractal dimension, or maybe you can introduce another parameter. So if, if you change the metal you deposit in, uh, given the same initial conditions, is the fractal dimension constant uh, or, or does it change? Thank you. Uh, uh, it is not constant uh, because of, as I said, uh, it defines the current dependence on time. And because of this, the fractal dimension is different, uh, which was shown in our investigation for uh, uh, zinc, for example, uh, zinc sulfate, uh, as you can see, the fractal dimension is lower than in the case of the cuprum sulfate. Uh, and depending on different, uh, on different uh, materials which we use, we can get uh, not only the difference, uh, not only the different fractal dimensions, however, the different overall shape as we see it in, uh, at the picture. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I think I think that there is a question from Anderson Voltel. Can you ask? Yes. Uh, first of all, a uh, very good presentation and a very good discussion. Thank you all for for, for that. Uh, and your slide that you grow the, the the big nickel plate for eight hours a day for forty five days. Uh, I, I would like to hear the opponent opinion on uh, if he he agrees with me that's kind of problematic growing and stopping and growing again and how it can affect the diffusion and affect the, the shape of the group. So, uh, so, uh, so I agree with you that, that uh, this can uh, change our shape uh, significantly because uh, as we turn and turn, turn on the watch and turn off at update, uh, so there, these ions which are inside our liquid, uh, when they turn off the electricity, they just go down. Uh, it's a bottom of the liquid. And when we turn on it again, uh, it means that our uh, dendrite will grow uh, mostly on the down part, but not symmetrically. So in this case, it's, it uh, absolutely changed the geometry. Right, thank you for the answer. Yes, I, may, uh, I may add, sir, uh, I, I may add to right. this. Uh, sure, 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 sure. Uh, yes, uh, of course, uh, indeed, uh, it may uh, seem that the uh, periodic change of the, uh, of the current may lead to uh, worse grow of the dendrite structure. However, as we observed it in the experiment, uh, I have showed in here, uh, depending on the number of the cycle, we get the higher fractal dimensions as the surface becomes more uh, uh, more fractal uh, and the dendrite growth uh, becomes uh, more uh, more interesting because of the because of the effect that we stop at some uh, times the uh, formation of the current. And so, if we want to increase the fractal dimensions, this uh, process uh, indeed leads to to the increase of, of that. However, if we want to have a uniform uh, form of the dendrite, we have to use a steady current. Yeah, okay. Uh, I just want to suggest some, some things you can, could try on your experiments. So you could, you could observe about uh, something about the rugosity, the, like varying the rugosity of the surface. I think it should um, um, change the velocity of the process. And also um, you could uh, measure actually the velocity and the, the relation between the velocity and the, the, super, the surface area of your branches. Uh, this, these are like suggestions um, about your, your discussion here. But I think we should uh, answer most, more questions. There are uh, one more question from Anderson and one from Team Russia. Uh, I think right. I'll watching. be really, I'll have be very quick. Serve the second left. Yeah, please. Right. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be really, really quick. Uh, for this graph, uh, why do both things think uh, if we increase the number of cycles, it naturally uh, comes to the three uh, fractal dimension? Uh, okay, I will answer very shortly. Uh, the reason is that the surface of the fractal, uh, after some time, uh, for for example, as a night, as I as I mentioned, uh, uh, that the surface becomes uh, more uh, more acceptable for a new ions after some time, which which we which we waited before after this process. Okay. For me, quickly, uh, so uh, to be honest, uh, looking on these error bars, I cannot be sure if this dependence really exists. So to qualify that. I think it should be uh, more clarified if uh, this dependency will exist, just because of two big error bars. It can be constant, for example. Uh, this was the error bars for the photo definition. Uh, by the current, it, uh, the error bars is very low. Talk about the photo. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. I have thank to you. interrupt this uh, lovely discussion. Don't hate me for this, but time is over. Please, now concluding remarks for the reporter. Uh, okay, I want to say thank you to the both supporting and the reviewing team. Uh, during the discussion, we discussed uh, really interesting uh, questions. Uh, first of all, I want uh, first of all I want to clarify that uh, our theory uh, predicts uh, maximum value of the fractal dimension uh, up to 2.5. Uh, however, in the experiment, we do not observe uh, such an uh, uh, such a value because of uh, different processes uh, about which I have uh, I have spoken during uh, all my report. Also, we, we, we discussed the influence of the concentration, the quality of explanation of this phenomenon, which is very important. Uh, and also we investigated different, uh, uh, different parameters using which we can describe the, uh, the fractal uh, and, its, and its structure. Thank you for your time. Excellent, thank you everyone. And now we can move to the question from jury members. So jury members, if you have any question, please put plus in the chat. Who is the first? Sebastian is first. Please, Sebastian. Yeah, uh, I have uh, so two questions. The first one is just a clarifying question. So when you do this analysis of current, what does it exactly mean? So you, 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 have, uh, you have your electrons, you set a voltage, or, or, and you measure the, the current, I guess, or no, the other you, way around, yeah, and then you measure call it. Uh, the current dependence on a time, uh, and from this current dependence, uh, we can find uh, the uh, inclination of this uh, of this curve uh, in double logarithmic scale, from which we can define the fractal dimension by the formula represented uh, before in this presentation. So there is also some dependence on time. Okay, I see. Uh, okay, and uh, one one more physical question. So you said that when you apply a very strong voltage, I'm not sure you, you said this, maybe I missed it, but when you apply a very strong voltage and you don't have this dendritic formation, so what, what is a, a, a simple physical reason for this? Uh, the reason, hydrogen forming. Uh, okay, the reason is the gas allocation. Uh, the hydrogen for me, it's uh, uh, around the cathode. <clears throat> and due to this phenomenon, uh, the, uh, the electrode cannot be covered uh, by the dendritic structure. Okay, yeah, that's all for me. Thank you. The next question I see in the chat is from Federico. Thank you. So first of all, I want to uh, thank the, the three teams. I have questions for both uh, the reporter and the opposition. Uh, for the reporter, uh, I have a simple question. Uh, just out of curiosity, do you have any example in your experiments where you do not get a fractal structure, so a dimension of an integer number? Uh, yes, as I said, for low voltages, uh, we observe the uniform covering. Uh, we do not observe any type of, uh, of the digit structures, and for very high voltages. And do you think that there is a phase transition uh, in the going from fractal to non-fractal? Uh, phase transition, we think no, because of uh, in the dendrite there is a metallic structure. Uh, there is no kind of uh, any type of uh, uh, of transition. So indeed, we, we think that the, the formation process remains the same. However, the, like uh, the uh, the attachment process of the ions remains the same. However, the, the structure of the of the metal becomes uh, more complicated. And uh, just. Another small question uh, in your slide 39 about the materials that uh, you use to get different shapes. Do you know uh, how is the shape related to the atomic structure of the of the material or if there is any relationship or if it's just... Uh, as I know from the literature, the relationship is very complicated uh, and this is well known uh, for, 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 for this moment, moment of time. So we can like the mostly experimentally, uh, we can mostly experimentally judge about the formation of such a shapes. Okay, thank you. And one question to the opposition. Uh, you mentioned at the beginning of the discussion uh, something about fractal dimension distribution. What do you mean about that? Uh, I mean that uh, in different, uh, so, uh, if we have uh, our dendrite, uh, it's not exactly fractal. So I mean that uh, it can happen that in different parts of this fractal, uh, fractal dimension is a little different just because it's not exact fractal. Because um, it's just a, a mathematical assumption to be fractal. Yes, but in that case, since uh, in order to measure the fractal dimension, you need something like the overall structure. 
uh, do you measure the fractal dimension uh, dividing the dendrite uh, how or what is your criteria to uh, measure the fractal dimension if you uh, believe that there is this distribution you mentioned? Uh, so I think it can happen, not always, but uh, on some uh, specific conditions, it, it, it may happen. And in this case, I recommend to uh, take a picture of a fractal if you walk in, in two dimensional uh, case uh, and slice it in uh, small boxes and uh, use the algorithm which a reporter used for uh, each of this box, part of the picture and see if it's changed. If you walk in three dimensional case, in this case, we should not take the picture, but take a uh, scanning of, uh, 3D scanning of our shape uh, because in order to make, measure it correctly and make the same procedure, just uh, put part, divide it in small parts and uh, work with each one. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, let's move on, let's be quick. Uh, the next class goes from Omari. Yes, so to the reviewers and to the opponent, uh, just really quickly but precisely, can you comment on the precise values of the fractal dimensions that were observed in the experiments? Uh, the first question uh, for me, okay? Uh, yes. Uh, the actual value is up to 2.5. Yes, can you comment on that? Uh, the, uh, okay, what does it mean uh, actually physically or? You mean what? If you have anything to say quickly about it, and if not, I will listen to the opponent and then uh, leave it for someone okay. else. Okay, uh, this means that the shape that we obtain, it is not the plane, and it is not the, uh, the three-dimensional structure. Uh, it is uh, so, uh, in the physics of the, uh, in the mathematical investigation of the uh, fractal dimensions, uh, of the fractals, the fractal dimension 2.5 means that the, it is a, some kind of fractal structure, uh, which is, uh, in some way extend, uh, it, it's some yes. way to explain, uh, it is higher than ah, the Thank point. you. Can, does the opponent have anything quickly to add? Yeah, so I mean that uh, uh, the fractal dimensional equal to means that we work with plane, three with uh, three dimensional case, and uh, 2.5 means that we, we work somewhere between the plane and uh, 3D. So we have some symmetry, but not fully. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next is Alberto. So yeah, I wanted to quickly ask to the reporter, um, what are the biggest limitations they faced during uh, to perform the experiments? In our investigation, it was the limitations by the current. Uh, like we do not, uh, we didn't can get very high current to uh, uh, to get a fractal very big uh, at a small amount of time. So we had to to to, to wait thirty five days. To, to grow it in at such. Okay, and what would be the biggest limitation for uh, for the size of the fractal, like to uh, get a big fractal? Uh, in our opinion, it is defined by the geometry of uh, anode and cathode. Like uh, for some reason, uh, it, uh, if the uh, dendrite becomes very big, uh, it touches the anode and thus the distribution of currents may lead to another forms and, uh, and also limitations of the best in which we conduct an experiment. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Let's move on next to Sonia. Yes, okay, so. Um, yes. Uh, so I have a question, uh, the reporter, can you go to the setup slide, please? And yes. okay, my question is to you, but also if uh, uh, the opponent and the reviewer wants to comment. Uh, now, uh, was uh, the one, yes, ex yes, exactly, this one. Now, uh, okay. Uh, it's really nice to see these dendrites, but uh, in the real life, uh, you don't want to have them <laughs> uh, because you, you want to avoid to have them. So you should mm -hmm. control this. Now, I saw many studies uh, you did. Uh, I didn't see anything uh, uh, related to the material of the cathode in the sense, of course, if you start to grow the dendrites, you need some uh, initial conditions uh, without going uh, in the microscopic detail. Uh, you are dealing with uh, uh, potential and uh, charges. So there should be some link with the capacity of, of the material of the cathode. Can you comment on this? Do you think, uh, for example, uh, uh, to improve uh, a battery or whatever, uh, where you want to avoid to have the growing or dendrites, you can uh, maybe study and choose different materials we are avoiding 
mm, to to grow this and then also if the others want to to comment on this mm. and why you didn't do this because I, I i do not think you did this kind of a check yes indeed it mm. is a, it is a problem in electrochemistry uh the formation of dendri uh, of dendrites uh and indeed the, it is mainly defined by the material of the cathode like the, do they form uh and uh, investigation of our problem uh like mainly it is defined by the uh by the attachment coefficients like do 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 is do it easy to uh for ions to attach the uh the surface of the cathode and if it is not, uh, then we do not observe, uh, we observe the dendrites. However, in, it is not, uh, the, uh, this effect cannot be observed. Uh, however, our investigation is made, uh, is useful for a case when the main surface is covered uh, uniformly. However, at the edges, we observe the formation of dendrites. And in this case, it is uh, in some way, uh, I would say, independent on the material of the cathode. If we have a formation of the uh, material uh, on the surface, uh, then the dendrites may formate uh, in each case. I would say so. It mainly defines the, the uh, is it able to mm -hmm. formate the uh, uniform layer? Uh, and then uh, the formation of the dendrites comes as, a, as, a, as a, uh, another question. Um, as an opponent, I also have a comment. So I know that dendrites formation is a huge issue during the battery exploitation and uh, it may shorten circuits in uh, cases of high humidity. And one of the solutions is to use uh, specific polymers to cover the anode and the cathode in order to prevent the dendrites from the straight attachment to them. Thank yes, you. but as the word is not ideal, maybe maybe these parameters should also be studied in such a way that you can, uh, how to say, uh, optimize the voltage, the the material of the cathode, and set up. This is so yeah. the question. less of the voltage, the slower the growth. I think yeah, we are out. We are the out problem. in the town. <laughs> yeah, 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 thank yeah. Thank you. Really quickly, I think the, the question was to review too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, I think it's it's important to vary this, this parameter. Actually, I pointed out in, a, in our reviewing slides, and and I think uh, it should be investigated and motivated. Why does some some material is better than the other? Uh, and analyzing this chemical chemical quash, uh, uh, composition and physical um, um, physical motivation of of the, the, the position. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dima. Your short question. I wanted to ask a reporter about the cathode. So the shape of the cathode apparently was just rectangular cathode. Uh, the question is, what's going to happen if you use different shapes and if you change, like if you polish the sharp corners or if you polish the surface? Do you expect significant changes in the results? Uh, in our report, we investigated different shapes of the cathode, for example, hemispherical one, uh, the cylindrical and the uh, rectangular one. Uh, and we saw that for a cylindrical electrode, the uh, formation of dendrites is easier uh, because of the small surface and thus the currents are bigger. Uh, because of this. Indeed, if we try to, in, in some way, uh, make the border smoother, uh, then the formation of the, uh, the dendrites may be, will be lower in this case. Yes, it's true. Thank you, everyone. Uh, now we move uh, to the... Yeah. Can I ask something about season. this question, too, actually? You want to listen oh, to yeah. comment from the reviewer? Okay, far away. Uh, I, I think the, the, the shape does not affect uh, really much the, the, the shape of the dendrite itself, but it, it almost um, does affect where does the branching will start um, in terms of uh, the, 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 the potential dis distribution and where will be the most uh, probable uh, point to the, the branching start, to the position start. So, so that's what we discussed about this problem in this Topic. We actually what, what raised. Are you showing, looking at this plot, but okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. We see the opinion of the rep reporter on the slide. We see the opinion of the reviewer, but from what she said, I think we desperately need to stop the juror question at this point, and now jurors are deciding their grades. Again, uh, for. When you decided your grades, you need to send them in the private messages to Nikolai. Uh, I also, I think we didn't have all names in the chat from Teams speakers. 
I think we desperately need the reporter's name. Please also, reporter team, put your speaker's name to the chat as well for our recordings. Nikolai, please, whenever you're ready with grades and you're happy seeing all, 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 all of them, give us some sign of it. I have received all the marks. Excellent. So now, please, to remember, so you can give your comments, also put in classes. I think Federico was the first. OK. Um... So well, I am not such a good experimental physicist, and I found this kind of this problem like very hard to perform. And when I look at the, the reporter's setup, I was just uh, scared. Uh, but uh, I believe that you managed to to get some physics out of it and to solve, uh, I think, almost the problem. I want to congratulate the opposition because. Uh, the discussion was very um, fluid and also the reporter answered like everything with a lot of uh, security so I was like uh, convinced of everything and I don't have like uh, any comment about the physics I just want to congratulate uh, the teams and I, I actually enjoyed I learned a lot uh, during this uh, uh, discussion thank you thank you then was Sebastian yeah, uh, so I will start from the report. So this, I think this is a comment which comes out very often. But uh, uh, so there were the, concerning the presentation, there were too many information, way, way, way too many information in your slides. So uh, in, 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 I'm sure that you have done a lot of work on this. You have spent months, uh, experimental, especially experimental work. There were, there were a lot of data, but there were too, way too many data. So uh, luckily I had already, Followed this presentation before, so I could I could more or less understand it. But if this would have been my first time, I sh I'm sure I would have been pretty ma pretty much lost immediately. And uh, and I think this is a really a shame because I we can see that you have done a lot of work, but if you cannot really convey your the, the message during those 12 minutes, it's a uh, I, th I think it's really a waste. And we have seen this we have seen this uh, quite sometimes. Concerning the opponent, I think the opponent has been as good as it can be. So I was, I really liked the Russia uh, kind of approach, but at the same time, you were, you were even guiding the conversation. You were almost doing the, the role of the reviewer. You were, you were not pushing, you were bring, uh, bringing up topics and uh, nice points of discussion. And, and, uh, and, uh, and I really enjoyed it. And uh, indeed it was even hard to, to properly grade the reviewer because most of, the, most of the tasks were already done by you. But still, I, 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 think, sorry, I think the reviewer did also a good job. I, I, I always would like to see some really strong reviewer, which is taking the conversation and really guiding it without, without becoming a second opponent. But still, it was. I, I, I think it was still okay. Okay. Since the next was uh, Sonia, who raised her hands before Amore Pusnes class. Yes. Uh, okay. I, I, I totally agree with the Sebastian. <laughs> he already said what I would have liked to say. Yes, uh, um, okay, I was really impressed about the, the work, the job done by the, uh, the reporter. But however, you cannot really, I, I know they are called the slide, but okay, you have to give audience at least 10 seconds to understand what you are showing. And sometimes it was not like that. <laughs> so. It was really fast. So maybe uh, you can keep some of your results in a big uh, backup uh, slides and then you can take it, uh, show them later when you have the discussion with the opponent. Concerning the opponent, okay, uh, as I already met Russia, I have to say that, okay, they, they understood what I meant because uh, I like also the opposition today. Uh, it was nice. Uh, nothing to say, and uh, okay, the same uh, for the reviewer as uh, Sebastian said. That's it. Excellent. Uh, let the next be Omori. Right, uh, once again, most of 
what had been done has already been said. Uh, most of what has to be said has already been said, and I totally agree with everything so far. Just wanted to point out that uh, I thought that some really interesting questions from the both the opponent and the uh, reviewer had been eluded a little bit by the reporter, and that was a bit of a letdown in some sense. So that could be also improved upon. Thank you. And Mitro, your comment. Okay, I would like to thank everybody in this discussion. It was a very good, interesting, productive discussion. Uh, it is very clear that the physics of the phenomenon is competition of electric field and diffusion. So you, you manage to control the electric fields quite clearly. You manage to control the, elect the electron shape. Um, I uh, could also imagine you could control the diffusion by, for example, changing the temperature. But I think it was also mentioned. So more or less, the, the problem is solved. Um, I have not put the highest mark uh, because I have seen the solution of the US team, of which I am the team leader. Uh, and I have seen much prettier shapes from them. They, they have done a 2D, uh, and they have seen several different pretty shapes of the dendrites. And you can actually control the pretty shape, like how, how round or how triangular it is by changing the voltages and changing the concentration, and changing, for example, the temperature of the electrode shape. So you can make it much prettier, uh, and you can have much more control, in fact. Uh, that's why I haven't put the highest mark. And also in the discussion, as I agree with with jury, saying that it was uh, it was hard for the opponent and reviewer to push push reporter uh, to elucidate more of the results or understand their points better. There, there was some difficulty in communication from the reporter side in the discussion. And opponent and reviewer, excellent job. Excellent, thank you for kind words. From my side, I've been really enjoying uh, the part where something about fractals has been shown by the map of the UK, as the UK representatives. It's cute for me. Uh, so now we go for another three minute break before uh, of the last round of this physics fight and I hand it over to Mateos. Mateos, tell us something impressive and interesting. Hello everybody, I'm back again. Uh, how many minutes do we have? Uh, 10 minutes or? I'm not that generous, so three minutes. <laughs> oh, okay, three minutes, okay. Uh, well, it was a really nice fight. Let's see if we have more comments there on the YouTube channel. Uh, I would like to remind you all a really important uh, part of the IPT is the problem collection. So whoever is watching us on the live stream on YouTube uh, or anywhere else, it would be really nice if you could provide us some uh, problems for next year. We're collecting problems until uh, July 11th. So please send out your problems uh, and you might be seeing them here uh, next year, who knows? For example, I proposed uh, problem 13, branching lights, uh, which I'm really happy to see here in the final two being presented by the Brazilian team even. Uh, so you can also have this, uh, you know, this thrill of seeing your problem being solved by uh, many other physicists around the world too. Uh, so let's see. Now we're seeing lots of people uh, in the chat here cheering for Russia. Uh, really, so the, the Russian people have uh, started making lots of comments here. Uh, okay, lots of comments. Let's see, well, lots of Brazilian people too uh, cheering for Brazil. Let's see. Let's see if we have any any interesting any other interesting comments. So there's someone here who's really proud of Team Brazil. Let's make our future better, better for our country, better for the world, uh, and great Ukraine and Russian teams too. Uh, now let's see. Uh, also, we we can oh, we can okay. uh, remember that uh, our viewers also are our um, uh, participants. Uh, this year, and uh, we can uh, remind them to send uh, their solutions and their presentations to Exicom yes. in order to have them uh, in solutions database in our website. Yes, that is completely correct. Uh, we have, uh, I, I can even 
show you here the, the, database, the database of problems that we have so far. Uh, we have set up a really interesting web page uh, for it on our website. I'm gonna screen share here. So uh, when you go to IPT, you go to problems and then solutions database. We have a solutions database on Zenodo too, an IPT community on Zenodo, which is a really interesting place uh, because it even creates the digital uh, object uh, ID number. So here you can see all solutions from from the past IPTs, for instance, 2020, 2018. Uh, lots of interesting problems here. For instance, this one, particle detector for dummies, the problem I presented in 2018. Just kidding. Uh, but yeah, uh, lots, lots, lots of interesting problems too. So you can get inspired. You know, uh, maybe you you saw uh, a presentation that you liked a lot about a specific team, and you want to see how they how they do this. Uh, yeah, everything is here. Lots of great solutions here because it's really interesting uh, to actually make use of, of your presentations too. So this is why we, we proposed this uh, Zenodo platform and it's really organized and well, overall pretty interesting. And you can even like, I believe cite these, uh, these presentations at some point if you're really excited about them uh, and you use them for future work too. Uh, and yes, yeah, I think that th this is what I wanted to, to say. Uh, and well, let me also tell you that uh, if your country doesn't have an IPT team, you can also register on our website. You can just send an, a, an email. Uh, for instance, you can use this form here, contact. This will go directly to the, the Exacom. So you, you write your name, your email, your subject, and your message, and we'll receive it and read it. Uh, and maybe we're going to have a... Uh, an, IT, an IPT team of your country next year. Who knows, too? Uh, and another thing I was going to say, well, am I forgetting something? Uh, well, no, I think, no, I am forgetting something for sure, but I, I don't remember what. Uh, so, oh, the solution, oh, the, the problems. Okay, so the problems, suggest your problems. So you have your IPT problems, suggest your problem. You have until the 11th of July. To propose your problem, it's uh, it's basically a Google Forms. Uh, you put your email, your name, and the idea for problem. And if you have any additional material you want to use, you can just add it here. Uh, and that's basically it. Okay. And who knows? Maybe next year we're gonna be here solving your problems too. Uh, and well, this is this makes it really it's it really exciting, you know, because it's a participation from uh, all across the community. Uh, well, uh, are we done with the three minutes yet? Or maybe, no, Mateus, maybe not? Like, hmm. One little thing. We are looking not only for problems, we are also looking for jury members. So if you know physics professors uh, who are interested in IPT, if you have some professor who you know would be interested, uh, then maybe invite them and show them the problems and show them this solution database show them problems from different years and people tend to be interested and they should get acquainted with the problems and be judging next year because nowadays French team is complaining that half of the judges are Russian and Ukrainian and it is true. We need more judges and we need more international judges. Okay. Yeah, definitely we need more judges. Uh, so please uh, get in touch with us at the Exacom uh, and we'll be able to select some Nice jurors for next year too. Hopefully for the live edition, the uh, in-person edition of the IPT again, the format we we all love. Okay, now I think uh, we're gonna go back already to the report by the Russian team. Is that correct? I already no, see the uh, screen. No, can you? That uh, is correct. Start the time of running. I can, oh, okay, no, can... yeah, just wait, just wait. Come on, we're all yeah, friends we're here. Waiting we're waiting. Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, waiting for Anastasia. She she controls the clock, so she'll she'll tell you. So yeah, so this was our three minutes overview so far. Okay, see you all in about an hour. Okay, can you hear me? Wait, Anastasia, where is Anastasia? She's not here. 
Ah, okay, okay. Uh, we, we're waiting. We are waiting. Yeah, just wait. Just wait for the chair. Uh, then we'll be able to start the session as soon as she arrives. Okay, no, no, no problem. No problem. Yeah, okay. Спасибо. Ojib, спасибо. I know how to speak some words in, in Russian uh, because, you know, in 2018, we, the Brazilian team, you know, we went to, to Russia and we had to learn some Russian to, you know, to be able to communicate around the city. Uh, and we really, you know, I really miss IPT 2018. Uh, the jury, Amaury Bahao was there too. We faced each other at the final. Uh, yeah, it was a really interesting fight. Pronunciation is very good. Uh, it is... Uh... Oh, were you there too in 2018? Yes, yes, yes. It is a really, really good pronunciation of... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So many memories, yeah. Okay, I'm just... Uh, we can maybe chat a little bit more, because... Uh... Can you hear me now? Uh -huh. Oh, okay, Anastasia's back. Okay, cool. We're just talking a little bit more about that. Some okay. memories here. Uh, I think you can clearly hear me, uh, and also all of the jurors, all of the team members, uh, and Chaya uh, here. To, uh, yes, yes. I'm. Am I wrong? Yeah, we can hear. It's just, okay. let's just okay. confirm that Anastasia is there. Wait, just a little bit longer, uh, just uh, to Anastasia see. Anastasia is here. On, uh, no. Yeah, no, she is, but just to make sure that she can control everything, because uh, she's not showing on the screen. Uh, Well, if anything, I can I can control the clock too, uh, so so that we can we can start. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna do this then instead, uh, so we don't you know we don't lose any more time. Uh, okay. Wait, I'm just setting up the. So you can accompany the the clock. Uh, on my screen then, uh, for, for now, I'm gonna become the clock as of now. So, are you ready, Team Russia? Uh, yes, uh, okay. Okay then, uh, good afternoon, uh, you have oh, okay, 12 okay. minutes. Good yeah, afternoon, have... dear colleagues. Uh, uh, I, I'm uh, ready to report now. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, okay uh, then. Uh, Okay. Yeah, you um, can start. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. My name is Artem Sukhov. Today I'll present to you our solution to problem number two called Pop Pop Away. We need to construct a small boat with engine powered by a candle. It is a very simple engine uh, that consists of a boiler and uh, pipes. Uh, also, we need to propose an optimal boat design. Uh, our boat construction consists of an adapted shell of the boat, a boiler filled with water, engine pipes, uh, Bayonce foam and also a tea light candle. We observed the movement of the boat. So there are several important points to note. The boat needs some time to warm up. After starting the movement, the boat reaches a constant speed, which is determined by the resistance of the medium. Uh, medium. Uh, also, a periodic uh, popping sound is here due to expansion to the boiler. Uh, the main point is that the boat is moving with a periodic force. Uh, waves of a certain frequency are observed on the water surface. And you can see this in the picture, but uh, what is the mechanism of such an engine? Uh, okay, let's start from considering the engine mechanism. Uh, when we understand how it works, we can optimize the design and describe the movement of the boat. And finally, uh, we will show to you our optimal boat. Uh, we light a candle. Uh, the temperature of the water in boiler rises. Due to evaporation, the, uh, the pressure inside rises due, uh, also. Uh, and then uh, the liquid uh, begins to flow out. But uh, we know uh, that the force is periodic. Uh, so let's consider why the pressure can fall again. The fact is that the further the vapor bubble passes, uh, the lower the temperature is around the bubble, which means uh, the bubble can condense. Uh, then uh, the pressure drops sharply, and uh, this happens uh, cyclically, uh, and since uh, uh, the heating uh, is constant. 
After that, part of the flow will leave the pipes by inertia, uh, which will, will make uh, the liquid flow. Uh, and also, uh, a low pressure zone forms inside the engine because uh, some liquid uh, flows out by inertia. Uh, and uh, we, uh, the well, a low pressure zone uh, will make uh, the liquid flow back. Uh, but in the first direction, we have a direct jet, and uh, in the opposite direction, it flows from all sides of the pipe. The difference in these impulses is the reason for the movement of the boat. Uh, we have created a simplified model of the engine uh, that only consists of a dryer and a pipe. Due to, due to transparency of the pipe, we can observe oscillations. Uh, a zone uh, of uh, the slow rise is visible, uh, and the rapid fall of the liquid from the pipe. So we can describe the movement of uh, liquid inside the pipe. Uh, let us transform the equation to densities and write down the boundary conditions, assuming the flow inside the pipe is laminar. Uh, then we just uh, have to find the vapor pressure inside the pipe. Uh, by writing down uh, Van der Waals uh, equation of state, we can find it. Uh, it remains to find the mass flow rate of vapor through the equations of dynamics equilibrium uh, when we can calculate the volume of vapor. And finally, let's write uh, down the energy balance in the system. Uh, the only uh, that's uh, missing is the power of candle. Uh, but uh, now we have a model with a dryer whose power we know. So uh, we can compare our theory with the experiments. Uh, as we can see, our model describes fluctuations uh, very well. Uh, and the rate of the rise uh, is the less than the rate of the fall clearly. Uh, you can see this uh, by uh, uh, angle of uh, our theory uh, at uh, zones. Uh, some time for the transition to stable fluctuations is also predicted. Or you can see that amplitude is uh, uh, stabilized by the time. Uh, and uh, to confirm the hypothesis about the presence of the pulse jet from our engine, uh, we construct our experimental setup for the particle image velocity method. We have uh, light markers uh, in the water. Uh, we put uh, light through our jet with a laser. Uh, and this uh, was recorded using a high-speed camera. Uh, and we processed uh, the results in the MATLAB package PIV lab. And uh, that is how it looked. Uh, truth charms, uh, I think, yes. Uh, reverse uh, non-directional flow is also investigated by this method. Almost everything is visible. It remains only to turn off the light. Uh, you can see the difference between lightning and uh, non-lighted uh, uh, at the left and the right side of the slide. To begin with, uh, we checked the known experimental fact uh, for the angle of a submergent jet divergence uh, a cone angle uh, after the pipe. Uh, the result obtained is independent of the flow rate. Uh, we create experiments uh, for different flow rates. Uh, with our Reynolds numbers, uh, uh, the angle cone is independent. Uh, the measured angle is correlated with the experiment because we have angle about uh, 25 degrees. And after that, we have uh, a reference to the Landau. Uh, so uh, finally, we can look at the oscillations for our gent, how quickly it releases momentum and how slowly the water flows back. We can also compare the velocity and our model, uh, and uh, our model works correctly. Uh, it is the uh, processed experiment video. Next, we can calculate the force uh, with uh, which the, uh, the jet pushes the boat through the momentum change law. Uh, we have a correction for our periodic nature of force and uh, for cone jet, uh, cone jet angle. Now, we know all about engine and we can optimize our boat. Let's do it. Like any boat, ours has a drag coefficient uh, and we can measure it from the experiment simply by pushing the boat and approximate the deformation with uh, the differential equation solution, our plot. And we can measure this coefficient. Uh, now we can calculate the movement of the boat and find the speed at which it eventually go. Uh, and the theory uh, describes the experiment well, and we can see that uh, uh, it is uh, 
we have some constant speed after the some time. Okay, uh, by optimizing our board for the maximum final speed, they can get the optimal value for the pipe length. Uh, this uh, relates to the fact that there is a length where the vapor bubbles are all already fully condensed and after reaching the optimum length, uh, we only have a friction forces work. Uh, it is also relates to the volume of our boiler if we assume the constant heat rate from the, from the candle. Uh, so, uh, also the optimal pipe diameter, e, diameter is also predicted in our model. Uh, this dependence is explained by the fact uh, that uh, with small diameters of the pipes, the resistance forces plays a key role. Uh, with a larger pipe diameter, the outflow velocities becomes uh, small due to the constant flow rate. Now let's talk about the flow around the contour of our boat. For this, we turn uh, to the theory of the boundary layer, uh, laminar boundary layer. And with the known experimental constants, uh, this uh, will help us uh, to find the separation points of the flow from the profile of our boat. From the uh, equation of shear stress, when it uh, is equal to zeros, uh, the separation points are founded. Uh, this model has also been validated for the liquid flow around an ellipse, uh, and we compare it with the experiment and the numerical solution uh, of the famous scientist uh, Mazo. Uh, and so uh, we can see a, a good agreement and with numerical methods and also with a pressure coefficient uh, from the experiment for the ellipse. And uh, you can see how the separation points compare with the calculations from the literature. Uh, and with this model, we found a shape with an almost zero separation zone. In our case, it is a well-known profile called NACA uh, 0012. And uh, this profile has a very, very small drag coefficient, drag coefficient. So our optimal boat reaches a speed of 11 centimeters per second. We can also estimate the maximum distance uh, that the boat will travel by a tea candle and the energy efficiency of such an engine. Uh, we have a very small efficiency because we have uh, many dissipation parameters uh, like uh, a medium uh, around our boat. Uh, so uh, the mechanism of uh, engine operation based uh, on liquid operation inside the boiler is presented. Uh, the cycle of work is fully theoretically described and the interaction of the boat with the environment through a submerged jet and momentum transfer have been investigated using the PIV experiment. Afterwards, uh, the boat movement dynamics has been studied experimentally and uh, theoretically. There is a good agreement of the theoretical and as the experimental results. Uh, the boat and the engine design are optimized for the longest distance the boat can sail and the efficiency of the engine is also evaluated. Bibliography. Thank you for your attention and I'm happy to answer on your questions and uh, we have also investigated a uh, list uh, of themes or uh, of topics and uh, I'm glad to answer any questions. All right then. Um, yeah, thank you. I hope you can hear me now and it should perfectly go with me from now on. And now okay. we can move to the clarifying questions from jury members. Uh, from opponent team. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Can you go back to slide 10, please? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, slide number 10. Um, Okay, I think it's the next one. Okay. Uh, we run the world equation for Vipa. Yeah, it, it, just to make this clear, the, the sub V is for vapor and G for? Uh, G, it is a uh, gas constant, uh, R, R, G. Oh, okay. Uh, in the, in v, the... Vapor and W is water. Oh, okay, thank you. Slide G 12, uh, sorry, 17, please. 17? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, 17, yes. Uh, okay, so uh, it was quite hard to understand what is this video about? Uh, okay, this, video uh, is. this is 
a pulse flow from our pipes. Uh, uh, we uh, can see uh, the pulses jet. Uh, it is some impulses, and uh, we have a direct jet uh, at the from from the left side to the right side, and we have some flow back uh, after this. Uh, you can see. Oh, okay, this. I see. This I is see. experimental fact. Thank you. Uh, slide twenty one, please. Twenty one. Yes, I can. Uh, okay, so how do you calculate the kind of effective power? Yes, I uh, can answer this question. Oh, one second. No, this at this. Uh, okay, uh, we uh, calculate this uh, power by uh, a coefficient from uh, this paper. Uh, it can this coefficient consists of uh, a uh, evaporation heating and also uh, a paraffin uh, and also uh, a coefficient of uh, heat transfer to the our boiler uh, mm, and uh, mass flow rate mm -hmm. we uh, find from the experiment. Okay. Excellent. And Thank here you. we need to stop the clarifying question time and move on to the preparation for the opposition. Yeah, family. Are you? Uh, do we still have a timeout? No, I'm pretty sure you used to hide timeout yeah. when you okay. did your uh, you win in the first round. Okay. You run out of your time, so you can start sharing your slides if you have any. Okay, so I believe you can see my, my slides. Yes. Um, no. Okay, so I will start my, my presentation. Firstly, thank you for the Team Russia for for this great presentation, they did a really nice work. Uh, but uh, I will start talking about some th from the strong points that we thought about the, the presentation. They explained the engine mechanism nicely. Uh, they explained the thermodynamic cycle with uh, 
images and, vis and good visualization. So this helped us to understand the, the phenomenon, what, what is the real phenomena that is happening inside the boiler. They did a good experiment, uh, varying some parameters to define what is the 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 optimum the optimum parameters for the for the bulk. Um, they so they they did experiments on pipe length, pipe diameter, and bulk shape, uh, and they did the efficiency calculations as well. Uh, some concerning points that that we may uh, throw up is the dependence of the drag force. Firstly, uh, the, they said it's proportional to V. I would like to, to uh, get some cl clarifications on that. Uh, they didn't vary the number of pipes. The, there are some other parameters that, this is one of the other parameters that we think is so important for the, for the optimum boat that we are trying to build here. And they didn't explain uh, how the other parameters remained constant during the uh, while the one single parameter was being changed. So this, I think, would need some better clarification. So points to, to discuss is the definition of efficiency. They did a calculation, however, however, we think that the definition was a little obs obscure. Um, the the on the beginning of their presentation they presented a graph that that they said the the boat need to warm up a little before the before the they had a constant velocity. However, we I would like to to see the graph again because I am not so convinced that there was a a. a a constant velocity was reached, and, and another thing that 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 I'd like to talk about is other ways to improve efficiency. How the our, I already pointed this out on the previous slide. Uh, some other parameters like the number of pipes, changing the material, uh, changing the area of the boiler, the height that the the candle uh, stays to the boiler. So there are a lot of uh, parameters that could be changed, and I hadn't seen uh, any of them in the in their presentation. Um, another point that is relevant, uh, I'd like to 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 hear their opinion on the the volume of the boiler, on the ratio of the volume of the boiler to the pipes. Uh, I'd like to to. They didn't talk about this, and we think it's an important parameter. Another thing is that I would like to ask if the mechanism that I sorry uh, uh, I didn't have the time to put this on the slide. However, I'd like to hear from them uh, if they if they think that the the mechanism of the motor is completely described by what they showed. Or maybe there is another mechanism on acting on it too. So I think that that's it. Uh, I would like to thank you again for your presentation. It was really, really nice. Uh, I enjoyed your experience, and now I'd like to to continue for the discussion. Uh, Excellent. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. We can move to the discussion between two of you. Yes. Uh, can I? Uh, make some remarks uh, about your presentations, uh, about your presentation. Uh, so uh, you say uh, about uh, dependence of drag force and number of pipes in waves uh, to improvement. Uh, yeah, sorry, sure. I uh, cannot uh, show to you all of my solution because uh, it is uh, it can uh, be make this uh, presentation very mess. But what about extension path to optimization? So uh, we really can uh, change uh, uh, the number of tubes uh, in this boat. Uh, we can, we, not we, uh, but after alpha of a YouTube channel uh, used uh, about seven tubes, seven pipes. Uh, but in this case, uh, we need uh, a more effective boiler with more effective, uh, some uh, heating power. Yes. Uh, okay. For our, uh, for our boiler, 
uh, we try to, to create one uh, pipe. Uh, one pipe is uh, um, not better, uh, but... Uh, okay, I see your point. Two pipes. Uh, and I three see. pipes is uh, too, too high. <laughs> uh, and okay. uh, that's this. Uh, I agree with you. Um, I would like to just uh, make some additional comments on that. Because okay. uh, you showed uh, uh, a boat with uh, seven pipes, and I like if you think that is important the volume of the boiler to the pipes ratio. I think not a boiler volume, a volume of whole system, but uh, a boiler roll is another. Uh, boiler roll uh, is uh, that we have some different uh, heat transfer coefficient from the, our heating power uh, to our. Uh, our system, uh, and uh, we can uh, increase uh, the uh, surface uh, or, or increase the area of surface of our boiler. And in this case, uh, we have big efficiency uh, heat transfer from our candle to the boiler. Okay. And okay. We, uh, we, we try to optimize this uh, by uh, thermal insulation. We follow. Yeah, I, I, I agree in parts, but I don't know if you got my question correctly. Our, our our team believes that the, this ratio of volume of the boiler to the pipes is really important because if the boiler volume is is really low compared with the pipe volume, the the motor can can start to to gasol up and it starts it stops working. So okay, the, okay. the total uh, distance is really shortened by that. Gone, Do you agree gone, with me? I, uh, no. Uh, can I show to you our simple simple engine model? Uh, this model works uh, 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 with the same way uh, with our uh, boat. Uh, and uh, what is the boiler in this case, uh, in your opinion? So we have oscillations, uh, we have uh, uh, the same uh, mechanism. What is the boiler? So what is uh, making heat? In we have this only, case? only pipe. Uh, we heat uh, this pipe with water. Sorry? We heat uh, this pipe with water. Only pipe without uh, some kind uh, of boiler. W oh, okay, boiler I see. Like the, the dryer is heating the pipe. Yes, yes, without yes. boiler. W <clears throat> what is the boiler in this case, uh, in your opinion? Yeah, there is none. The, the pipe is, is doing the, both the job of the pipe and the boiler at the same time. In, in the engine works, I, I agree with you. However, the, it, the, the boiler is an important part of the boat. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, I say to you the role of this boiler. Uh, uh, it is uh, the role of uh, heat transferring. We have yeah, I agree a, a small candle uh, and uh, we need uh, to create a big area. I'm sorry, I'd like to move on. Uh, I think okay, the okay. discussion is really stuck on this. Um, okay. I'd like to point out another mechanism that, that the motor uh, might, might do, uh, uh, might explain the phenomena that you didn't mention on your presentation. So. I agree with you that the the flow and of the outward flow of the water is is concentric and and pushes the momentum of the boat forward. However, I think that you missed the point that when the water is coming into the pipes of the boat, yes, the, the boat there is a transferring momentum to the boat, so the boat is not coming back. I think you missed this point. Do you agree uh, with me? I think no, because uh, in my presentation I say about reverse flow. And uh, this flow uh, has a less momentum than directed flow, uh, but uh, yeah. there are some correction for this flow. And we measure this uh, experimentally from our PIV uh, investigation. Uh, we check uh, the pulse jet from uh, the pulsating heat pipe uh, and uh, check the ratio of these uh, two pulses uh, and create a coefficient for uh, the average jet force. But uh, acting okay. on okay. the boat. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think it's clear now. We will be able to proceed this discussion, including the reviewer. Now, clarifying questions from the reviewer. Okay, thank you for the uh, report and the opposition. And I would like to ask uh, to open slide number three. Number three, yes. Uh, as I can see, this is a um, uh, constant uh, or uh, all is okay, thank you. And how did you change uh, and optimize the distance from a candle? 
and uh, change maybe the heat flux of a candle? Uh, we can change a uh, heat flux of a candle, but we can change the transfer coefficiency, coefficiency from a candle to the uh, our boiler. And uh, we try to use uh, a foil uh, for improvement of thermal insulation. Okay, and what is the optimal distance between the candle and uh, the boiler? Ah, uh, we didn't change uh, the optimal distance, uh, but I think uh, it is uh, the distance uh, to the highest temperature uh, point uh, of a flame. And what and, is this, the distance? Uh, I didn't find it, uh, but I think uh, it is a very simple fact. Uh, it, is, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, it, it is visible by the flame, but uh, around... Uh, Near, near the uh, end of the flame, but uh, a higher, a okay. quite higher. Can you uh, solve numerically the change of impulse of income and out outcome flow uh, in the end of the nozzle nozzles? Can you repeat, please? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, have you find the different uh, uh, the change in in impulse when the flow is coming through the nozzle and when it outcomes? which uh, is leading to the motion of the board. Uh, I didn't get your question, but uh, if you, uh, if, uh, maybe uh, you ask about uh, difference uh, in the pulses from flow, uh, flow uh, flows back and uh, direct to jet. Yes, we find this from the experiment. It is uh, empirically coefficient. Uh, okay, and was the drag coefficient for the optimal? Okay, thank you. At this point, we need to stop the clarifying questions and but I can show it move to the preparation. We take them out. Okay, good. Uh, I am ready. Okay, fire away. Uh, good morning. I am Kitsenko Alexander from Team Ukraine, and in this physics fight, I will be the reviewer for uh, problem number two, pop up away. And in the problem tasks, we ask to maximize the travel distance and to estimate the energy conversion efficiency. And uh, from the report, we are uh, we have uh, found that there was really good uh, preliminary part with demonstration. And uh, uh, in, uh, we have found that uh, there was a good qualitative explanation of the effect with the thermodynamics and the fluid dynamics part and uh, uh, from the uh, numeric simulations and also the uh, theory that have been in the report. And uh, for the experimental uh, setup, we have a lot of questions and the optimization problem wasn't 
solved uh, uh, as we think uh, uh, fully. And that is the main question to the uh, discussion. And uh, then the, uh, we can uh, say that there was good uh, uh, qualitative analysis, quantitative, but the experimental and optimization part was not as good as uh, it uh, will uh, be. And uh, for the opponent's question, uh, or opponent uh, have a very good question on the simulation and uh, experiments. And then uh, opponent uh, in his uh, speech said about, uh, uh, about uh, very uh, influences of the task. And uh, we, uh, from the opponent, know about the problem of optimization and uh, but uh, the opponent didn't uh, at all speak about the hidden problem which we uh, also want to discuss at the polemics and uh, for the discussion we uh, have talked about a different number of tubes and reported tried to optimize it with the simulation and use the additional experiments uh, which showed the same mechanism and uh, the important, most important po uh, points for the discussion is the uh, opponent agreed with the additional uh, experimental setup and uh, the discussion between uh, inflow and outflow rates and make it uh, more clear. And there are some discussion points for the discussion that is starting right, right now. And my okay, first, yes, please go for your screen. My first question for the discussion is to uh, for optimizing the boiler. So the reporter, could you please? Uh, I can pause. Uh, you can stop your sharing, and I can open my presentation, please. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I can. I can uh, answer on different uh, questions from you, I think, but I need my... You still need to stop sharing, not only stop uh, presenting. Oh, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, now uh, I'm uh, on the screen. Uh, you can answer your question about a boiler. Uh, we have uh, different uh, slides for optimization and uh, uh, I... Uh, I'm, I'm happy to answer this question. Can you repeat your question, please? Uh, have you optimized the boiler? What's the parameters that you have optimized? Okay, uh, I think I answer on this the, question. Uh, how many boilers did you actually use in the problem? Yes, uh, in this problem, we use uh, the boiler uh, with, uh, from a uh, Coca-Cola can. And uh, I think uh, in our investigation, it is the best boiler because uh, we try to use uh, different uh, cans uh, with uh, different radiuses, uh, but we haven't uh, dependence uh, in the slides. Uh, and uh, we check uh, that the uh, main boiler parameter is the uh, heat transfer coefficient, uh, that I said before, uh, with opponent. But uh, uh, also, uh, we uh, try uh, to check uh, boiling, uh, boiler filling ratio and find the optimum uh, of frequency of our pulses, uh, for example. Uh, it is about the boiler optimization also. Uh, maybe uh, opponent can uh, propose a topic. Yeah, I'd like... I'd like just to say uh, an additional question to the reporter. Did you try uh, with, with diaphragm and diaphragm less boilers? Uh, can you repeat your question? I didn't get it. Uh, because there are two types of boilers that we can think about. Is with ah, diaphragm about or diaphragm different less? Materials. Different no. materials? No. With no. diaphragms, because the pop-up sound is most pronounced on boilers with a diaphragm. Have you tried uh, something like this? Pop-up sound uh, uh, is here due to the boiler expansion only, uh, because uh, we have some cans. And uh, this uh, sound uh, didn't affect uh, uh, the, uh, um, our jet. Uh, and we check this, uh, because uh, by the sound, we can only measure uh, the jerk period 
because uh, we have the same uh, uh, source of this uh, sound as uh, the same uh, reason. Uh, and we check this uh, mm -hmm. experimentally yeah, yeah. and theoretically. But uh, we uh, have a boiler, uh, my can, uh, a simple can uh, from uh, some meat. Uh, some uh, and uh, we uh, did uh, in this boiler. Uh, okay. Maybe I can find this, but <laughs> okay. it is sometimes. I think here. it's not necessary. Uh, oh, okay. Another problem. Uh, I want to discuss actually the uh, shape of the nozzle at the end when the water income and outflow the nozzle. Did uh, you optimize this uh, pyramid, such a perimeter? Uh, no, uh, but I can say you uh, theoretically uh, what uh, we can uh, uh, predict. Uh, can so, show uh, we this. have different pipe diameter and uh, the role of the nozzle. What is the role of the nozzle? Uh, we have some uh, flow rate, uh, we have some velocity, and we need to optimize uh, the ratio. Uh, we need to optimize multiplying velocity and mass flow rate. Uh, so we can uh, increase uh, the velocity uh, of outflow, the directed outflow, uh, by a nozzle. Uh, and these nozzles are investigated before us uh, in, the, in many papers. And it is not okay. about uh, the boiler, but uh, we can, we can uh, create a nozzle, yes. From this point, we can add team members to the discussion. I start general discussion now. Okay. Please, uh, reviewer, take over this. If teams have some questions, yeah, here you are, Brazil. Um, while no no one raised hand, I would like to question your how was the how did you define your efficiency? Because you calculated, oh. however, you didn't mention uh, yes. where this calculation came from. Yes, uh, it is good question, uh, and we missed uh, it uh, in uh, the previous uh, discussion. I'm sorry. So uh, we have uh, initial uh, power of candle. Uh, we estimate this power. Uh, it is uh, about 32 uh, watts. Uh, and also uh, we uh, estimate uh, a way uh, that our boat uh, can uh, drive, can sail. Uh, and so we have a force, we have a way, or we can uh, well, multiply these uh, numbers. Uh, we get uh, a job uh, of our boat uh, and uh, we uh, can uh, calculate the efficiency uh, by uh, the simple driving. Okay. So, so you. Question sorry. From... You talk about the, your efficiency that's very low, but I'm wondering that's uh, reproducibility efficiency because you not put your your uncertainties there. So I don't know okay. if it's just for one case or or every time you you turn on your boat is the same efficiency? Uh, yes, we have a very, very small efficiency like in papers. Uh, it is a problem of uh, about, uh, uh, about uh, many dissipation parameters and we also can calculate this number and uh, we, we can calculate now. Uh, I, think and, she, uh, I think she asks this. about, I think she asks about uncertainties and errors. You did not include it in your calculation. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's uh, uh, a root uh, calculation error, uh, but uh, we can uh, so we, we can ch check uh, the error of this. Uh, but uh, it is about uh, one uh, pair. Uh, one in uh, 10 or the minus four. Okay. okay. And, uh, about, one question about from the la last number. Uh, okay, uh, I have a question. Uh, in your experimental setup, you showed that uh, your boiler were uh, in some way uh, inclined uh, and the candle also was very inclined. Uh, uh, how does it affect the efficiency? Maybe it is... It is, uh, it is uh, only empirical investigation for this. Uh, so, uh, uh, yes, we have inclination uh, because uh, of what, uh, because it is uh, some engineering uh, effect uh, from our experiments, from our experience, uh, from experiments, and uh, also uh, in the final, uh, we use uh, the foil uh, because of uh, we uh, try to uh, uh, focus all of the heat flux 
in our uh, in our boiler. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, we, we try to, to uh, direct our heat flux, yes, uh, but it is only empirically, on, only uh, empirical investigation. Okay, yes. okay, and point from Tim Brazel, maybe? Um, yeah, I'd like to ask about, I mean, you mentioned the existence of a terminal velocity, let's say a maximum velocity. I was curious about what the main factor contributing to this exactly is, because I think it got a little bit lost in the middle of, the, of your parameters. The, the, there's the drag from the air and of the water and also the inefficiencies of the engine. Could you comment on that? Uh, can you repeat your question? I didn't get On the, the existence story. of the terminal velocity, the maximum velocity, what's the main contribution to, to, to the ah, fact that my, the does not continue to accelerate? My main uh, error, uh, not error, but uh, main dissipating parameter, yeah? Uh, yes. It, uh, for the final boat, uh, it is also uh, maximum velocity determined by uh, medium drag force. And uh, this drag force, so we can calculate, uh, and uh, th this is uh, our results. Uh, also, we can uh, describe it by Reynolds uh, dependence uh, of uh, drag efficient. I need to uh, try. Do you think maybe you can show the, the because you calculate, yes, you, yes, you, make, yeah. you make predictions for your, for your maximum velocity multiple times. I was just wondering where uh, can you show the. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we have our model. Uh, and uh, we can uh, uh, determine the moment when our jet, uh, when our uh, boat uh, reaches a constant velocity like this, uh, we, when uh, we can approximate uh, uh, 10 number of points uh, in our criterion. Uh, by a linear fit, uh, we uh, square uh, error, uh, square root error, uh, with uh, number, I didn't, I, I missed this number from okay. calculations. But uh, and I, I, and you, some... you're confident, and you're confident that the Reynolds number does not increase, and you can continue to use this linear dependency of direct force with velocity. Uh, yes, uh, we cannot. But our boat uh, uh, for float uh, sails uh, with uh, uh, velocities, uh, <laughs> very small velocities, with uh, the very close Reynolds numbers. But we can estimate this by Blasius law, for example. Thank profile. you. I'm afraid we have to stop the discussion at this point, uh, whatever other question you may have. And now, uh, just run out of time, but now as a reporter, you can conclude this discussion in your concluding remarks. Yes, uh, so uh, I'm uh, very happy uh, for after our discussion. I think it is uh, one of the greatest discussion uh, for me. Uh, and uh, we have many moments uh, uh, what can uh, I improve uh, about uh, heat flux problem, uh, about optimization of this, uh, about uh, uh, a drag force, uh, and uh, uh, thank you for this, uh, for my opponent and my reviewer. Uh, and uh, I also uh, need to say to you uh, that uh, we try to improve our engine, uh, try to uh, to uh, not neglect, but uh, uh, do as a better in engine with a valves uh, and also turbines. But uh, uh, we uh, cannot uh, describe all of the work in our uh, report. Uh, but we try uh, to uh, use uh, one directional valves in our setup to uh, use all of the impulses. Uh, for uh, until right the boat. Thank you. I'm glad to, Thank uh, to answer. Thank you. Yes. Now we go to jury's question, and Mitro was first, very first, far away. Mitro, you can ask your question. Oh, yeah. but didn't hear okay. You. So I have the only question: What makes the boat stop? Uh, what makes the boat stop? Uh, in our case, uh, we. Uh, find only one way to uh, boat stop. Uh, it is the final of uh, mass flow rate of our candle. It is about three hours, three, four hours. Then, then maybe a follow up uh, is, could you explain once again how the air is flowing inside? Because I still don't understand the very basic beginning, how it moves. Uh, how moves the flow? Yes, how how the air and the water is moving there? No, no, uh, not not the. 
in, in the engine, how exactly how exactly the candle is is making it move? Maybe to the very beginning. Where ah, you okay, show okay, the okay. Uh, the first uh, t uh, t t yeah, time like it this is one, but slower. Yes, it is only due to heating by the candle. We can use uh, another uh, heating uh, device like a dryer. And, yeah, uh, okay, but heating, okay, so what exactly happens? How does it, is there an air bubble going down and pushing it? Uh, yes, yes, uh, uh, not a uh, bubble, but pressure, a pressure bubble. And uh, some bubbles can condense. And uh, in, um, I forgot a video, but, okay. Why does it break uh, symmetry for two tubes? Can you? Like, why, why with two tubes, it doesn't just, why does the board, that doesn't just go? backward and forward periodically why does it go uh, forward all the time? okay uh, I think I got a question uh, so uh, the number of tubes is uh, independent uh, for our effect uh, because we can use uh, only one tube for example uh, and uh, after this uh, we have some uh, directed flow from our tube this flow uh, accelerate our boat uh, by uh, uh, reaction jet, submerged jet. Uh, and uh, after this, in our engine, we have a low pressure zone, low pressure area. Uh, it uh, means that we have a backflow after this jet. But this flow uh, approach uh, uh, to our engine uh, from all sides, from all sides. And we have a less momentum uh, change. We have non-directional flow and we have a uh, non-directional uh, pulse, uh, momentum, non-directional momentum. And we have difference in the momentums in one direction to another. And this is a rigid effect. We have uh, a, about five hertz uh, uh, of, uh, five hertz frequency of oscillations, of such oscillations. I hope it may helps. I, may I add something? Do you want to hear the answer from the opponent? Yes, please. Uh, and, this uh, short. I, I agree with he, him. However, uh, maybe another way to simplify this is when you when the boat expelled water, it 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 never touched the, that water again. However, when it um, when the our water enters the the pipe. He exchanged momentum again when the water is hitting the inside wall of the pipe. So the, the transfer of this balancing momentum is, is kind of balanced. It's similar to the Feynman, Feynman uh, sprinkler, if you are familiar with that. I hope Thank it's you. clear. Let's really move on. We have all jury members wanting to ask their question, Umberto, now it's your turn. So, yeah, um, I want to ask first to the reporter and then to the opponent. Um, so, what is the main um, error that you get when you, when you try to predict the maximal velocity, what, com like for comparing theory to experiment? What do you think is the main error? Is it like a theoretical error or is it like a measurement error? Uh, in our case, I think uh, in, in measurements, it is uh, only measurements error, but uh, in the... Uh... I mean, the gap, well, because I, you can see that the, the trend is like, seems to go like, I mean, they go very close value to one another, but it seems like... I can describe your algorithm there. about uh, finding this maximum velocity. Uh, we uh, uh, have a point, uh, and uh, when our points uh, have a linear fit of if... Uh, the square root uh, error. Yeah, 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 sure, 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 sure. Okay, okay. What I'm but, saying but, is but what is an error in the between? I think uh, initial between. initial experimental uh, data uh, like coefficients because uh, we measure many coefficients uh, with many errors and we uh, take into account this uh, to calculation our theory and we have uh, bars uh, for our theory. Okay. And Thank it you. is experimental uh, constants. Okay, I just wanted to also yeah. to ask very quickly opponent. to the opponent if, if he agrees or if he disagrees. I didn't get your, your main question. My main question was simply if the disagreement between the theory and the experiment 
is mainly due to measurement errors or to a theoretical error? Oh, okay. I, I believe it's ma mainly because of experiment error, experimental error. Okay, thank you. Okay, now Sebastian, you can ask your question. Yeah, it's actually it's just a curiosity, very quick. I, I, I have probably already decided my, my grades. Uh, what I wanted to ask two reporter, what is this PID technique? Because I was curious uh, to see it. Okay, why, uh, why did you Okay. So that uh, there, there is a laser, but which is heating up. But yeah, did I miss uh, And right? also, we have uh, some uh, markers in the our fluid. Uh, you can. Okay. There is some is, dye in the fluid. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, I, I can uh, open to your video uh, very, very fast. Uh, okay, no, no, okay, I mean, okay. the, present, the presentation very is enough. Fast. I don't, I don't want. Yes. Uh, the presentation okay, is okay. enough. But okay. uh, is there, is there the, the heater here is the candle, right? Yes. Uh, and we. Uh, so this, uh, is, this, this is just the, this is just the terminal part. OK, so there is some dye. So this way you see the, the flow going out. Yes, yes, yes. And, and how do can... you see how do you see it going back in? Oh, uh, like this. Uh, and after that, we, uh, uh, how we create pulsating heat pipe, yeah? We just... Yeah, yeah. Uh, or what is the use of the laser here, do you understand? Ah, uh, the laser is uh, in uh, uh, a plane of uh, the slide. Uh, uh, if you but try what, what to... Is, what, is the laser, what is the laser doing? Is it heating up stuff or it is just... Used no, for... not heating, it is just light. Uh -huh. It is just used for visualization. Yes, yes, yes. And we can measure velocities field. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, that's good. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Federico, now is your question. Uh, okay, uh, just a brief question to the reporter. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that you mentioned that your Reynolds regime was about 1,000, I believe. Uh, uh, in, the, in the tubes. Uh, uh, okay. we, uh, it is uh, more or less than, than 1,000. And we can uh, use uh, this sh sh shear stress uh, evaluation. Uh, if uh, we uh, change the Reynolds uh, regime, uh, we need to uh, change the, uh, our shear stress equations. Uh, and uh, we can check this, but uh, we didn't it because we work in these Reynolds flow numbers. OK. Um what do you think what would happen if you increase or scale the entire boat uh, in order to change that regime? Because I think that it's very close to a um, um, critical like non-laminar regime, right? Not non-laminar, turbulent. Yeah, some some uh, some, some critical regime. Yeah. And and in, in using the PIV experiment, did you in an, in, a, in one experiment did you notice any turbulence in an, in any case? Uh, it is not turbulence. Uh, so uh, uh, in the firstly, uh, it is errors uh, of uh, velocity field because we have uh, errors about five millimeters uh, per second uh, uh, from PIV technique. Uh, and uh, firstly, uh, it is uh, for uh, fi finding uh, only. Uh, average coefficient, uh, not, not uh, the full velocity. But uh, in this case, we have some vortexes, but uh, it is vortexes, uh, not uh, uh, the high Reynolds numbers. It is uh, vortexes like uh, uh, Kerman's uh, vortex, uh, you know, maybe. Uh, and these vortexes uh, we can uh, calculate uh, by many methods, uh, and not uh, empirical, uh, analytical also, uh, and computational. It is not uh, turbulence that we can uh, not uh, to calculate. Uh, I can get you, you methods. It is not, not turbulence regime for me. Okay, okay. And what do you think will happen if you build uh, a Godzilla version of the pop pop boat? Uh, can it you increase the efficiency or decrease the efficiency? Uh, uh, what, what, what increases degrees? Uh, can you repeat? Uh, if you construct, if you build a, a Godzilla version, I mean a very big uh, pop up boat, it will increase the efficiency or decrease? Uh, because uh, in this case, the, uh, I think decrease. Uh, in, in my calculation, uh, decrease. Uh, but, but if uh, we also uh, uh, <clears throat> increase uh, the power of heating, uh, maybe it's, uh, it is also decreased, but maybe less. Okay, uh, it is my answer. I, I think it decreased. Okay. May I add something? Thank you. 
Do you want to hear your opponent? Yes, very quickly. Uh, uh -huh. I would just like to add it, it would mainly decrease because of the increasing of the drag force. Yes, I agree. Thank you, I'm forgotten. And uh, now, Sonia, please, please, your turn. Uh, yes, okay. Um, first of all, I cannot remember to the reporter. Did you uh, mention something about the length of the, of the pipes? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. We... Uh, okay, I would be, I, I say, uh, let's say two things together, and then maybe as a, uh, I, uh, also the, the, the reviewer said something about this. I would be curious about if you have anything on the length of the pipes, any dependence. And then uh, you mentioned also that you studied the, the temperature of the medium. And I remember the, the yes, uh, viewer said something about this, uh, but then it was not discussed. So I would be curious if also the others, also the opponent, uh, want to add after you something about this. If you can show us uh, these studies and then they can comment. Uh, okay, uh, I'm first, yes. Uh, one second, uh, I try to... Uh, ah, okay, it was another presentation. I thought no, it not was another, not You shouldn't <laughs> close, you should have opened them both. <laughs> <laughs> not, 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 not another, but uh, this is, but uh, it, it is uh, too high. I saw it was in the list, uh, this is why. Yes, uh, type okay. of, of uh, oh, not, not type of flu. Yes, uh, temperature, temperature. 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 Yes. Because, uh, of course, the process inside the pipes yes. uh, 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 will okay. change, no? Okay. Uh, not, not all of the process in pipes, uh, but uh, uh, yes, yeah, so we have temperature, temperature, uh, temperature dependence uh, for viscosity, uh, and we can measure this viscosity uh, from the temperature, uh, from uh, and it corresponds with energy activation uh, theory, uh, and also we uh, have temperature dependence uh, of uh, surface tension coefficient, and we measure it is also, and we have uh, a uh, effect and effect, different effects uh, that can move. Our boat. It is difference uh, of uh, uh, tension coefficients uh, from the left side and the right side of boat. Because we at left side we have a high temperature and uh, uh, at the right side we have uh, a cold temperature. Mm -hmm. And uh, the difference between uh, these two uh, uh, surface tension uh, surface tension forces uh, creates a different uh, way to uh, accelerate our boat. Okay, I don't know if Thank there you. is a comment uh, for, from the reviewer who, who uh, talked about this at the very beginning, but then uh, didn't insist on this uh, question. The reviewer uh, doesn't show any enthusiasm. Do, do you want no. to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if there is any comment, otherwise it's okay for me. Uh, okay, uh, the, the, okay uh, about the temperature influence, indeed it influences uh, uh, the, the, uh, the process of the heating because if we do not need to uh, heat the water to the high temperature to, to, to such a big temperature and because of this effect the uh, period of the pops will be lower and because of this we expect uh, uh, non-monotonical uh, dependence and it, it had to be investigated in the report in our opinion. Uh, can I add please uh, because I have a, a, a big additional uh, I missed it uh, uh, because uh, in my uh, water and vapor energy balance, uh, I have only heating uh, of candle. But in this case, I need to, uh, to uh, stay uh, to wait before equilibrium of full system uh, and uh, or uh, what uh, to these equations uh, uh, heat transfer with water to walls and vapor to walls. Thank you. Uh, let's proceed to the last question from. Uh, Amori, we really ran out of time and we really want to end today. Amori, please, your question. All right, for just for the reporters, so uh, you say that your, effic your efficiency is like 10 to the power, power minus five, but yes. there are many parts of the losses. You have the thermal cycle, you have thermal losses, you have the viscosity in the tubes, you have the uh, flow in, flow out balance. What is the main cause of the efficiency loss? What is the main factor of the all of those factor. I've mentioned? The main factor is heat transfer uh, efficiency, and uh, we discuss about this. Yes, uh, I think uh, it is uh, the main factor. But by what order of magnitude is it the main factor? A magnitude of this main factor, or and if you remove all the other factors, do you think you have roughly the same efficiency concretely? Yes, no. Uh, uh, all of another. Uh, I think uh, close to. All right. Close thank to. you. 
Thank you. I desperately need to close the uh, jury questions part. And jury now decides their grades and sends them directly to Nikolai, who is our calculating person today. Meanwhile, please, please, Ukrainian team, I believe you didn't put your name of your speaker in the chat. Neither, I'm not pretty sure, but I believe neither the reporter puts their name in the chat. We need them for the recording. IPT Connect doesn't work without names. They don't want anonymous reporters, anonymous opponents, not opponents, reviewers, as you got it. Nikolai, please notify us when you have all marks from all jurors. It's going to be the last grades of IPT 2021. Because they all need to be taken into account, definitely. Yep, so the last uh, marks from Amari Baral was received. So thank you, thank you, jury. Excellent, excellent. So you've done your main job of grading. Now you need to do your main job of commenting. And we'll start from our president. Sebastian, please tell us what you think about the last round. I will, I will be very quick because we're really running out of time. Uh, I will just, so I, I really enjoyed the, the, the presentation of the reporter. I think this is one of very nicely completely solved problems, you investigated a lot of parameters, you did a lot of work, I, and uh, and thanks God you didn't show all of it, but you just selected some good part of it, and then you, you um, and then you had some backup slides. The only thing that maybe I didn't like it so much was the discussion, uh, because you were, so when, whenever you were getting questions, you were picking up your PowerPoint, trying, trying to go to the slides where you had already done this work, and uh, even if the question was not exact, you were even maybe trying to change the question so that you had something to show. And yeah, I felt this kind of borderline, but uh, yeah, overall the, the, the presentation, I think was, was really nice and, uh, and well solved. Thank you, it's very kind. Any other comments from jurors? Uh, uh -huh, I see Dmitro, your comment. Is it yes, a comment? All, I want to, yes, this yes. is a comment. I want to thank everybody for the discussion and for the presentation, uh, it's uh, apparently it's an excellent solution. And I was thinking, should I put the maximum mark or not the maximum? And I can put the maximum mark only because in the end, I don't really understand after, after looking at the solution, I don't exactly understand how this basic mechanism is working. Even after questions, I'm still puzzled how exactly this board is moving forward. So apparently everybody understands it but me. So I think there is, if I don't understand it, there must be some kind of little flow in the presentation. Like even your grandmother should understand <laughs> at least the idea of how the board is moving. This, this is probably the only point where you could improve. Otherwise, it's an excellent solution. Great. Thank you very much, Mitro. Sonia, tell us what you think. Uh, yes, OK. It's just a general comment. First of all, I would like to congratulate you to, to the three teams. Uh, in a different way, they did very well today. And uh, of course, they are on the top three <laughs> of the uh, ranking. Uh, now, this time I disagree with Sebastian <laughs> in the sense that uh, <laughs> and I wanted to point out this on the report. Uh, at least, okay, in my, in my environment, we always have uh, the backup uh, slides. And when we get, uh, because we know where the question could go, so we have already a slide, show and to comment on the, on the slide. And this is what, <laughs> what I appreciated a lot. Now, I don't know, but uh, at least I'm experiencing uh, different things. And this is uh, nice that we are coming from different uh, uh, experiences just for this. 
<laughs> so for the rest, okay, I'm really happy to have been here, to have, uh, be part of the juror. And I really wish all the participants, uh, whatever is the results, to continue in this uh, adventure of physics. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Amori, please, your comment. Yeah, I just wanted to comment because uh, contrary to, I guess, the previous tutorials, I actually felt that this was overall one maybe of the less interesting fights uh, of this week and final. Uh, the subject, to my opinion, was not, I mean, as some questions from the jury showed, some really basic aspects of the problem were not really explained properly. Some, I think the presentation was quite equation heavy in some areas, also less, uh, I mean, less important than the last comment I made uh, two days ago, I think. But still, it was a bit messy. I did not like the fact that the re reporter uh, cut the opponent and the reviewer and the jury members several times. Uh, it was not really nice to follow compared to the two other uh, fights we had today, I think. Oh. Thank you, Amory. And Federico, you also have your comments, please, far away. Uh, well, I uh, also, I, 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 I learned a lot uh, listening to the reporter's presentation. And I believe that this problem was um, thermodynamical and a fluid problem, and they uh, use both uh, parts of physics. They actually use Van der Waals equation and all. But I want to point out the reviewer, because I have the opportunity to see the reviewer doing the same problem in a previous um, fight, did a lot of work in parameterizing the boiler and improving the efficiency of the boiler. But I think that they did not have the opportunity here to bring that up uh, into the discussion. I don't know if because of the reporter or the opposition or they themselves, but I will. I gave every every team like less race than in the previous uh, rounds, but I think it's because of this because I found like I don't know it got stuck in in the in a detail that could be improved. Um, in another way. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's all comments from jurors. And now we can close the final, at least for this competitional part of the final. And I hand over to Mateus, to Mateus Curly Hat and Mateus Ceiling. All right. Hello, Mateus. Hello, Anastasia. <laughs> How are you doing? Fine. Pretty good, pretty uh, good, thank you. Oh, nice. Uh, well, thank you all for this uh, amazing physics fights. Now, the the ceremony, the final ceremony will happen uh, in half an hour. So I encourage you all to, to stay here with us in the Zoom call. Until then, we're gonna, well, we're gonna present the final results for all teams in the tournament and also the so awaited uh, results for the final. Uh, well, let's see if we have some some nice comments here on the on the chat. Well, people are really excited. Lots. Well, for me, it's actually I, I don't know exactly uh, where's the team. Where are the people cheering for Ukraine? Uh, where 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 is where is the the people from from Ukraine here cheering? For their uh, for their team, but I do see again lots of uh, lots of Brazilian people and lots of Russian people. I think cheering for Russia, especially in this last uh, in this last presentations. So there's lots of people here uh, saying that Felipe Maz is the best, the, the Brazilian reporter. Oh, that's it. Thank you, Ricardo Gitti, saying I'm the best. Thank you, Ricardo. A hug for you. He was with us in the Brazilian team in 2018 and 2017 as well. Uh, lots of history going on here in the chat. Uh, yeah, there's lots, lots of cool things. Well, I think I would like to remind you all uh, that first we need. Uh, 
we need jurors to to take part in the IPT. So wherever you are from, like no matter which university you're in, either uh, in any of the uh, in any of the countries in the final, or you know the the other teams that participate in the IPT, please call in uh, another professors that you think might be interested in the IPT because they they will be very welcome to judge all teams. Uh, and yes, we're we're needing uh, we're needing jurors. So please contact us at exacom at uh, iptnet.info. I'd also like to remind you all once again, I can even share my screen here to, to show uh, that you can go to iptnet.info. I'm sorry I have so many tabs going on here. It's just usual for me. I, you can suggest your problem up until the 11th of July. I'm not sure if you understood this correctly, but you have one week to submit the problems you want to see for next year's IPT. So you let me let me show again. You go here in iptnet.info, problems, suggest your problem, and then you can when you'd like. So here's your email, your name, and the idea for the problem you want to see solved here in the IPT. Other cool things I encourage all participants to do is to send their problems to exacom at iptnet.info too. Uh, so we can make our IPT community on Zenodo grow even more. Here we have plenty of solutions from the previous years, from 2000, since 2017, I think. Uh, and it's gonna be great to see your pretty nice presentations here so you can inspire even more participants, even more students to uh, take part in this amazing community that we are building. Uh, let me see if I have any other, well, uh, let me see if I have any updates from now. I think it's fine. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna keep waiting here until uh, two thirty. On two at two thirty, we're gonna start announcing the entire team. Oh, and we have a we have a nice question here in the chat. Where will the next IPT be? Uh, we are unsure of that still uh, because we do not yet know for sure uh, if it will be an in person IPT or not. Uh, it depends on of course the situation of the pandemic all around the world because we want to uh, we want all the teams to get a chance at participating in the IPT so we need to think about that along with the uh with with all the country representatives uh so that, that will be surely one of our main conversations throughout this year uh to try to decide where would the next IPT be if it can be organized uh and and you know the the dates and locations. That's that's still information to come. But uh, I encourage you also to send again lots of problems for us because uh, usually the IPT problems they are sent out to the public. They're chosen by our secretary uh, Vladimir and other members that constitute a small uh, committee to choose these problems. And usually they're sent out to the public uh, in August or September. I believe uh, so. We, as soon as you have them in hand, you can already start working on them, regardless of knowing or not where will the next IPT be. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that now everyone has a nice experience, and even though, even if we change to a, an online format, I think people will be happy to uh, right, attend well, as well. Let, let uh, me correct you a little oh. bit about the problems. So you say they are selected by a small committee. No, they are pre-selected by a small committee. And that's yes, the reason yes. voting. So everybody who participates in the IPT, every player can vote for a problem. And I see that many countries and many teams just avoid that, just are lazy, don't want to vote. Look, people, you are selecting problems for yourselves. You have a chance yeah. to vote for the problem you are going to solve. You are going to have a chance to vote for the problem uh, where you have an area of expertise, maybe where your university is very good, where you have some equipment. So take this chance because it's also, it's a little bit of a lobbying for a problem for yourself for the next year. Yes, exactly, exactly, yeah. May, may I comment on that then uh, and explain the, the process for 
problem choosing in the IPT. When I said like there's a small committee that chooses viruses of problems, I meant we have a long list of problems that we've collected throughout this uh, almost 15 years of existence of the, of the IPT. And we have collected so many problems and we, we still connect new problems. Uh, usually how this goes is we choose uh, some, of these some of these problems in this long list to, uh, to put out to vote, you know, for, for the entire community to vote. And then when I say the entire community is whoever is interested in the IPT can vote. Uh, so some rules for the, for the voting uh, are also sent out for the teams, but basically anyone who's interested in the IPT can participate. So even if you're a new student at a new university uh, and you want to participate in the IPT community, you can participate in this voting. So you vote on those problems, on the problems you like the most. Uh, and then there's a compilation of this entire list uh, by each country representative. So everyone, for instance, in Brazil that participated on the voting, uh, the country representative needs to, uh, needs to account for all these votes and promote uh, a list and define a way to, uh, to send out a list of the problems that Brazil, for instance, wants to uh, push forward and to actually be the problems voted by Team Brazil. Uh, and then uh, accounting for all, all countries around the world uh, and all the votes from all the people in the community, then we build the final, uh, the final list with 17 problems. Uh, in which basically the, the, the vote, the, the problems that are most voted uh, throughout all throughout all teams, throughout all countries, uh, those problems will show up in the, the final list. So basically this is the process and this is how it goes. Uh, but again, 17 problems is a really hard thing to, to consider because you've seen here today so many great solutions from Team Brazil and the branching line problem uh, and the metallic forest by Ukraine and the Russian team solving the pop-up away problem, you see how many different aspects of a problem you can, you can solve. So uh, 17 problems is a lot. Uh, so even though it's a lot, you can see how many great solutions come out of there. And if you hit, didn't have the opportunity to present your problem here uh, during the competition, we gave you the opportunity to participate on the conference that happened yesterday and it was really fun. Uh, but we also give the opportunity for you to show the entire work you have developed on some of these problems uh, in, uh, by, by providing you the Zenodo uh, community where you can always share your, your solutions there. Uh, and you know, it's, a public, it's public to, to all users and to, to all people that are interested in the IPT too. So it's really nice to see uh, how much effort we're building with this international community uh, that the, I, the IPT has become. Um, yeah, Matheus, may I also say something? Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so I would like uh, to make a very small correction. I am Vladimir Vanovsky, DC secretary and responsible for the problem selection. And um, I would say that, um, uh, yeah, we are accepting uh, the problems for uh, the next IPT till uh, July 11th, as Mateos has uh, said, but uh, we are not closing the form after that. So if uh, you will come uh, during the year with some good idea of a problem, you're free uh, to fill in this form and to propose this problem at uh, every other moment. And probably it won't go to this IPT that will be held probably in April. We don't know where we'll, we uh, hold the next IPT. But it surely will enter our long list uh, from which we will uh, select uh, the problem in uh, this uh, multi-stage process uh, uh, shortly described by Mateos. So yeah, your problems are really welcome. And I think... Uh, the quality of this year problem list is rather high because I know that all the participants like it them much and I see very interesting solutions of them. So if you want uh, us to keep uh, the same level, so send us your ideas and uh, we will be very grateful and very happy about that. Thank you. Yes, yes, it's pretty interesting to see that. For instance, this year we were aware that the pandemic was going on, so uh, Basically, we sent out to vote the, the problems that we thought that most mostly could be uh, done uh, with home setup. So this is why you see lots of uh, 
lots of problems that are that deal with uh, rather, I wouldn't say so simple uh, experimental apparatus, but uh, but that you can build at home. So nothing too too fancy. So, but I have a question for you, Vladimir. Since uh, Volva, so since you're here uh, for a long time in the IPT, so what was the craziest problem that you ever saw on an IPT? Oh, that's a very difficult question. There are so many <laughs> of such problems that I cannot even select the one. The nail, the nail uh, gun, guys, come on. Oh, uh, what's Shiba? The nail gun, by far. Ah, nail gun, it's I, not... I almost it, got killed by that one. Oh, yeah, it wasn't yes, uh, yes. my problem, uh, because I didn't... Uh, uh, you ask it which problem I have uh, solved by myself or I have seen. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, well, uh, it can, well, it could be that you that was selected to participate in the IPT, uh, or okay. yeah, or that you yeah, have the nail, uh, the nail gun was a very dangerous problem. We have uh, we <laughs> had uh, in the beginning of the IPT uh, many dangerous problems with different explosions or uh, such strange problems. For example, which is the minimal mass of uh, a neutron star? I don't know something like this some very theoretical problem that couldn't be approached uh, experimentally. And uh, now we evolved a little bit to uh, more well put problems uh, that can be solved with uh, not very dangerous equipment, but sometimes we uh, are still doing something crazy and selecting this or that problem. And we say, but let's have one problem of this uh, very crazy <laughs> yeah. uh, type. Uh, and uh, if the participants uh, won't like uh, it or they will consider it very dangerous, they, they can just okay, skip this problem. So yeah, uh, yeah, stay tuned and you will see a lot of uh, crazy problems in the future. Yeah, yeah. Actually, problem number one, uh, nuclear mousetraps was something that, at least in... The Brazilian community, we were uh, really sad, but not, not not sad, but we were we were always like thinking, how are we going to perform these experiments? Uh, because you know, imagine like having so many mouse traps and having so many. Uh, what would you actually consider while doing those experiments? So that's. Uh, but we saw it this year, and we saw some interesting uh, analytical solutions, and with simulations too, that provided us a good uh, a good information about this problem. Uh, I could here uh, probably comment, uh, Matthias, that uh, oh. uh, we have discussed also a lot uh, about uh, this exactly problem and whether it's uh, possible to make uh, a decent experiment on this. And we uh, thought that it would be a nice exercise for students to decompose such a huge problem uh, that used uh, thousands of mouse traps and uh, to make some uh, small scale experiments with uh, one or two mouse traps. Because you can uh, use one mouse trap and you will have all uh, uh, first order interaction. You will have uh, uh, how ball interacts with mouse trap, what, is, what are the probabilities, what are the velocity distribution. So you can make a good experiment even with one mouse trap. If you want to simulate uh, second order interactions, then you can have uh, uh, two mouse traps and uh, put them at uh, any positions, uh, at uh, any distances between them, and simulate how the balls collide and how these mouse traps interact. So we decided that it would be a good exercise for participants to, for going from very big scale experiments which they couldn't afford uh, to small scale when, uh, but possible experiments. But uh, okay, uh, because of this uh, uh, pandemic, as you know. Many of the participants just um, uh, didn't make uh, a, a decent experiment on this problem and just used some very analytical model. That was a little bit sad, but I hope uh, there are still some hidden solutions that we will see in the future in the solution database that you have advertised, for example. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so if you have performed any, uh, any experimental approximations to nuclear mouse traps. This is one more reason for you to send us your solution to the Zenodo platform. Uh, so it's available for everyone. Uh, and yes, yeah, so I, I was gonna comment now that S Sebastian told us about the nail gun problem in 2017. That was indeed a really dangerous problem uh, because 
what we had to do uh, to solve that problem was basically build. Uh, I, I can let me let me actually find the problem here. It was so you can understand how crazy it was. Uh, let me just go back to. Let's see if we have the 2018 problem list. Oh, 2017 actually. Uh, I could see 2017 problems. Okay. Okay, here. So this list of problems was a really interesting one because, uh, for instance, we had at some point to build some airplanes to 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 be flown just using our hands, which was a which which we called like handy glider. And you can see how interesting this problem is uh, because you had to find your problems. You had to actually build some of these airplanes uh, and investigate them experimentally and explain you know basically everything that's going on there, which was really interesting. Uh, we had this too many magnets problem, which is unfortunately unavailable here. But uh, for instance, we had to build a Lego tower as well. So build uh, a tower. What's the highest uh, heights you can achieve just using Lego bricks, uh, which involved a lot of uh, a lot of mechanical properties of these of these interesting uh, gummies. Uh, oh. I subscribe to something I don't even know what it is, but so I, let me unsubscribe. So uh, for instance, this problem here, long shot, uh, it asked us basically to shoot an arrow vertically up. Uh, and you can see you ha we had to build the best Asian bow such that to be able, I mean, to take into account the effect of the wind and Coriolis force and make the best shot possible in order to minimize the deviation of the arrow from the target. So you can see how crazy this, this problem was to imagine us having to design a bow and actually can do and conduct the, the shots, you know, to, to actually evaluate these. Problem number five, popcorn, was really interesting to me. Uh, and it even gave me uh, a nickname of popcorn because I, I burned so many popcorns trying to make this experiment. But basically, you had to estimate the height at which a popcorn would uh, go up just by hearing the sound that it produced. Really interesting. Problem number seven, probably one of my my favorite problems so far. We had to construct basically uh, an aurora borealis, an experimental setup to simulate the aurora borealis in a laboratory. Uh, describe the using the the theory behind it, uh, and give some limits to the minimum possible size. Uh, and here it is, problem number eight. Nail guns are often used to drive nail into wood. Build your own nail gun using liquid nitrogen evaporation. What is the maximum thickness of the wood uh, board that can be pierced by a nail fired from such a pistol if it should consume no more than 50 millimeters of liquid nitrogen per shot? So now you imagine, uh, I remember that the MIPT team from Russia, actually, they I think it was them, they actually solved this problem. Uh, but they also wanted to... Uh, show how good their problem was uh, and actually give us uh, an, a live uh, demonstration of this problem. So now you imagine it was, I think it, it was the fight between, uh, I, I watched that fight. So it was Brazil, Russia, and, and another team, which I can't remember. I think it was it, Italy. I think it was Italy. That's why Sebastian recalls it. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, but the, they actually brought all the experimental apparatus inside a, a handbag and started like unpacking it and started actually building the setup, building a nail gun in front of us. And then as they were building it and filling it with liquid, liquid nitrogen and everything, uh, the guy was presenting. So one of the one of the people was presenting, but there was a lot of noise because they were filling up some, uh, uh, they were filling up a device with liquid nitrogen. So he was pumping and it was a it lot was of noise, Russian, but the guy was presenting was at the same team. time. It was a Russian team, I remember this. Yeah, yeah, it was we the Russian team. We were, not, we were not allowed to do to do this in our university, but then, but then in, uh, I remember the Russian team could, and yeah. And, uh, yeah, they did it, and they brought the apparatus to, to Sweden, and they were presenting uh, and doing that, and by the end, they actually performed the shot in the wood uh, 
And everybody was like, Jesus Christ, what's happening? You know? Yeah, no, uh, no, and I remember no, they were no, lifting the apparatus at some point. Yeah, there was a guy was holding a guy them. <laughs> and they, and we were like, oh my God, he's going to get shot. And then, but the, the guy, the, the, the people who were holding the setup at some point, they were trying, they were, they just like turned to, to this guy who, who had the, the wood. But they're like, all the jury members like had to step down and they were like, Jesus Christ, because they were scared that it might shot them. Uh, so it was really fun, guys. Uh, yeah, so uh, really, really fun fight. Uh, and well, after people, uh, the, the guy from Sweden actually said something like, uh, oh, and the, the, the Russian guy is the team leader for, <laughs> for Russia this year, I think. Uh, well, we could welcome him here, here too if he wants to talk about that experience, but it was really fun and I will never forget that. Uh, it was amazing. And, and actually, I think the, the Sweden, the Sweden uh, organizing committee actually said that uh, had they known that, those, that that setup could be turned into, uh, you know, a gun, uh, they wouldn't have been allowed to, to come or something like that. That's it. I think Sweden has some regulations to prevent, uh, you know, uh, those things to, to fly or something like that. It, it, was, it was really interesting. It was really, really interesting. Uh, yeah, it was... But in the end, everything turned out all right because you know the uh, the Russians made uh, great theoretical predictions, and they predicted that you know the nail gun would not uh, go through the wood and actually kill their other members. So it was <laughs> it was fun, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, actually, Mateus. Oh, actually, I'm yeah, yeah. All right, welcome. Uh, oh, yeah, he's no. there. He, oh, I, yeah, oh, I remember guys. you. I remember you. Yeah. Guy, I we, remember we, were playing, you. <laughs> we were playing with you with, this, with that fight, and my teammate was uh, uh, presenting this problem. Actually, I have a few photos from this, and uh, I, I really I really want to share. <laughs> share oh, you share can right share. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, right now. Uh, I'll, I need to, but it's, it's not my computer, but uh, I, I'll ask the permission. Uh, okay, so I, 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 and I'll... I'll share the two photos, one photo and one meme that we made after the read. And you, you and the Kadesh team Sweden uh, definitely got it. Yeah, well, let's see, let's see. I'm, I'm... Oh, I, I remember they even made a meme out of that after the, the tournament, it was really funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think we, yeah, we even have a picture together, I think, in the, one of those physics fights. Okay, uh, one moment. I'll... Yeah, oh, it's sure. You, you, oh, you, you know, Jesus. Can I see it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can see it. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that from the, uh, the fight. And uh, this is our, my colleague, uh, Alexei. Uh, and uh, I don't know. No, not this. A really brave. And oh. this one is. <laughs> <laughs> and this one, what, what, what we made up and uh, shared you, with you and the uh, Kitash team. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you. So many good memories. I remember that. Yeah, but, it, it, you know, it was the, really, really bright memory. Yeah, it really passed through the, actually it passed through the wood. I, don't, I didn't remember that. You know, so yeah, he was like this and <laughs> just exactly as it is in the picture right now. Uh, I, I, I strongly remember the pair of, uh, uh, of the juries and the pray, I, I, I even can hear the praise of them. They're praying to the Allah, to the to the God, to the even Odin. I don't know, <laughs> yeah. whoever. And it was like crazy. Yeah, they were a little scared. They were, the people were a little scared. Okay, so <laughs> great. Let, let's so that was that was a really, really good experience. Crazy problem that was solved at some point of the APT. There was a problem about a pillar of fire, basically a candle being heated, and then you drop a little water in the wax. And oh. you see an explosion, like a one, two meters of fire, uh, where little wax droplets uh, created by dropping this water drop into the wax, uh, they are catching on fire. So I have seen this, this problem being solved in practice in, in a dormitory kitchen. Uh, and people nearly burn the kitchen. And there are also lots of videos in the internet where people actually burn the kitchen. Oh, 
I have to say, as a PT responsible person, we don't take responsibilities for kitchens. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. A dormitory is on fire. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The IPT uh, executive committee does, yeah. is not responsible for any kind of damage you might do in your homes. Uh, so please, guys, do not put us into that. Just say you are a physicist trying to perform your own experience, but do not attach your name to the IPT <laughs> whenever yeah, something can, goes wrong. You can see, by the way, the photo of this problem on the screen. <laughs> it's a problem from IPT 2012. We with Dima are uh, old IPT guys, and it's uh, really a, a dormitory kitchen. And uh, uh, okay, a flame, uh, a candle uh, uh, burning in this kitchen, and after uh, okay, some water, it's uh, the scale of a flame that appears. It looks really dangerous. You can see, yeah, yeah. Okay, Mateus, how yeah. are we with the, with the timings? We, I think we are ready with the... Yeah, oh, if you're ready, uh, we, we still have three times. Yeah, three, three minutes. Let's see just if we have something. Uh, oh, well, we have a nice comment here from Bruce Yanni. Uh, he said he will be... Oh, so Bruce Yanni is the, the, uh, a YouTuber, a famous YouTuber, uh, which is really enthusiastic uh, by the IPT. A hug to Bruce Yanni, who is watching us now. Uh, he actually made a really nice video on the IPT to promote the tournaments and to actually bring lots of uh, new people to watch this final and the, the fights that were happening this week. And he actually make a really, made a really interesting uh, comment here. He said that he's interested in any information that presenters had on the solar retra retraction motor because he's been working on this piece for years uh, and he's trying to make some improvements on it. So uh, if you are watching this now and if you have solved problem, uh, I think it's number nine, solar retraction motor, uh, please get in touch. Uh, we're going to get in touch with Bruce Gianni, uh, So, Or you can just get in touch with him directly to talk about this because he's uh, working on this a lot. But this is, only shows how the IPT problems are uh, really dynamic and new uh, and exciting uh, to, to, to work on. Uh, I myself, I wish I, I would have never uh, had gone to do uh, anything else than just the IPT, you know, because after a moment, after you finish your undergrad, you have to choose something to study in your grad, uh, in your grad studies. Uh, and I had to choose just one thing. Uh, but I wish I could have stayed longer and uh, just explored all different problems possible uh, with you guys here in the IPT. Hopefully next year, we're probably gonna have a Canadian team to, to join you guys uh, here from McGill University. So let's see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, we've been, we've been promising this for a long while now. So maybe this year we'll have it. Uh, so let's see if, uh, if there's more comments. Uh, oh, uh, we have Alexei. He said that he think he's the journey member who gave the highest mark for that nail gun problem. Uh, but he was also the jury that was farther from the line of fire. So that's why he gave us, he gave the Russian team the highest grade there. <laughs> so he was out of danger. Uh, that's how he was able to do it. Nice. Thank you a lot. Thanks a lot, Alexei. Uh, and yeah, uh, well, let's see if we have any other cool comments here. Uh, Yeah, and this tendency from, uh, oh, the, so he also said that the, the grades changed accordingly to the distance from the line of fire. Uh, so Bruce Yanni uh, also said, sent his compliments to all those that presented. He, he thought that all solutions were pretty much impressive. Us too, Bruce, we also thought that the, the people who presented this year in the IPT were really prepared and really enthusiastic about their work. So I'm glad that people were able to focus on on these problems to you know make them happy and make them through the for last year and this year because uh, I'm sure it's a really hard uh, it was really hard for you all. Uh, yes. So oh, we have we have lots of comments here. 
Uh, oh, we have a, a nice comment for me here too. Uh, thank you, Natalia, thank you very much. Uh, so let's see. Uh, oh, we have a friend from the Federal University of ABC too. Uh, and as you sent us a hug, I know that Danilo also popped in here before too. Uh, Ricardo also participating here a lot. Uh, and yeah. Uh, so here there's a people advertising a podcast called Física Popular Brasileira, which is a really interesting podcast too. If you're Brazilian and you would like to know more about physics, uh, you can hear that podcast. It's a really good one, I promise you. Uh, okay. Well, uh, yeah, that's it then. I think uh, we can... I think we might, uh, we might, uh, we might, we might lead to to the announcements, right? Actually, no. I'm really tired, guys. So I'm just gonna end this Zoom meeting, uh, and we'll send the results by email. So bye. Just kidding. Not gonna do that. I know you're anxious to to see the results, uh, and I would probably get fired from the Exacon. So <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Uh, so let's see here. We'll have some comments. Everything is ready. Uh, yeah, so let's go. Yeah, we can proceed now. Uh, Sebastian, uh, if you'll lead no, the no, way, thank you very much for the attention. No, no, you can do this yourself. I think, I think it's your moment. Oh, I, I can keep going with the with the presentation. It's your moment, man. I think it's okay. Let me just download the slides then, the secret slides from the IPT, uh, and I'm gonna announce then the uh, the results for this year. Uh, I'm excited now. I didn't know. I, ju I just got this role, guys. So uh, I'm excited it's, about it's that. It's even now. better because you can go through this last without knowing what's next. So you can also be. Yes, I also don't know what's next. Uh, so let me screen share here with you guys. Ba -ba -ba, with everyone. So this is the International Physicist Tournament, as you all know. We're an organization. Faster, faster, faster. OK, OK, OK. Yes. We're in a rush. So. Welcome, everybody. This is the final ceremony of the International Physicist Tournament 2021 virtual edition. Uh, we're here to present now all the results or the rankings for all the teams. Uh, and we hope you have a nice time. So if you were a team member and you left to do something else and you're hearing us right now, please run to your computer because we're going to start. No matter how much you ask for us not to start, we're going to start right now. Okay. Uh, so let's see if I can change slides. Oh, definitely. As I said, we are starting. Okay, cool. Uh, I was not expecting for this slide. So let's see what comes up next. So I think we're going to start already with the announcements of the, of the teams uh, in order. So the 12th place for the International Physics Tournament is Pakistan with 107.45 points. So congratulations uh, for the team from Pakistan. Uh, it's uh, a really... Uh, recent addition to our list of participating countries. Uh, so I'm glad that you participated and then you'll continue with us uh, throughout the years. Uh, and let's move on in our ranking. Uh, next, we have the United States with 116.55 points. Congratulations to the US team. Thanks for participating this year as well. Uh, they've been on a, on a good uh, continuing and ascending participation uh, uh, in in the in the IPTs for the years last year they also reached the final so it's uh, really interesting to see that how much we're growing okay there in the United States as well uh, now 10th place is team Slovenia with 120.30 points congratulations team Slovenia uh, they've been also participating with us for some years uh, and we were really excited to have you uh, the IPT community there too now Ninth place is Germany. Germany with 126.93 points. Uh, congratulations, Team Germany. Uh, we, uh, we're thrilled to have you with as part of our community again. Uh, I think they, for a couple of years, they didn't participate, but now they're back, and I hope they can continue come, coming with us uh, every year. Uh, now, eighth place is Sweden with 129.84 points. Uh, Sweden is the country that hosted the IPT in 2017, uh, which was a really nice experience. It was there in Gothenburg. 
uh, at Chalmers University. Chalmers University, who also is represented by the Swedish team this year. So uh, yeah, thank you very much and congratulations for the eighth place. Uh, now, seventh place is United Kingdom with 131.08 points. Uh, congratulations to the UK team. UK uh, was a, is a country, uh, not a country, but uh, a team, is a team that, sorry, I, I see you're laughing there, Anastasia. Uh, so the, United, the UK team uh, is represented by Anastasia. They uh, hadn't been participating a lot throughout the, these last years uh, in the IPT competition, but uh, a member of the UK, uh, David Cullum, he was uh, our IPT president and he was really trying to push uh, a UK team to participate. And then Anastasia went along and she actually was able to uh, uh, make the IPT flame uh, happen again there in the UK. Uh, now, sixth place is Switzerland with 134.35 points. Uh, so congratulations from Team Switzerland from, uh, I think it's ETH Zurich. Uh, congratulations, guys. Uh, Switzerland was the country that hosted the IPT in 2019 uh, at EPFL. So thank you very much for being such a strong member in our community. And you can actually see uh, how close are we getting here uh, in terms of points, right? Because we saw here, there's only a three point difference between the seventh uh, and the sixth place. So uh, this year, the, the competition was really tight among the teams that were on the upper part of our rankings. Uh, now, fifth place is Colombia. Muchas gracias, Colombia. Yes, I'm so happy for you guys. You reached the, the fifth place this year, uh, Colombia, which is also becoming a really strong part of our community. Uh, they've reached even the semifinals uh, in 2019 uh, in Switzerland. That was pretty awesome to see. Uh, we're excited to see how good you're doing uh, throughout these last years. And we hope that the South American uh, community in general continues growing as well as uh, in the other continents. Uh, so for instance, we even hope to, to see other, uh, uh, some countries from, from Africa to participate in our tournaments. Uh, this year we didn't have Australia from, from the other continent. So uh, yeah, it's, it, it's nice that the IPT is spreading even more uh, at each year. So again, I point you to the fact that we only have like four points uh, between the fifth and the sixth place. Uh, now, the fourth place is France with 139.45 points. Uh, France is a really uh, also important team of our community. They have a really large uh, uh, national selection too, as well as Colombia. I remember they, they were making a, a big selection, uh, but France has been with us uh, for, for many years. Also, they've also reached the finals so many times. This year, they almost reached the finals again. Uh, so congratulations to France with 139.45 points. Uh, they also hosted the tournament back in 2016 in Paris. Uh, and who knows, uh, in the future, we, we might see other IPTs happening there again. Who knows? Now, well, we have talked from the 12th place to the fourth place, and now we're gonna talk about the finalists. So who will be the IPT champion? If you have any thoughts, just send us in right now on the YouTube channel. Uh, just comment there if you want Brazil to win, if you want Ukraine to win, or if you want Russia to win. Uh, this is the time, this is the time where you have to do it and to actually cheer for your, uh, for your country. Now. Before that, of course, we're going to talk about some other random things that you're not interested in at this point, but it's important for you to know. Uh, so prizes and perks, the IPT certificates for best conference reporter is uh, to Jonathan Chi uh, on problem 13, branching lights. So congratulations, Jonathan. Uh, you uh, have won a certificate for best conference reporter, along with uh, Bruno Siqueira Eduardo presenting problem number five, distant thunder. So as we said, the conference is also uh, a really important part of our, uh, it's a really important part of our tournament. It has become an important part of our tournament because it allows the, the students to present their work, even though they're not participating in the competition, but they have done some work on the IPT problems. Uh, of course, we don't want anything to be wasted. So we want uh, as much information as we can get because, uh, the IPT community must grow 
uh, and you know, become one of the top organizations around the world. And I also remind you that the IPT now is also an official organization, uh, part uh, I don't know, it's not a part of the European associations, but uh, anyways, we, we, we're not an official organization, official European organization. So uh, really happy to see that. Uh, I just saw something here. We also have uh, the Springer Nature subscriptions for the best reporter, uh, which is Amazigh Ozriat, uh, uh, presenting problem number eight, heavy parachutes. And the best opponent is Jose Betancu, uh, with problem number 11, the opposition for problem number 11, the spinning washer. So uh, I remind you all that we, uh, that we also have some adver advertisements here. So Springer Nature has participated uh, with us providing some of these uh, prizes, as we said here, the Springer Nature subscriptions. Uh, but as you saw throughout the week, we also had uh, all our meetings in Gathertown, everywhere you can, you wanted to join around with your with the other participants. You were there uh, in, in Gathertown. Uh, we'd also like to thank the Swiss Physics Society and uh, the Swiss Academy of Sciences as well. And of course, uh, the Warsaw University, the local organization committee of, of the IPT, who provided us a really nice organization for all the events. Uh, throughout this week, you've been to lab tours, you've heard uh, uh, a lot about uh, Poland in general. We wish you could have gone, we wish we were all there. Unfortunately, we couldn't, uh, but they did the best they could to uh, actually bring us there uh, and for us to feel the Poland, Poland's atmosphere. Uh, now, I think we might be able to be ready to present the uh, finalists. So uh, let's do it right now. So I'm now presenting the finalists. So the finalists are, I'm kidding, I just stopped the presentation, you know, I have to, to play a little with you guys. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, wait, oh, now I'm actually not being able to change my, my slides. It's not, this is actually, it's a legit. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, prizes for the winners of the third, second, and first place of the IPT. We'll get some online courses that will be discussed later uh, with the committees and etc. Uh, we're gonna discuss and uh, and define which are the which are the uh, the prizes that we're gonna give it to you. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, am I missing something? Uh, I think. Well, I think not. I think we can we can proceed. So let's see. Uh, Okay, so, well, let's start. I think it's on the next slide. I really didn't see these slides, guys, so it's really a, a thing. So, oh, of course, we have to uh, talk about our solutions database as well. So call for presentations and solutions. You can find them directly. You can send them directly to us, Exacom, uh, at IPT, oh, it's IPTnet.info. It's not iptinfo.info. Uh, there's a small typo there. Uh, I'm not going to correct that now because I think I would might show the results. So I'm not going to fall for that trap. But you should uh, note that it's exacom at iptnet.info. Okay. Uh, yes. So Anastasia Vazanchkova just sent here on the on the chat ex exacom at iptnet.info. Or you can up the light upload your file in the Telegram group. Uh, we have a Telegram group for discussions where you've all interacted with each other throughout this week. IPT 2021 discussions. Now we are ready to announce the teams who won. Let's see. Well, oh, my, my slides are not working again. I'm not kidding. Oh, okay. So again, just for the final time, and I promise you guys, if you want your problem to be solved, you can call for your suggestions on problems for the next edition until the 11th of July. So notes that you have one week from now. So until next Sunday, 
uh, you can send them directly to us at the correct email and not exacom at iptinfo.info, but at exacom at iptnet.info uh, or fill out the form. Uh, I showed you all how to do it throughout this uh, transmission. Uh, you can just access our website and do it, okay? So I think, are we ready to, to tell the results? Uh, let's see. So it might be that this is the, the third place in the international uh, physicist tournament. Uh, not yet, not yet, of course. We, we have to do this, guys. We have to talk about random things first. I just noticed now. IPT spreading. We want new countries, we want new universities, we want new teams. We need Jewish professors and team leaders involved in the IPT community. So uh, any institutions, societies, or academies are also, also welcome. Uh, and with this new amount of people, we will definitely bring new horizons to the uh, IPT. So if you want the IPT to keep growing and keep pushing forward and become the best organization in the world, uh, just please uh, spread the word in your country, spread the word, and also talk enthusiastically about the IPT. I'm sure that if anyone is enthusiastic about physics, they'll surely love the IPT as well, because it's an amazing experience. And I talk by myself, you know, my whole undergrad experience was basically solving the IPT problems throughout those three years. So uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, so please do it too with your countries. So this is also a call to participate on the executive committee. Uh, we're looking for passionate people who want to help the IPT grow, improve, develop, and keep its fantastic atmosphere. Uh, so if that resonates with you, please contact us again at the correct email, exacom at iptnet.info. Uh, we'll all receive an email. And if you're interested in becoming a member of the executive committee, please let us know. It's an amazing experience. Uh, it's pretty interesting as well. Now. I think we have finally reached the time where we're going to announce the finalists. Uh, the first thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask, uh, team from Russia, are you there? Who's, who's team Russia? Are you there on the call? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, you're excited. Are you excited? Let's see. Are you happy? You want to see the, the results or not? Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and wait, may I see the team from Ukraine? Are you also there? Where is team from Ukraine? Are you there on the call? Uh, I'm sorry, do you hear me? No, yes, yes, I can hear you fine. Uh, are you excited to, to hear about the, the final results? Yes, of course. Yes, okay, okay. And the team from Brazil, where are you guys? Yes, we are here. Yeah! Yes, we are yes. here. Nice, nice, nice. 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 Uh, congratulations <laughs> for reaching the final again uh, to Thank all you. teams. Uh, this is the second time that Brazil has reached the finals of the IPT. Uh, so let's get to it. So I was never this person to actually announce the results, uh, but I'm actually excited to talk about it. I don't know, because, you know, it reminds me when I was the person waiting for the results. And Jesus Christ, this is really interesting. So I want to transmit a little bit of my enthusiasm to you guys. So the third place for the International Physicist Tournament, the 13th, International Physicist Tournament organized by the University of Warsaw is, I, want, I wanted to have those drums, you know, those uh, enthusiastic drums, you know, if you, if you want to do this there on, on the, well, I don't know, but it'll be interesting. But the third place in the IPT is Ukraine. Ukraine, the National University of Kharkiv, uh, who scored 38.2 points in the final physics fights and 146.49 points in the selective fights are pretty amazing uh, points for them too. Uh, so congratulations, team of Ukraine. I hope, I hope you're happy. Uh, and yeah, please keep being this uh, enthusiastic country that participates all years with us here uh, at the IPC as well. Congratulations, you're a really important member of our community. Uh, and you're a great team as well. We've all seen the quality of your solutions. So uh, there's no doubt that, uh, you know, it's a really strong country. Uh, and I, for myself, was always scared uh, of facing Ukraine when I, was, uh, when I was participating. So whenever we saw and we were on the raffle with Ukraine, we were like, Jesus Christ, man, what's going to happen? I think we're going to lose the fight. No, not always that. We were like, okay, we're going to try to win this. 
Uh, but you know, it's always a hard fight. Uh, and I hope you, you guys enjoyed this week as well. So now I will announce the second place for the IPT. Uh, and I'd like to ask the, the team from, uh, from Brazil and from Russia, if you're happy, uh, are you excited to hear about the news or, or not? Again, yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 participation, yeah. guys. You know, if this was live, you know, we were gonna be screaming. So I want, I want us all to scream here. Uh, okay. So, the second place for the IPT is, and I'm gonna say, guys, this was a really tough final. Okay, uh, the points were really close between the second and the, the first place. It's a really tight competition there. Uh, so it's really hard to define which one was best. But someone has to win this. Uh, and well, oh my God, well, I don't know how to announce this, but uh, okay. Well, it's now, it is now. So I'd like to announce that the second place for the International Physicist Tournament is, oh my God, it didn't work. I actually clicked and it did not work. So. The second place for the IPT 2021 is Brazil with 44.2 points. And the final physics fight, the team from Unicamp, 143.20 points in the selective physics fights. And the champions for the International Physicist Tournament 2021 is the team from Russia with 48.40 points in the final PF. 161.6 amazing points in the selective physics fights. So the team from the Moscow Institute uh, of Physics and Technology got this one this year. So uh, I'd like to congratulate you all for this amazing experience. Uh, and it, yeah, it was, a, it was a wild ride. You know, it was really interesting. It was really nice to see all the solutions uh, that everyone presented. Uh, so, you know, if, if anyone has any comments, you want to say something, uh, team from, from Brazil, you want to say something or, or not, you know, yeah, I don't know. Hi, guys. Okay. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay. Great for this. And I, I'm as a uh, team leader, Mark, not a player. Uh, we really want to, I'm sorry. We really want oh. to be here as a Brazil with, uh, uh, his, if I'm not mistaken, the first silver medal. And I hope that you will, guys, you will do your best the next year. And uh, I hope so. See you in finals. And let's move to the, to the team members. Guys, say something. Uh, maybe uh, Tim Rodolf uh, would to say something uh, oh. before, because uh, Philip uh, started to say. Oh, OK. OK. Uh, and yeah. team from Brazil, yeah, you can. Comments? Yeah, sure. So first, I want to thank all my all our team members. It's been a it's a it's been a crazy year and a crazy preparation time. All this, both through the nationals and up to this point, and it's an incredible pleasure for us to reach the best position of, uh, in the in our country. And I want to thank, of course, the organization and the juries, but especially our team leaders, uh, Leandro Tez and MPI Louis. I think they might have something to say as well. But thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here. Leandro, want to say something? I just want to say that I'm really amazed that we did it, <laughs> that we got to the final, we got the second place. We are very happy. I'd like to congratulate Russia for great performance and great comradery, and also to Ukraine, who was with us today. Uh, I think it's a, it's a day to celebrate physics. Very good. <laughs> nice, nice, yeah. Oh, yeah, and if anyone wants to join the comments, you can you can say right now we, you know, this is it. This is the end of the thirteenth IPT. Uh, so again, congratulations to all teams. I know how this uh, second place means to uh, at least to to Brazil. You know, it means a lot. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that the, the Brazilian people are really excited and really happy to to get this. Uh, so well. Uh, if we have nothing else to add, uh, else? okay, uh, okay, yeah, 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 no, just as you invited, just to say that, okay, I, I would like to, to stress once again that, okay, we should be happy. We have all these young guys interested in physics. We should work for this 
now and for the future. This is the future of physics. So this is also a duty from uh, the previous generation for the next generation. So congratulations to everybody. Good job. Congratulations again. We're really happy to see so many good solutions. Uh, yeah, Sonia said it all. So yeah, if uh, anyone wants to say any final words or no? Okay. Uh, well, yes, we have okay, we have some final words. Yeah, go ahead, team from Russia. You can go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, Davai, Ah, sorry, no comment. <laughs> yeah, okay, so um, all in all, I think it was a really good tournament. Uh, I really liked it. Uh, and uh, so thank you all teams for taking part in it. Uh, it was uh, really amazing to play with all, all you guys. And also uh, great thanks for uh, team, uh, for Russian team Varonish helping us uh, in this tournament. And uh, uh, not our team leaders, but the uh, team who helped us, such as Mark Bochkov, such as Yelena uh, uh, Barlanova. Um, also, and, all of uh, the uh, general physics uh, department, department uh, from Mike MIT. MIT. Uh, Minnikovsky. Lev Minnikovsky, sorry for this. All right, then. Congratulations once again. Uh, 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 give a uh, big uh, thank you all and uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. big thanks uh, to the uh, Vitaly Jabrilov who helps to us uh, the PID experiment. It is very uh, hard to uh, uh, create uh, such an uh, experimental setup, uh, and it is uh, very hard to process this technique. And uh, we have a help. Uh, from our uh, MIT, uh, from our university. Okay. Uh, also, uh, also, it's really um, strange, maybe, but uh, this year we add. Uh, sorry again, Samsung with camera. Uh, two additional thanks to uh, even uh, school students uh, such as Kulishov Vladimir and Kinkov Sonia and Emil and Kim Kashapov. Um, so this year, even even, even school students helped us. And uh, it was uh, really good. So thank you all, guys. All right. So uh, also, uh, Mateus, yeah. can I say something? I of course. Like, I would like to point it out that um, uh, this year I was um, uh, a jury of uh, four physics fights, and uh, I was amazed actually that. Uh, no teams, uh, no team uh, were prepared badly. Every single team were prepared uh, on average or higher. So uh, if uh, uh, anyone could go to IPT Connect and see the uh, marks from juries, there is almost no uh, marks lower than four. So this, this means that uh, Every everybody uh, this uh, year uh, prepared actually really really good really good. So thank you guys. Continue doing physics. That's all. All right, all right then. Uh, I think we just have a final slide here, just saying that we declare then uh, that uh, the IPT. For this year is officially closed. Uh, so I would like to thank you all for the participation. Uh, and if you can all turn on your microphone and applause, this was an amazing experience for all of us. So yay! Bravo, Matthias. Bravo. Yes. Okay. Matthias, maybe we can invite everybody to get our talk now, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and if you want to keep chatting and exchanging experiences, please move to our gather town. We're going to be there uh, after the tournament is officially over now. So you can just chime in there and keep talking with the other with the other people. So uh, thank you all. And we'll see you again next time for the 14th 
international physicist tournament, God knows where, if it's going to be virtual or in presence. But uh, the important thing is that we keep the competition alive and kicking. So thank you very much for everything. Uh, we'll see you again next year with more 17 problems, 17 more problems to solve, you know, because I say that in life, you know, I have so many problems going on, but uh, one thing I know is constant is that uh, every year I'm going to have 17 problem more uh, because I'm going to have the FPT problems to solve too. So uh, thank you very much. See you in Gattertown. Thank you very much to everyone who watched us live on YouTube. Thank you very, very much for all the support from Brazil, Russia, and Ukraine and other countries too, of course. Uh, Thank you very much. You're the ones that keep the IPT flame alive as well. So, yeah, let's go to Garrettown. Let's celebrate. Today is a big day. So thank you very much. And, yeah, good luck next year. Hopefully we're going to have even more surprises in the next IPT. Who knows? So thank you. Thanks a lot. And see you again next year. Yeah. Hello, thank you. Guys. Bye. Bye, guys. See you. See everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank bye, you. Bye, bye, guys. Bye, see you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Bye, bye. It was a pleasure being here with you.